and welcome to the final round of the Women Grand Prix taking place here in New Delhi. It's a dream for any chess player to have a chance to fight for the World Championship title. And today, one of the girls playing in the Grand Prix will take one step further to fulfill that dream. We will find out who wins the tournament. Please stay with us. We are your host, International Master Soumya Swaminathan, with me, Grandmaster Praveen Thipse. And we are so excited to, for the last round of this wonderful, eventful, fighting spirit, full of fighting spirit tournament. Yes, welcome all. Uh, thank you for joining. I think it's going to be a wonderful day because as many as three players are in contention for the title. And it's not just any other tournament. It's a tournament uh, from where players have a chance to qualify to the World Championship. Because it's a dream of every player to be world champion someday. And uh, this is a qualification tournament. 16 blessed players in the world are eligible to play in the Grand Prix. And two, 12 of them are actually playing here. 10 of them rather. And they will be playing for the next year's world championship candidate. So let's come look at the uh, tournament position after the penalty mid round. We are only last round. And I think three leaders, isn't it? Absolutely. Zhu Jinur from China, Bibi Sara Asubayeva from Kazakhstan and Alexandra Gorechkina who's representing FIDE. All three of them tied for five and a half points and have a wonderful chance of winning the tournament. In fourth place, Katrina Lano with four and a half, Shualova Polina with four on five to sixth place tied with Koneru Hampi of India and Dronavali Harika on three and a half, Nino with a uh, Great game yesterday, moves on to three points. Nana Zagnidze on two and a half and Vaishali on two. So uh, this is going to be a really fighting last round because three players in the lead and uh, it could be anybody's tournament. Yes, also I think uh, uh, Zhu uh, is unbeaten. Guryachkina also is unbeaten probably, isn't it? Yes, and only. Yeah, and the... Uh, Bibi Sara has lost one game, but it means she has won one extra game as well. So, you know, like uh, both the things, your solid, uh, solid style is also important and creativity or ability to win more games is also equally important. So, let's see how they uh, do about, uh, how they go about today's games. Let's have a look at whom are the players playing today. Let's have the... 11th round pairings on the screen. Bibisara plays against Lano. Tough match here. Vaishali playing against Nana Zagnidze. Both of them looking for their first win in the tournament. Nino Batsyashvili playing against Zhu Jinner. If Ni Zhu wins this game, she might become the Women Grand Prix champion. Goryachkina Alexandra again having a tough match against Hampi Koneru. Both of them, world number 2 and 3, tied on for that place with the same rating. And... Drona Wali Harika playing with the white pieces against Polina Shuvalova. And let's, let's look at their individual statistics. For example, if you look at the uh, st statistics on the first day, Bibi Sara versus Lano, they have played as many as 25 games and uh, Bibi Sara has only won four so far and Lano has won as many as 12. With the same color, that is uh, Bibi Sara white and Katarina black, they have played 11 games. Mainly they have been Grunfield defense. They have been a D4 opening and always Grunfield. But here one doesn't know because uh, very often Bibi Sara hasn't played D4 uh, many times. So she has started with C4 in many games. So we may not see the Grunfield here, but most of their games have been Grunfield and some sort of irregular uh, queen pawn once she played e4 as well. So now as we see, she goes for something which she has never tried with Lano before. And I think uh, we noticed that Vipisara was not going with the d4, c4 setups. Many times she kept the pawn on d2 in most of her games. So I think she prepared something entirely different. We could see something very interesting and unusual with regard to these two players. Okay, the standard. Uh, uh, did we get the same position in one, some of the games? Yeah, D3, yes, D3 bishop, B4 check and castle. Right? Not Two. exactly the same uh -huh. because in Humpy's game, her knight was already on F6. Whereas here oh. after E5, bishop D6, black can even develop the knight to E7. Yeah, actually, yeah. And also the knight was on uh, not on C6. Knight on C6 is a uh, asset. So uh, that's, I think, important to have a knight on C6. So we can uh, look at uh, this position. Isn't black a bit... bit uh, more comfortable because knight f6 has not been played and knight c6 has been played. In order to maintain d4 and e5 pawn structure, knight on c6 is better placed than knight on f6. Eventually, both the moves have to be played and perhaps knight e7 also. But knight stands better on f6 because eventually it goes to c5. 
if everything happens as black wants and black plays say e5 bishop d6 knight d7 knight c5 it could already be an advantage so i think that's a very uh, interesting uh, uh, position i must say i'm sure lano with her a uh, great uh, positional sense and insights and uh, experience she has worked out something which is uh, uh, probably better than what happened in the earlier two games of bibisara against harika and hampi they were completely of different nature and here we have a standard position where of course e6 is a loss of loss of a move because eventually you have to play e5 but certainly the uh, grunfeld and all is gone is going to be a completely different game for sure and after e5 here white has a uh, possibility to play b4 directly because knight takes b4 runs into knight e5 and uh, let's just have a look at that variation after b4 knight b4 knight takes e5 is good for white and after b4 bishop b4 white can also take knight e5 because knight takes e5 runs into queen a4 knight back to c6 bishop takes pawn takes and queen into b4 and this is an interesting idea that black also has in this position but bishop c5 the most accurate move order so that you are not committing e5 and now b4 pawn will be simply picked up yeah so when wh when white plays a3 uh, black should always play a5 should white get b4 expansion white will be in a much better position here the game will revolve around the control of d4 c5 and e5 points if black is able to maintain those points very strongly c5 d4 and e5 then black will be better should white succeed in pushing away the uh, bishop uh, driving the bishop and getting c5 and knight to c4 it could be attacking the e5 pawn where black can't keep the pawn on e6 all the time black will have to play e5 so i think the battle because it's a reverse benoni and the battle will revolve around the uh, e5 point mainly because it could be in the open file but bishop c5 also it's tricky because you don't know it whether to play e3 here or not isn't it yes and white has played knight to d2 uh, short castle played black is not yet committing with e5 she can play e5 once white plays e3 though it is now not easy to get e3 so white could probably go knight b3 and then play e3 so knight on b3 not very well placed Yeah, but I think necessary if you want to play e3 because my experience is that if you don't play for e3, you are eventually going going to get a very passive position. So I think knight b3 and e3 looks like a, a proper uh, plan here. Absolutely. Let's now move on to the other game. Today we have five games going on, so we we should also have a look at the rest of the four games and come back to this board. Vaishali is playing against Nana Zagnidze. uh and vaishali opens with the e4 pawn but before we go to this board let's also have a look uh, at the leaders what they are doing alexandra goryachkina playing a very important game against koneru hampi so let's have the player camps on the screen of goryachkina and hampi along with the board yes and they have played lot of games i mean not a lot of games but they have played 7 uh, games they are, have a score of 2-2 their ratings are equal exactly equal score is also 2-2 and uh, three draws and with the same color they have played three games and uh, i think uh, those games also are uh, mainly went with queen's gambit declined and white choosing to develop the bishop on f4 and not at g5 as they usually do none of the games have been catalan and all queen's gambit declined and with bishop on f4 so let's see if uh, that uh, takes place hampi here went for the queen's gambit accepted a line she doesn't play often but she has already employed in this tournament and after e3 knight to f6 bishop takes c4 e6 knight f3 c5 a standard position of the qga and after short castle a6 now white has a choice to either remain in the middle game or go into the end game after d takes c5 which was goryachkina's option in this game okay so d takes c5 gives a very slight uh Uh, advantages probably can be neutralized very easily and that's the reason why great players uh, generally chose queen e2 or knight c3 and quick rook d1 so d5 a uh, safer move but at the same time it also uh, takes away some of the uh, so uh, complicated complicating possibilities in this so i think guryachkin is planning to planning to play safe game and trying to press on a very slight advantage rather than going for all out win because she is leading and a draw may not be a particularly bad result bibisar also has a very strong opponent in uh, lano and uh, she could also depend on uh, 
the other result but i think uh, this choice this opening generally should lead to a equal game yeah and uh, i also think that this end game is not as equal as it looks because uh, there are always uh, you know even though it is the symmetrical pawn structure it's not exactly the same with black having committed to a6 and it's all about how quickly either of the pieces can develop their pieces uh, either of the sides can develop their pieces and bring them to the right squares for example knight to b3 and c5 would be an idea for white after a3 and b4 same for black and so even though it's a symmetrical pawn structure this end game is not at all simple to play even e4 is an idea for white in the end game yeah generally if e4 and e5 as it was tried in i think one of the lasker uh, students games where uh, a draw position was won by uh, lasker by advancing the king side pawns but yeah not a big advantage compared to the catalan because in the catalan you have g3 bishops so there's a lot of pressure against b7 point which is not there so from that point of view i think black is okay black wants to and black also has a slight advantage like if queens are exchanged and black puts the king on e7 which is better than the king on g1 so in some ways uh, i think the one uh, uh, disadvantage factor is neutralized by another advantageous factor that king remains on c7 e7 not of course on c7 which is in the open file but king on e7 definitely better place than king on g1 so i think they are deliberately i think it's wise turn to play and white has not played queen into uh, d8 isn't it Yes, but it is the most popular move yeah. in this position. So Queen D8 has been taken okay. now by Goryachkina, and after King D8, as Pravinji explained, the king will be in the center. So in the end game, the king is less in danger to be checkmated, and it helps if the king is closer to the queen side in order to help in defense, and also, of course, being in the center helps him take care of the king side as well. Yeah, the only danger that could lie, as you suggested, e4 and e5 with king on e7, e4 and e5, bishop g5 check could be a plan. But even e4 itself is very uh, not easy to achieve. And uh, if white gets e4, at least the problem of c1 bishop has been solved. Black may have to solve the problem of uh, c8 bishop. But even b5, b7 looks all right. And suddenly after a4, the queen side pawns could become weak. But uh, I think apparently... I don't see a big uh, big chance of an advantage here. I think a normal game will go on where technically white can claim that I have this factor more, which is generally uh, not enough to press for an advantage. So let's look at a quiet game, but there will be some subtle moves uh, attempted by both sides because since the players are very strong, it's not going to be an uh, obvious blunder that's going to decide. So if at all one is trying, one is trying to outmanoeuvre the other player by placing pieces in such a way that the opponent is not able to understand the latent power of that piece. So they are going to play a very subtle type of game. Let's see how they uh, progress here after. Let's also have a look at the how the third leader in this tournament is doing. Zhu Jinnar is playing black against Nino Batsyashvili. And Nino opens with the move d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4. So a Nimzo Indian. So fantastic. I think every time uh, Zhu Jinnar plays different openings because uh, they had played only three games and only one was resulting which was uh, won by uh, Zhu Jinnar. And... Uh, with the same color, there were two games. In one, uh, she played Simi Tarash, that's with D5 and C5. And the other game, she had played Grunfeld, and now she plays Nimzo Indian. So perhaps she's already a sort of uh, a player who plays all the openings, or she might have pre uh, prepared uh, Nimzo Indian for this. And uh, yeah, it's needs still to be seen how uh, she uh, copes up with uh, this opening, which I think it's her first. Uh, game in such an important uh, event, I think, Nimzo Indian, because I see Grunfeld, uh, she has played quite regularly. Semi Tarash was an interesting choice, I saw. She had a comfortable game. And uh, what I find about Zuzanar is that she is good at open positions. She is able to spot uh, tactics quite well, and particularly she is quite strong in kingside attack, which is not a uh, very, uh, e something easy to achieve in a, with black pieces. So again, for her, white and black could make a lot of difference because she's very strong in attack, which means with white, she has a market advantage, which may not be the case. But yes, I think she's a very strong player and she didn't have a bad position. You know, I mean, she has not lost any game and she didn't have any bad position in any of the games. 
Wow, yes, absolutely. And Nino plays knight f3 line, not the a3 line that she had employed to win against Polina, but knight f3, d5. So now it's converted into a Ragozin. Yeah, yeah, and after queen a4 check, the idea is that even though knight c6 defends the bishop, it's the only move to defend the bishop. And uh, now c5 is a difficult uh, theme to achieve because of the knight being on c6. So that's why it's idea. And after e3, short castle, bishop d2, d takes c4, bishop takes c4. Black goes back bishop d6 to now go for the e5 break, not the c5 but the e5 break. So it's center needs to be challenged and e5 will be played on the next move. White plays h3 and that's the position on the board right now. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I've seen the young Humpy play this opening very effectively. I've uh, really seen and uh, she had played with Queen E7 and E5 at times in the uh, very successful game she has played. Uh, I think in this specific position, of course, a lot of possibilities E5 and E4 is generally a threat. So because black gets some initiative on the king side, so E5 is generally uh, taken up with the pawn. And although black has uh, uh, greater freedom, white puts rooks on D1 and C1 after castling uh, queen side, then some uh, pressure is exerted but overall this opening queen a4 check is has lost its popularity in uh, four or five decades before that it was a very important move in the 60s when they really felt that knight on c6 was bad for the reason that black wasn't getting c5 but then subsequently about 40 years back the idea of putting the bishop on d6 and pawn to e5 came and allowing d5 at some uh, times in moving the knight so because of that uh, this queen a4 check has lost its popularity and yet obviously it has been played so some specific idea has been worked out which i have not come across this is actually quite popular nowadays mm. uh, pravinji mm. in the and knight c6 basically white does not want to allow c5 and that's why but black is also comfortable and it mm, so many games have already been played as i uh, as we can see and here queen c2 is one of the options knight b5 is another option but white goes for h3 we will find out how the game progresses zoo has not played e5 but she goes for short uh, bishop d7 she goes for bishop d7 provoking queen c2 forcing the queen to move rather because of the threat of knight into d4 so queen has to move i think for knight b5 she has some trap on mind i don't know let's see but it's not a i mean it's not a very comfortable move to play knight b5 with the opponent's bishop on uh d7 yes uh, perhaps we have knight into d4 and a6 you know she is always looking for such positions so i don't know if it's working but yeah i mean it could be certainly simplifying so i think she plays for subtle uh tactics which will improve her position i mean she has got that good sense of chess i must say Let's also have a look at the other two games and then come back to the middle game positions of all the girls. Uh, let's have a look at how Vaishali is doing against Nana. Vaishali opens with e4, c6, knight c3, d5, knight f3 and d4. Uh, have they played any other games before? Yes, yes, in fact, they played six games and the score was two in favor of uh, Vaishali and four in favor of Nana. In the same player, they had played four games. The three were Rosalimo attack, Sicilian, e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. The three of them were this. And one of the game was uh, Vaishali had played a king's Indian attack with knight f3 and g3. It was followed by the London system by black, this d5, bishop f5. And c6. So entirely different opening today, a Karo Khan. And that too, uh, not a popular variation. The problem, normal move here is d4. And knight f3 is a move which was popularized by Bobby Fischer. And uh, well, he played it very effectively, and did the famous games against a win against uh, uh, Petrosian and a draw against and a loss as well. And the great master of this position with black was uh, Anatoly Karpov, but Karpov refrained from playing d into e4 in general, and he chose setups with bishop g4, which is a, a more common uh, move here, I think. D into e4 is normally not played in this; uh, it's not so popular. It must be a second uh, choice because bg4 is the option. Uh, and there are very interesting possibilities in that h3 is a move, main move after that. Yes, nowadays the Karo Khan is a very, very popular opening at all levels, a very solid opening. Lots of uh, White's possibilities have already been analyzed. So White is always looking for new ideas and likes to surprise their opponent. So that's why knight, knight c3 and knight f3 is a popular setup against the Karakhan these days because White doesn't stick to just one setup and keeps changing uh, their uh, approach with every move, uh, with every game. And after knight e4, black played knight f6. 
queen e2 knight takes queen takes so we see that the uh, center has been almost decided and white will play d4 now so black has to act quickly yeah i think generally knight d7 bishop c4 knight f6 knight e5 could be white's idea uh so wow. black doesn't get a chance to develop the bishop outside but i don't know this queen f5 check uh, coming and uh, it may not work so i no, think knight there is no check because uh, at the moment you are not played d3 too. exactly so bishop c4 knight d7 bishop c4 knight f6 knight e5 looks like the most accurate way because the bishop on c8 could uh, be i mean uh, black generally brings the bishop out uh, and the purpose of queen e2 is to prevent the c8 bishop from uh, going to a good square such as f5 and Uh, g4 and this the strategy behind this is uh, obviously to play bishop c4 and knight e5 forcing uh, e6 very quickly and the bishop on c8 uh, finds very uncomfortable not that white is assured of any advantage i think this is a system which is not very popular so black must be fine in fact of funny thing about karo khan is karo khan defense is comparatively new because it was an idea of capablanca about 100 years back and uh, when he suggested that is a good move then uh, tata kaur said that the very first move takes away the best place of the queen's knight and it was an opening that was criticized but uh, kapablanka did it with great success the famous i mean nimzo uh, Nim the two uh, nimzo which kapablanka games uh, wins by black and there's a uh, you know, lot of important theory was uh, formed in those days itself kapablanka played it with great success and now that the uh, uh, last 15 to 20 years it's been played by almost all the best players in the world including vishwanathan anand and kalsan and kasparov had played a secret uh, match against stal in which he had played uh, karokan as well in 1980 Absolutely, and after Queen e4, one of the uh, as we saw, White's idea was to occupy the center. So Black quickly challenges the Queen with Queen d5. Ah. Queen h4 was played, and White plays Black plays Queen e6 check, not allowing the Bishop to develop to c4. So Bishop e2 here, and followed by a very accurate move again, Queen g4, forcing <laughs> the Queen exchange. So yeah. the Queen has travelled. quite a bit just to be exchanged off the board but mm -hmm. useful uh, maneuver because after the queen exchange white cannot claim to have an advantage queen g3 another good move this is all been played before in games and after queen g3 hg3 the h7 pawn the h file is open and the h7 pawn might be a target so h6 might be played but in fact the most popular move in this position is simply bishop f5 um keeping h7 guarded and also attacking c2 and the bishop is well placed on f5 yes and i think if white has to play d3 white will not be very happy black could even play probably c5 and knight c6 then i'm not sure but yeah so uh, and knight d4 is a bit artificial move to play with white so i think black black seems to be fine and not really um, many chances but you know the strategically also the players are so strong that they could really uh, try to a uh, president i'm sure over the over the time position yes so that's exactly what is important here that white has 1 hour 33 minutes after hg3 and black has still not played bishop f5 she has 1 hour 15 minutes so nana um not the opening expert as such but she comes uh, she has very well aware of the ideas of every position mm -hmm. so she usually takes a lot of time in the opening which is the case in this game as well Yes, probably she has not uh, played any games in this, but of course her style is uh, quite solid, and she will. I think she believes in the uh, sort of school which says that okay, play your game yourself, try to uh, reason out with the opponent's moves and find the best moves yourself. So I think a good uh, idea as well. Let's see where we'll see a game. I would have been, I would have loved to see if the queens were on board because queen on h4 was very menacing in absence of knight on f6. But yeah, okay, so g6. I think she. decides to uh, improve the position of the king side bishop rather than the queen bishop queen bishop probably uh, she will put at a right moment later so i believe that this is a equal position uh, yes. white has a outpost on e5 but uh, probably d4 bishop f4 knight e5 not a great uh, uh, i mean it's it, it's not a big advantage as such but knight e5 bishop c4 is always a plan in such position because when black plays e6 then black doesn't know what to do with the <laughs> C8 bishop. Normally G6 is not played unless you are getting bishop E6. No, if you play both G6 and E6, you don't like it. So uh, let's see if uh, what how do, what does she play for bishop C4? Is it the uh, 
how most accurate move we don't know we will come back to this game let's have a look at the last game that we haven't looked at so far harika is playing against polina shuvalova and harika opens with e4 and uh, e4 replied to with e5 i see that harika has played six games with polina with white yes and they didn't have a single draw uh, three wins and three uh, losses and of the same color it were three games and not even once e4 the catalan structures sometimes with pawn on d2 and there's a direct kingside attack with knight f3 and g3 but also c4 g3 structures with pawn on d2 the way uh, bp sara has been playing in this tournament they were played and not a single game with white playing uh, harika playing e4 with her so again i think important decision uh, looking at the preparation of your opponent during this tournament i think she has probably uh, seen the games and she probably thought that e4 was a better choice absolutely and harika uh is having her third white in this game of the tournament only three whites and so uh, definitely looking to make good her white in this tournament especially round robin tournaments of this level uh, the most elite players uh, the colors matter a lot and usually the players choose their strategy depending on what color they are playing and not only their opponent the opponent is surely a consideration their ranking in the tournament is surely a consideration but also their color is a very big factor in their approach to the game yes in fact there are some players uh, uh, it was said that some players have a fantastic score with what okay bishop d2 a new move i think at least mm, not to my knowledge by playing d6 it black was threatening knight f5 and then black would be in a good position there's a famous game from a, a bishop's opening korchnoy bronstein and after that game korchnoy stop playing uh, uh, bishop's opening and vienna and a decade later bronstein asked him why are you not playing vienna these days and bishop c4 is it because of your knight move knight a5 and this is actually has been published in the book so you know let's coach nice stopped playing that so bishop did a modern approach o earlier approach was a4 which created some weakness on b4 then in a, a sort of a 10 or 20 years back a new approach with a3 came so you knight a5 is useless and bishop a2 and now a completely new approach i had not seen this because bishop on d2 is not productively placed but obviously there is a plan in this and bishop d2 Uh, i had not come across this idea so i'm still uh, 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 trying to find out what white wants to do after this i have actually played this move as white and bishop d2 is a very strong move here against this particular move order because black has already committed b5 and after bishop b3 she plays d6 with the idea to play knight a5 and c5 so it's very clear what is black's idea in this position so white simply prevents it with bishop d2 and then h3 uh short castle h3 preventing bishop g4 as well rook b8 and rook e1 so white is waiting for black to develop and then she will decide whether to play a4 or not you know but, but because bishop d2 takes away the square on uh, g uh, 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 square for the knight i was wondering if instead of castle bishop g4 by black was possible and for that uh, yeah because the purpose is to uh play something uh, like yeah and you want to play perhaps c3 yes because c3, okay. you are threatening knight d4 yes yeah uh, so i play c3 and after knight a5 I play bishop c2 anyway but after c5 your bishop on g4 is a um, I, there is no point of keeping the bishop on g4 and after h3 you might have to go back bishop, bishop d7 bishop d7 perhaps or bishop e6 bishop d7 i prefer because i don't like uh, knight g5 and such moves but d4 is coming exactly. the absence of knight on c6 is being felt so perhaps yeah, obviously it's a line which has a uh, lot of ideas but bishop d4 is a natural move and c3 looks like the proper solution to the why bishop d2 had not been considered for say a decade before must have been bishop g4 and h3 then bishop into knight and knight d4 with complete equality but then it might have been found that bishop d2 is not a useless move and uh, perhaps knight a5 is too slow so i know theory develops uh, in its own uh, way and it's own time <laughs> absolutely so h3 rook b8 has been played and rook e1 preventing any kind of d5 because after d5 we take take and now the rook is on e1 so we can simply take the e5 pawn and after rook e1 h6 now white is ready to play c3 or um, any other a4 is also possible white has few ideas in this position c3 is the most uh, popular move but h6 already not 
the most uh, yes that's difficult. strange one i think with bishop on e7 see you don't de develop the bishop to c5 but you develop the bishop to e7 so and they are never afraid of bishop g5 so i didn't understand uh, this move uh, generally i think uh, black should be comfortable with this uh, it's more or less a position uh, where white generally plays with knight c3 and not c3 i've seen sometimes but here i don't know knight c3 will always be met with knight a5 so uh, white has not tackled it. but i think when bishop is on e7 it's more common to play a3 and knight c3 and uh, knight d5 and trying to get some advantage and h6 because uh, subsequently sometimes uh, black goes for f5 break so h6 could be a very uh, dangerous move because there are position when you have bishop on e7 you control g5 so something like uh, uh, moving the king moving the knight and playing f5 is not very uncommon by moving the king it's not and in such case pawn on h7 is a great asset so in h6 i think any time f5 break is probably ruled out and uh, i think it's a committal move uh, committing a weakness on g6 for no reason but obviously she knows what she is doing and uh, yeah generally yeah here of course directly knight into uh, knight h4 is not working because of, i don't know knight into e4 knight g6 and, and takes d2. d2 because the d2 is attacked if the bishop was on c1 the knight h4 was a possibility and if knight into e4 knight g6 wins some material but yeah so when you have one advantage you also give up give away some advantage if you are not played bishop uh, d2 there would have been knight f5 and you wouldn't get the chance to play knight g6 anyway so anyway you commit something yeah but it's going to be an interesting game somehow i prefer um, i played such position with black and i don't play h6 so that could be a reason but i already prefer white a bit after this move h6 Right. So h6 has been played and here one of white's ideas could be to play a3, make a square for the bishop and go for the knight c3 idea as you suggested. We will have a look at what Harika chooses to do. Uh, she's in deep thought right now because h6 is not the most usual um, reply to white's plan. And let's have a look at now Bibisara versus Lano which is a game we haven't looked at for a while. Um, let's go back. So knight b3 was played after the position we saw and bishop goes to e7 and white played e3 a typical break in the yeah. center you cannot allow the pawn to remain on d4 however here uh, e5 was possible but after e takes e takes uh, maybe uh, she does not like to keep the pawn on d4 and uh, that's why she chooses to take on e3 and after bishop takes e3 she plays knight to g4 and bishop c5 and black plays rook b8 an unusual move uh, yeah so she wants to move it from the diagonal so that she can play uh, knight d she can take control of d4 square sometime but she chooses not to play e5 as well because it's in the open file and uh, rook b8 yes i'm trying to um, see what does she want to do with this surely she wants to opponent to wait with bishop for b uh, bishop into e7 then you play queen e7 yeah, but say for example, if White plays uh, d4, what does she want to do? Or White plays h3, of course she could knight f knight e5, she could go also. Yeah, perhaps rook e1 looks like a logical move or d4. So d4, what's the uh, idea? Uh, yeah, bishop into c5. I want to take with the knight, and perhaps simply b6, and the knight has to retreat to uh, b3, which is not a very great square. But still, uh, and then perhaps b7 as well. Somehow, but uh, well, I, white has a comfortable uh, pawn center, I think, and white is getting a d4 easily, so white could be a bit preferable, very slightly. And yeah, any references of this? Probably not, because no, this is an yeah. absolutely new position. I think actually. knight d2, knight b3, I've not seen very uh, often. Although you have succeeded in diving away the bishop, knight on b3 is not well placed. But she tries to make the best. In fact, the greater challenge was black playing e e5. Because then the knight on b3 would have to uh, explain why it exists there. Yes, and here knight g4 was in fact played in Vidit versus Vincent Kimer, but rook b8 a new idea. Here bishop takes c5 has been played, a5 has been played. So these, uh, there has also been a um, game Gelfand versus Vincent Kimer. So an idea by Vincent and his coach Peter Leko maybe. We uh, uh, we'll see more of this uh, in future games, I guess. But black plays rook to b8, 
an unusual move. Yes, idea probably. I mean, instead of going for bishop into c5 and e5, which might have happened in the earlier games, but it leaves the target very soon. Also, capturing bishop into c5 enables white to get the knight to c5 and e4 if required. So, I think she wants opponent to uh, maintain the structure. And even after e5, the problem of b3 knights uh, knight are not, is not solved. A g4 knight is hanging, but she's waiting for h3 to be played. So, from that point of view, I think it's a now, preparation for both the sides, so they have consumed a lot of time already. Right. Um. For BB Sara, it may not be uh, preparation because Bishop C5, although there may be some games, but it's the idea. Knight B2 looks logical after Bishop C5. Uh, D4 has been played. Uh, I think uh, White is not going to play H3 as itself. White is going to establish that Knight on G4 is badly placed and subject to attack. And similarly, uh, I don't know what black wants to do. Black wants to prevent the b3 knight from getting activated. So uh, b6 looks like a, a logical move here unless bishop into e7 is damaging. But yeah, bishop into g7 and h3 and knight e5 is still a strange position. Uh, I'm not in the position to understand the position uh, very well. Uh, it's uh, I'm seeing it for the first time. And the chance of uh, exchanging, uh, changing of pawn structure very uh, common white right? putting a knight on e5 after h3 is the common possibility but yes rook b8 is going to be a very great uh, defensive move in the sense that uh, black will be able to play b6 more freely uh, which was impossible in case of uh, rook on a8 so i think uh, uh, probably something uh, very important uh, and which happened in the earlier games and white got some advantage perhaps and that's the reason why rook b8 has been played so you avoid something uh, some unfortunate thing that happened because of the rook on eight at the moment black has no plans of developing uh c8 bishop uh, with e5 so she allowed white to play d4 and b6 and bb7 is a possibility and the loss of tempo is not very big and uh after with rook b8 because had, had you not played rook b8 you wouldn't have play, been able to play b6 because of some tactical possibilities along the diagonal so loss of a move may not be very great uh pawn on d4 it's good. I don't think white wants to take an isolated pawn with d5. But a move like rookie one could threaten d5. And uh, yeah, for example, b6, bishop into bishop. And if you take with the queen, then I go rookie one and uh, bb7, then d5. So a complicated game. Probably white has a very minute advantage as they always uh, in any opening after say five or ten moves, white uh, generally has a very slight advantage which is not really tangible nothing much can be done but yeah this is going to be an interesting game uh, and not like a, a sort of game where the strategy of uh, players and the plan has already been defined by this classics but here is something which the players are going to decide on their own they are going to uh, be the masters of this position themselves i think so interesting uh, position i think a lot of fighting uh, Chess, everybody has tried to outwit the other in the opening phase itself. I think that's an important factor. So, rook b8, a new move, and uh, yes, it uh, keeps uh, Bibisara thinking because Bibisara, yes, she has got uh, a different style. She has got a style which is uh, not easy to understand, uh, and uh, perhaps uh, it's difficult to play against her in unknown positions. Because uh, she may fl find some plans which are not easily known to others. Wow. So we will come back to this game once we have more clarity about the uh, ideas that both uh, players plan to employ. Uh, D4, a very natural move here. And we can expect black to take on C5 and play B6. Uh, let's come back and, and then have B6, a look at... Uh, or direct B6 so that your knight on B3 uh, is not doesn't get a chance to come to C5 and E4. Yes. So both these options exist. Let's have a look at Goryachkina versus Humpy. Goryachkina is white in this game, but they have entered an end game already after the eighth move in the QGA opening and after Bishop E2, King E7, Bishop voluntarily go, goes back so that for B5, she's in time to play Knight E5, not allowing Knight C6 and play Bishop F3 if black allows. So Knight BD2 here and after Bishop to D7, Black does not create weaknesses with b5 but develops the bishop to d7 and knight b3 
so uh, lots of games here as well uh, white uh, black has played all the moves here bishop b6 bishop d6 and bishop a7 but bishop b6 is the main move uh, in this position so do you think that uh, white is uh, black is deliberate i mean black has chosen to give up the uh, d7 bishop for a knight because in end game normally a bishop can be dangerous so wherever you like those who played bishop b yeah so knight e5 uh, is something uh, which is a potential uh, move and if I, i'm expecting a move like knight c6 then bishop b5 yeah bishop b5 or beyond to play just bishop b5 and uh, a b5 okay so a2 pawn is weaker than the uh, b5 pawn so okay that's the idea in that case yes black will this is a position then black is very comfortable because the bishop on c1 is very awkward the rook on a1 is going to need a, a move to uh, i mean a preparatory move a3 in order to make a move and the knight on b3 does not have a good square black has a better king on e7 black wants to play knight c6 or even rook f8 rook c2 so at the moment uh, black seems to be very comfortable in this knight e5 bishop b5 so probably in the game uh, we don't know what has uh, act actually happened so white has not played knight uh, humpy has not did oh she has moved the bishop to uh, d6 is it she has uh, i see a bishop on bishop is not on c5 in this game yes she uh, plays bishop to d6 which yeah. is also possible but it allows knight to a5 what is Humpy's idea for knight a5. What does she want to go rook a7? But rook a7, yeah, e, e4, e4 is or not is e4. But e4 uses take, I think, no, uh, because there's a bishop c5 move available. So e4 is not possible. And uh, then we play b5 and or b6 and yeah. rook c7. Yeah. So b, yes, b6, this yeah. is actually an idea. I, ha I have seen few games with this rook lift, and maybe this is something that Humpy wants to do. Yeah, but uh, how about knight c4? Because you know, once you have created a weakness, it uh, not e4, but knight c4. Because you know, such moves have to be analyzed well. Because uh, you can't play b6 because of b3 and bishop a3 checks. So you must come back bishop c5 probably. Yeah. So let's say bishop c7 here would run into b3. Yes, which I is think a it's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah. Oh, so Developing the bishop to a3, and here uh, bishop. B5 is a move that oh. C piano chose against okay, Magnus. Okay, okay. Yeah, because otherwise Black seems to be in some trouble if you have to shuttle back. Okay, so, oh uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Some, and if I support the bishop, which bishop do you give? For example, oh rook one, you have bishop B4. Okay, so you exchange a few pieces. Rook D1 yeah, attacks. Possible. Yeah, okay, but. But then we also can take, take and give up that bishop. But we are ahead in development and we are uh, comfortably. Developed actually. Yeah. Also, C1 bishop is not uh, something uh, to be proud <laughs> of. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, White will have problems with the pair of bishops actually, even mm -hmm. though it is an asset. But in this po position, Black yeah. is okay. And uh, uh, we were asked in the chat about the what happens if all the three girls win, and then what is the tie break? So let's have the tie break criteria on the screen. Uh, the higher number of games played with the black pieces is the first tie break and uh, Goryachkina and Bibisara have each played four games with black. Zujinar has only played three. Okay. So she has got the advantage of s having six whites in this tournament which she has utilized really well. But if she ties with both the girls then she would be at a disadvantage in the first tie break. And um, since Goryachkina and Bibisara both have the same number of black pieces. It's the second tie break is Sonnenberger that can be calculated only at the end of the tournament. Yeah. And the third one, if that they are tied on that as well, then the number of wins in the tournament of every player involved in the tie and that would be uh, bit. Uh, it will be counted between Bibisara and Goryachkina. So Bibisara has more number of wins. But also players involved in the Tie does it okay? No. But okay, it, it it means only this, only in the, those who have come to criteria two. Okay. Yes. So uh, basically, every with every tie break, uh, a player will be eliminated. Eliminated. Okay. And yeah. on the C tie break, uh, uh, 
the number of wins in the tournament of every player involved in the tie will, will be counted and then uh, the results of the game between the players involved in the tie which Goryachkin actually won but since Bibisara has more number of wins actually we will confirm with the arbiter if uh, all the players will be counted or yes, not. But, but normally SB is the uh, decider because SB is very rarely equal. SB is a system which is uh, designed in such a way that very rarely the players will have uh, equal SB because you know you the players whom you have beaten, you get full points of them and the players who have drawn with you get half of what they have scored in the end and you get nothing from the players you have lost to. So the SB is normally never uh, uh, equal unless uh, there have been identical result against all the players which is very unlikely. So I think SB will resolve the time. SB is normally never equal. So that's I think a good uh, asset but yes, Zhu Janar has a disadvantage there and today she is playing black so again you know a tournament which she played uh, has played very impressively she may not get 160 points as the winner would get uh, for the uh, viewers we must say that uh, what is this uh, uh, grand prix scoring about so if you are a champion uh, the grand prix is a tournament of 12 players out of 16 16 is a pool and uh, these players can play only uh, any three of the four so you don't uh, end up playing more than three and everybody gets to play three tournaments if they want. And the scoring is the champion gets 160 points, the second person gets 130, th third person gets 110, fourth 100 points and fifth one 90, 90 points. So this scoring is important because in the final tally of the Grand Prix, only two players from the uh, final tally, those who have done best in the four Grand Prix put together, they qualify to the World Championship candidates matches along with other players. So 16 best players in the world are fighting each other to select only two of them. So, you know, again, although they are strongest players in the world, uh, everybody cannot be included in the world championship cycle. So yeah, out of 16, uh, so many will be eliminated. But yes, it's an important tournament. 160 and 130 makes a lot of difference, I think, 30 <laughs> points. If you're particularly, if you're tied and uh, somebody gets 130, somebody gets 160, it's a matter of, uh, I think, perhaps a bit luck as well, I must say. Yes, absolutely. I think uh, it's a interesting series where in, in until the end, you don't know if you have qualified or not. So, yes. Uh, everyone keeps enough chances. Uh, we will come back to this game. Let's have a look at Zujanar versus Bachiashvili, the other important game for the championship. Uh, White played bishop d6 and white played h3 here to which black replied bishop d7 we left it yes. over here and after queen c2 queen c2 black uh, did take the e5 break pawn takes knight takes knight takes knight bishop takes the knight and long castle wow mm. nino a very aggressive player yeah but i uh, <laughs> well i tend to believe that this is not a great uh, of course there's a uh, famous uh, Alekin Marshall game in this pawn structure, white got an attack quicker than black. So, you know, it's also, I mean, it, de it depends on how you handle it and how you are able to outwit your opponent in the uh, attack, in the sense, planning of attack. It's not the direct attack because the players are generally very strong to spot the combinations, but to get an attack quicker than your opponent requires some strategy and how the players are in th at this stage, we'll see, because this position is very dangerous for. Uh, black if, uh, black uh, for white if black gets c5 and b5 and you would probably never be able to take on b5 so i think a very dangerous situation white is probably going to try quickly f4 because the bishop on e5 is a monster and uh, f4 um, f4 and e4 uh, looks like the plan white wants to play f4 e4 and e5 which will give a lot of uh, attacking possibilities so let's see somehow uh, Long Castle is, of course, uh, how much time uh, she would have taken as also, and whether it was, I'm sure this is not a prepared position. So again, the skills, not only in kingside attack, but also in the uh, anticipation of opponent's attack. It's a queen side versus king side. So in this attack, it's not just enough to uh, win the, uh, it's not enough to get a good position. It's also important to uh, attack before your op opponent starts getting uh, attack. Absolutely. And uh, Bishop D3 played by Nino. So she wants to go for F4. 
g4 g5 and bishop h7 maybe first g4 with the idea to play g5 and bishop h7 and uh, there are so many threats for black but black will be very happy with nino's choice i would say because it is usually difficult to create play with black unless white decides to try and nino uh, uh you know always wants to play for a win she is not the kind of player who's happy with a draw i feel at least that's what i feel after having a look at her games in this tournament so zujin are also very happy because provocative style uh, is one of the ways in which black can play for a win in chess and uh, provoking your opponent to attack usually can work in black's favor as well if she manages to yes. defend uh, i think the major plan in this for white is to play f4 bishop d6 e4 which is already winning and uh, if she had played f4 direct uh, on the previous move black would have had to play bishop into c3 followed by knight e4 so now the major threat is f4 followed by e4 and e5 and i think bishop c6 looks like a very logical move when f4 is not good because i think at times black will have to prepare to play bishop into c3 in order to Pull post a knight or a bishop on e4 after white's f4. So white's f4 has to be slowed down, and incidentally, bishop c6 slows down g4 as well, unless the sacrifice g4 is working. So I think uh, interesting position, but I think black should play here bishop c6. Uh, I don't perhaps a move like a rook e8 is possible, but g4 could be awkward. And uh, f4 e4 is a plan which, if white succeeds in getting f4 e4, white will always be uh, better because of the uh, threat uh, threat of a pawn fork, and black will never permit white to get f4 and e4 so easily. So that's an obvious theory known to um, uh, them. And uh, let's see. Now it's bishop c6 is my choice here, but if there are any other option, bishop c6 delays uh, g4. It uh, also is ready to. Uh, meet f4 with bishop into c3 followed by place posting a knight on e4 and uh, that seems to be a satisfactory way of playing uh, so probably uh, an equal position one can say although i prefer black myself but because i just i need a couple of moves to play b5 and uh, b4 and then uh, i could be i mean i i don't mind sacrificing the pawn on b5 because any if any time you take then rook b8 is going to be strong but uh, yeah so I think a, a very uh, logical way of uh, playing uh, here it would be bishop c6 probably. However, ideally black would like to play c5 and yes, bishop yes. c6. Yeah, but here I'm not sure of c5 because one needs to analyze uh, g4 or even f4. Is if f4 possible as well? G4 perhaps bishop c6 is awkward to meet, but I was worried about f4 and if you are to if you move the bishop e4 was uh, very strong. So you have to take bishop into c3. and if should white succeed in getting if e4 white is winning but here e3 is hanging so i think somewhere c5 looks like a good move as well because uh, i think uh, yes white is not prepared and yes it depends on the pawn structure so important is winning for black bishop f5 so uh, if e4 and e4 both come white is almost winning and which will normally never come there is not a threat uh, also uh, Bishop into c3 will always come. So if f4 is not going to be there, c5 is a possibility, and uh, yeah, c5. Then I think black is already. I think if there is no threat of f4, then b d3 itself could be an inaccuracy or and the choice of opening. Because you know, once black gets b5 next, it's going to be very menacing. So bishop d3, uh, c5. I I thought bishop d3 really threatened f4. If it's not threatening f4, then perhaps it's a slow move. and which means black will get a quicker attack black uh, gets tempos in advancing the pawn right uh, yeah g4 was probably a maybe a better move a than more straight straight forward uh, option but if she was afraid of bishop uh, c6 and bishop f3 or something which will you know it will make it difficult to advance the pawn but g5 is a huge threat so here and if c5 uh, white plays g4 we have a move like c4 as well we can consider giving up yes, this pawn and, 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 and yes, bringing a rook on the open file maybe maybe even rook f7 i think this position could be could already be winning because you move the bishop b5 and there are too many things on the c file bd3 again uh, looks like a do best choice so c4 and if you have to play bishop e2 yeah this is i think even a5 also no even a5 actually a piece wow. is going yeah yes 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 yeah. and after 
g5 b4 we are not losing a piece yes uh, only but only the king <laughs> <laughs> yeah this looks just uh, terrible for white yes. after king yeah. h8 there is no mate and yeah. uh, uh, the c3 point is super weak because of too many controls on c3 by black so uh, we will see what is zujina's choice she has to take a very important decision here so at the right moment to think definitely yes because c5 actually means that you are ignoring if your opponent has threatened something c5 is a great move but it's a preparatory move and that means you're convinced that your opponent hasn't threatened anything and that ne needs some calculation and courage because you are playing against a uh, equally strong opponent and uh, perhaps bd3 is a move where white is uh, hasn't sensed the danger of c5 c4 uh, at the moment or perhaps something at the i don't see much actually uh, happening after c5 because even for king b4 i may give up upon uh, c4 but then b5 becomes a uh, serious concern i mean see c5 king b1 b5 or uh, white could uh, already be losing after g4 you mean after yeah, after no, c5 now c5 king b1 and b5 and i think this is a I mean, that's a very difficult position to play. Perhaps b5 may not be a correct sacrifice, but somehow uh, black will never be in a po uh, bad position, even a pawn or two pawns down on for opening of the queen side. Or even rook c8 and c4. Yeah, threatening c4. So basically, bd3 intending g4, g5, and bishop into h7 check seems to be a bit slow plan. And I don't know which rook is correct here. I thought always rook of c8 is fine because you're not going to give a damn to the pressure in the d-line. You're just going to advance the queen side pawns. And perhaps not bothering to protect the b5 point. <laughs> I just give up a pawn and play. So black will be more uh, cheerfully placed after c5 in my opinion. Absolutely. And that's the reason why the game Alekin Marshall was praised because before Marshall, I mean Marshall did all that b5 before. And Alekin got stronger threats with e f4, e4, e5, and f5. So it became a very sharp game where white got f6 break, black got uh, all sorts of breaks on the queen side. And both kings were exposed, and it was a nice combination. So I think probably in the sharp opponent, opposite side castlings, uh, a player a century ago weren't worse than today's because they were. Uh, I mean, they played such positions more often. Uh, we rarely play positions where we castle on the opposite sides, uh, except for a few openings like Sicilian Dragon. Uh, so you know, generally, it's not easy for uh, today's masters to be a great expert of uh, opposite side castling positions, because somehow not many openings uh, lead to such positions. Yes, I mean, I can not think of too many, like the Sicilian dragon is one and then there are some lines in the Slav variation with uh, h3, bishop f5, uh, sorry, knight f3, bishop f5 variation. Uh, but yes, you are right, like nowadays, uh, not many openings with opposite side castle and uh, in Karo Khan as well, there are some, uh, in the knight c3 yes, variation, yes, yeah. white long castles. Uh, Black short castles. White always had been long castling, <laughs> and I uh, like the famous Spassky Petrosian game. Black also always long castled. Earlier. And uh, yes, and the Carpo games, and the famous Spassky Petrosian when White's knight landed at d6. So all these games uh, were different, but uh, I think a few uh, decades back, three uh, decades back, the idea of black short castling. Uh, in spite of white pawn on h5, it came into picture and white, it's not easy for white to get g4, g5. So that's a very sharp position as well. But again, it's not a normal kingside uh, versus queen side. That's a specific theory again. And the player good in uh, opposite side castling may not necessarily be good in that because it is a very strange uh, retreating moves in that opening. That move has a, that opening has its own attacking strategy. So here, yes, we have something interesting and well, when uh, Azu Janar thinks for a long time. She normally comes up with a strong move. That's yeah. what I have uh, I've observed. <laughs> that you know, she she has got a knack at sensing and uh, you know playing, uh, taking time for at, at the appropriate moments. Something which is doesn't happen to many players. I have many times played some moves and then subsequently regretted. Uh, that I should have taken a bit more time for that move. I think it happens to everybody. So I think here she is taking uh, some time. So, so uh, yeah, I mean, I'm wondering how does a player decide uh, when is the critical position and when it is not because 
yes <laughs> because uh, there are so many uh, opportunities to think in a chess game but we also have such less time one and a half hours uh, for a viewer might seem a lot but for the player it is too less of time to complete yes absolutely minutes. i mean uh, i'm sure that even if you are, uh, if i had four hours for a game i would still find it less because you know tend you tend to analyze more and more and uh, perhaps uh, that's why the decision making at the right moment sometimes you have to make a decision that i think it's good and i'm going to play it uh, whatever uh, comes uh, i can't analyze everything so it's uh, i can't i'm not going to be a perfectionist as you said yesterday so i can't analyze everything even in a correspondence game so it's better to uh, rely on myself and play uh, say a few moves at a time some players say that uh, no once uh, kapablanka was in asked the interesting question kapablanka who had great combinative and in game visions there uh, some of the end games he has calculated 20 moves in advance and uh, you know some uh, amateur asked him that how many moves ahead do you see so kapablanka said one move and that's always the best move <laughs> so <laughs> obviously that wasn't the case he analyzed but i think he found it uh not easy to answer that question because in end games you could analyze 20 30 moves and in a sharp middle game probably even the second move could be uh wrong so again it's the question which is probably not very accurate yeah i mean there is a famous indian proverb which says chess is a sea in which a gnat may drink and an elephant may bathe so it's uh infinite unlimited and if you have only one and half hours on your clock you have to decide which positions do you want to get immersed into and which positions do you want to take quick practical decisions in yes also if you are going uh, into a complicated position then i think it's better to save time i mean uh, and if you are going to simplify then it's better if you take a few moves and, and you simplify and then you assure that you will be i mean 20 30 minutes will be enough for the rest of the game then you can think but if you are looking at a combination combination and sharp for in this position i think the first move is going to decide the fate of the game but after that she will play very quickly i'm sure uh, that she will probably make a concrete plan she will analyze that uh, visa with the strength of opponent's counter attacking plan and these things are complex a very right moment to think and i think uh, we'll see a very interesting and fighting game here absolutely and uh, let's go to how Bibisara is doing against Lano uh, before we go to Vaishali and Harika's game because that game was very interesting and we were curious what is Black's plan after d4 Black plays b6 here bishop takes on uh, bishop knight takes the bishop queen take queen to c2 bishop b7 so uh, this bishop has now come to the right diagonal challenging the g2 bishop rook a d1 knight to f6 Rook f e one and h six by Lano, not allowing knight g five or uh, is it just a useful escape uh, square for the king? Yeah, I think so. Probably she has no way of uh, under knowing where the pieces stand. Good. I think queen has to be moved to d six probably. So she doesn't know at the moment if queen d six is right uh, because queen d six also doesn't have uh, any great option. So and since white is not inclined to. move the f3 knight allowing the bishop uh, exchange so i think she is just waiting for white to prepare to improve the knight position as the other b3 knight which should try to come to d3 and e5 but knight d3 will always be met always yes so again take, it becomes a yes take, you have to analyze and queen d4 yes queen d4 and if you if you are going to play knight e2 and f4 it doesn't have that sort of impact yes but if you can get knight d3 yes it will be good where is the knight going after f4 so uh, and what does the knight on e7 plan to do does it go to f5 it yes like knight, a good knight f5 can be very dangerous but with d5 is not coming because d5 comes and shatters black would like to play on knight to f5 which is the dream which will never be fulfilled in my opinion and queen d7 is not never possible because of knight e5 so black has to play very accurately Can here queen c8 and queen c8 and knight f5 What do you yeah, think? Yeah, but queen c8 again. Uh, I don't know what are the pieces doing on the queen side. Okay, queen c8 and rook d8. Yeah, queen. But the moment you play queen c8, your opponent plays knight d3, and rook d8 probably knight d3 to e5. And white is slowly improving. It's not that nothing is happening, but queen c8 is consideration because eventually you want to play c5. So, I think queen c8, rook d8, and c5 seems to be your plan. But, but with rook, yes, the knight on e7, c5 is always meant with d5. Yes. So even queen c8, d5, we don't know what happens. No, that's why I wanted to play rook e8 first, 
supporting the knight and then play queen c8 yeah okay so yeah so it is too too subtle i don't know if uh, it will actually be played on the board and uh, here white plays queen d6 black is queen d6 okay this is the only square i can um, uh, think of so she not yet played okay. but uh, it is an idea that black yeah. could go for uh, the other idea we are looking at is rook e8 uh, uh, followed by let's say White yes, it's, uh, I don't think white can give a pawn here with knight d3. So yes, white plays h3, let's say, and black plays queen to c8. That is one idea we are looking at, and the other one is with queen to d6. So, um, yes. what what uh, what do you think? What will you choose here, Pravinji? Uh, I think knight d3 is my uh, first candidate move. If it doesn't work, then only I go for other moves. So bishop into knight d3, uh, bishop I into think f3, and there is no yeah, and, uh, yeah, and knight e5. But the d7 square is guarded, so knight e5, oh. uh, perhaps uh, knight e5 also. But I don't no, know. No, but we have yeah. knight e6. So queen, uh, where does the queen uh, move? No, this is the problem. Knight a6. We uh, missed this tactic. Yeah, I, I was thinking only of knight e5, knight b4. In that case, knight d3 should be the first option. And if it's not good, then perhaps we go for because she played knight c1, knight on b3 was badly placed. So knight d3 uh, looks like a plan, uh, unless. Of course, there's knight f5 or something is uh, awkward. Yeah, the idea in queen d6, knight d3, knight uh, uh, f5. Chess so with Suyash in Marathi. Uh, he's uh, from Pune actually, and uh, he has a YouTube channel as well where okay. he uh, uh, analyzes games in Marathi. Okay, uh, great. Yes, it's wonderful. One of the regional languages in India, India, Marathi. And he asks in the chat, are you going to cover Nepo versus Ding World Championship match? Uh, it will be covered on Fide Chess YouTube channel as well. And the commentator is none other than Vishwanathan Anand, uh, along with Grandmaster Irina Crush from USA. And Anand sir will be commentating for one half of the tournament. And Daniel Dubov, from, uh, who plays under the Fide flag, will be covered covering the other half of the tournament together with Irina Crush who will be covering the entire event. So great, I think that uh, FIDE makes sure that every uh, world championship event or FIDE event is covered on their YouTube uh, channel and yes. the only thing is the commentators are different. Yes, absolutely and I think it's a match everybody is looking forward to. Let's come back to our tournament. The final game is going on and after night C1, Black has still not made a move. Uh, yes, it's a very important decision here because she has to decide where to place the pieces. Yes, she's cramped although she's solid but she's cramped and night C1 is a good move if knight uh, D3 is a threat. Then, uh, uh, well, I think rook C8 or some move prevents knight D3 but... We don't know if uh, you are prepared for c5 because after rook c8 you still don't have c5. So to play rook c8 and then queen d6 and then still what? Because rook c8, yeah, but the uh, bishop is loose. Lonely. Uh, yeah, the, the only only plan is that now knight d3 can be met with bishop into f3 and uh, uh, queen into d4 because there is no fork. But I think it's too artificial uh, way of playing because you are basically preventing one move and not preventing any of your opponent's plans in general. So in order to play queen d3, if you have to play a, a rook from one closed file to another closed file, it doesn't make much sense. So obviously that's not a move. Objectively, that's a move that stops knight d3. That's the purpose. The purpose of mentioning that was that this move stops knight d3, but nothing else. So. But there is a move that uh, does, actually now knight d3 is not possible. Let's say uh, white plays h3 here for example mm -hmm. uh, sorry um, let's say it's a uh, white to move so let's bring that position h3 mm -hmm. and uh, white plays knight d3 in this position mm -hmm. and black can take take and play knight f5 and in fact now d4 pawn is not easy to protect after knight e5 we take knight d4 queen c3 Ish. and we can play knight takes f3 which is a check yes. so that's why it's not easy to play knight to d3 and maybe knight c1 we can simply play queen d6 which is actually a more useful move than king h8 queen is better placed yes in fact uh, one of the in one of the games which i won in this pawn structure but my pawn was on c6 and not uh, 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 c7 and c6 b7 so I organized my platos from a, a transposition of a Karakon setup where I gave up my queen bishop from uh, on g6 to h5 and bishop into f3 
And then I won the game. So you know, some players asked, "What were you doing?" I said, "I'm going to make three attacks, five attacks rather, with two knights, queen, and two rooks against d4. And you have only four defenders. That's a queen, one knight, and two rooks because the bishop on f3 doesn't guard d4. So you know, that was a sort of plan. So uh, if the pawn pawn is on c3, this position is better for white uh, knight d3, knight e5. The problem of uh, d4 pawn can come." Bishop into f3 can suddenly be played, and knight on e7 is very well placed to attack the pawn. Yes, so black does have some good ideas in this position, but she has to find them, and she has suffering from a lack of space. So that is white's triumph in this position. We will come back to this board. Let's have a look at how Vaishali is doing against Nana. They have entered the, an end game already after the ninth move. Queen g3 was played. Queen yes. takes, H takes, and black played g6 here. We were also considering bishop f5 directly. Yeah. g6 was met with d4, most logical. Black plays bishop f5, c3, and now we see that the d4 pawn is not weak in this. Yes, and particularly turn. now the g6 it may not be the best uh, square for the bishop because if your bishop is in um, on g7 and your opponent spawns on d4 and c3, b2, <laughs> and then surely you are not uh, doing much. Not like Grenfell where there's a pawn on, no pawn on b2, so c5 becomes a possibility. But putting the bishop on g7 may not be a great idea, and rather uh, g6, d4 looks like a great strategic um, idea. I mean, it's a normal strategic idea where white try, wants to play this. Although where to develop the c1 bishop is a issue. Uh, bishop h6 is always a possibility exchanging the bishops so because the bishop is potentially good or bad here white should enjoy a very slight advantage i think very slight but uh, yeah not really uh, great but yes because compared to other cards this we can say it's a karokan structure and in a karokan structure the f4 point is very weak here uh, the f4 point has been guarded because of h into g3 so i think a uh, good uh, opening i think so after c3 black played knight to d7 uh, threatening to bring knight f sorry knight f6 and knight e4 or knight d5 or even c5 maybe we will find out and after bishop h6 by white bishop takes rook takes we are not sure if bishop f h6 was the best move here to uh, but we will see how the game progressed after bishop h6 takes rook takes king f8 long castle king g7 and rook H H one, not this rook. Yes, uh, I think rook D H one keeps black king and rook engaged at the cost of you keeping two rooks engaged for no reason. So rook H H one, and uh, I'm not sure if it was a good decision to exchange the dark squared bishops because what was the bishop on F eight doing anyway? G seven, yeah. Bishop E three looked like a more logical move there. Bishop E three probably and long castle. Bishop f4, I don't know because c5 could be coming, but I'm not sure if black is ready for c5 yet. Because even if you take cd4, knight d4, your bishop has no good squares, and you open up bishop b5. So you know, I play just bishop f4 also, and uh, if you if you play c5, just long castle. It's not uh, a completely equal position. Black is not uh, ready for c5 break yet, uh, but yeah, I think exchanging a minor piece always makes things easier for a side which is defending. Yes, absolutely. So here maybe knight g5 would have been a nice idea with the idea to attack at 7 and if knight f6 we can continue with bishop c4 and uh, attacking f7 as well and here e6 would make the f5 bishop very awkward. Yes, f3 uh, seems to be uh, very dangerous and if h6 then g4 because you are not threatening to take my knight. So lack of development if the bishop was on g7 h6 was possible. So yeah, knight g5 I had not considered this move but seems to be great. Knight g5 and bishop c4 or knight a and bishop c4 are the common ideas in this pawn structure but it didn't strike me in this end game where bishop on f5 will be very awkward and if black plays, you know, I'm not sure if white will be able to take on h7 yeah but rook into h7 looks like a simple threat, I mean fairly easy threat in case of yeah so this looks like a I mean nothing like a pin. Um, and the f8 is also hanging yeah. so maybe bishop g7 is possible yeah but still i think simply and take now on f7 we take an f6 f6 yeah but I, I don't know if this is uh and she simply taps the knight yeah. after so bishop g7 uh, seem then i still play bishop c4 i think also can there be threats of g4 here he g4 oh, is a serious threat g4 is it's a nice crushing idea. crushing more no yes yes bishop yes. c2 king d2 no yeah b3 maybe ah. oh uh, even king d2 and b3. 
but we should be, and we should be but no, it's but escaping then, it's uh, escaping it's to escaping, be fine yes it's escaping to be so here uh, b3 b3 first but then h6 that's it i get some squares then no H6 uh -huh. and then you come back to E4. But it's still very tricky. Like after yeah, knight F3 uh, you have bishop E4. So knight H3 maybe. And still bishop E4 and uh, F, F3 bishop D5. C4 is not possible because bishop into D4. So but where do you go after bishop E3 or threatening C5? Right. Yeah also perhaps I mean I can now that white has become so much I can play ugly move like uh, F5, no? if I, I mean, I prefer or even knight F4. Knight F4 is awkward, I think. But, but then uh, you will play sh long castle and. Yeah, I think a, a bishop by itself is not a big advantage here. That's know? true. So, so maybe black has uh, escaped. Yeah, here black seems to have a reasonable position. So knight G5. You know but this was an interesting try yeah. for white and. Instead, white played bishop h6, which is uh, not very useful in this position. But we will find out how Vaishali continues. Also, objectively, I think black was going to play bishop g7 soon, and bishop h6 could have been played then. So, trying to improve something else yeah, was uh, not a very uh, great choice. I think uh, king on g7 is fine. And, uh, yeah, but this is still equal. Yes, obviously. Black is not uh, ready to strike c5 yet, I think. No? Yeah. Sometimes. Uh, after c5 break, if white doesn't get knight d4, then there are some problems. If you really get c5 break and you take with the knight on c5, then black pieces are more active than white. Yeah. So that's a matter that is to be... But here, I think, I don't think it's ready for that. Uh, or d f5 bishop will always be hanging. And a position that is quite uh, satisfactory uh, for black. Uh, not much... Uh, I'm satisfactory both sides, rather. But probably white doesn't have any advantage, for sure. Definitely. So let's go to Harika's game, uh, who's playing Shualova. A lot has happened in this game after ah. we last saw it. White played rook e1 and uh, black replied with, oh, h6 was, yeah, black replied h6 and we were considering a3 here, but white played c3 with the idea to play d4 immediately, rook e8 and d4 on yeah, the board. Black also gets d5, yeah? So black played bishop f8 now first up yeah. and after uh, black is threatening e takes pawn takes and sorry e takes pawn takes and rook e4 rook e4 and knight e4 however queen c2 here is deadly because qu queen e8 and bishop d5 and here n it needs to be calculated uh, because sometimes the bishop gets trapped after knight b4 but here the bishop on d2 does not allow knight b4 yeah. A bishop on d2 also has, I think, some advantage, like as you said, controlling b4, or also, uh, you know, like some some time or uh, different uh, deploying the bishop on c3 sometimes is also possible after exchanges. But yeah, it's a major t uh, many times knight b4 is an important defensive motive for black and uh, d4. Uh, I think white is, but black also has played rook b8 timely, so d white is not ready to play d5 because then. A c6 break would come very quickly, so knight e7 and c6, and that's where h6 will become useful. Otherwise, if the pawn was h7, then bishop g5 could have been a irritating one, the control of d5 square. You know, in some of the lines, uh, if white can get bishop g5 and bishop into his white plays a d5 structure, and whenever black plays c6, uh, white eventually occupies d5 with a piece, and black is saddled with a bishop on f8, uh, generally. So, here, so, uh, again. After, if white chooses to play d5 any time, then the d2 bishop should be exchanged with uh, f6 bishop. And that could be reason for h6 uh, move. So bishop c2 was played by white and black replied with d5. Yes, both players are ready. Do you think it's a good move, good break in the center? Do you think black is ready to play d5 in this position? Oh, uh, you mean bb7 first. But um, I don't know. Um, because bb7 may not be a proper square and uh, I think there's no other improvement possible except the yeah, so I think if you have to play d5 now uh, then here or with bishop on b7 but bishop b7 who knows if you get a chance so bb7 was an alternative here I think uh, that could have been tried uh, instead of d5 here d5. if we take on e5 then white black will not be able to take de4 yeah. because we take on f6 pawn takes knight and uh, Pawn takes bishop and uh, pawn takes pawn and the bishop is attacked and that's why we simply uh, are better here. Even rook e8 would be a 
better yeah. move order and queen f3 uh, however here after d e5 black is threatening to take Must with the knight yeah. on e4 and now our e5 pawn feels vulnerable uh, after d5 knight e5 would not be a good move because knight takes rook takes and we have the wonderful f4 move here after which oh uh, here f4 uh, you have doesn't like it no bishop c5 check knight into e4 um, and there is a lot of attack coming in my opinion oh wow uh, perhaps no bishop c5 check perhaps rook into uh, how about rook into e4 yes rook into e4 is interesting but i thought what is better after the exchange sacrifice i don't know bishop h4 to come or no c5 oh and yeah. d4 yeah no there are some fantastic games by sigbert tarash playing in uh, in, a, in open variation you already have knight on e4 so you know uh, in some of the uh, seemingly uh -huh. unexpected exchange sacrifice the great masters of exchange sacrifice i think i must say kasparov and timonov but also sometimes sigbert tarash and they sense the uh, that sometimes a piece and a pawn were much better than a rook very often kasparov really great and vishwanathan anand also not a very common uh, uh, exchange sacrifice he has not made very uh, often the exchange sacrifices but his famous game against elvest with black is i think a great attacking piece but generally the exchange is sacrificed to get a king side majority and not this type of uh, yes but is a powerful position white regrets having played f4 here because the pawn on f2 would have been uh, made the things completely different yeah the here the position is we're going to be very strong i don't uh, approve of f4 here which means that that possibility exists yeah but overall that's what you are showing is a standard motif i think f4 uh, uh, and e5 is a standard motif which uh, doesn't work here so you know i think the position is very interesting uh, presuming that opponents don't uh, players don't go for this so d5 uh, i think a move with they must have calculated a lot particularly black has played d5 so important uh, calculations have been done then in, in their minds and now it is up to them to find the correct moves yes d5 a very critical position and harika already down to 50 minutes on the clock after 13 moves uh, harika let's remind the viewers she is not a Uh, usually e4 player she does play e4 but her pet lines have always started with the d4 move or the knight f3 move following the in the steps of vladimir kramnik and uh, e4 a line she prepared only recently in 2017 or uh, 18 i saw her play e4 for the first time and uh, she uses it is, as a surprise weapon most of the time so uh, that's why harika is taking so much time in the opening and d4 d5 already this is a fresh position yeah and uh, it remains to be seen how the players will handle it we will come back to the exciting middle games after a short break do stay with us it's the final round and lots of action happening here in the women grand prix
the third game of the. Uh, sorry, what about uh, the game of Tetris? Okay, one, two, three. We go. The third game of round ten to finish uh, is the game between Zhu Jinner and Vaishali Ramesh Babu. They're both joining us. Zhu, one of the top players uh, in the uh, Grand Prix and in this, uh, like here in New Delhi, you won the game. Would you just briefly summarize what was the key moment in the game, in your opinion? This game, um, I, I chose a not so popular line, open line. Uh, yeah, I know she open, opening is uh, pretty good, so I, I, I try to play some final line to uh, avoid her home preparation. And uh, yeah, she, she spent a lot of time in the opening and uh, yeah, but she did, did not find the best of all and then I get uh, the initiative and then yeah I won the game. Uh, obviously as, as you mentioned as you mentioned you were very good in preparations in opening preparations and you got a decent position out of the opening but then you misplayed somehow. Vaishali would you care just to explain for your end? Yeah, I misplayed in the opening. This 94 was not good. Like I already forgot uh, how to how I supposed to play. So yeah, I spent a lot of time there, but I could not find a good way. I think Bishop G4 or Bishop F5 should be the main move. Uh, yeah, later I didn't get any chance. So my opponent played a very strong game. This has been a difficult interview. Um, sorry, <laughs> maybe an interview as well. But it's been a difficult tournament for you. But still, uh, you came in and last moment as a replacement. You. Um, you know, we were playing really experienced and strong players. I heard one player say, you win or you learn in chess always. So there's no real defeat. Has this been a good learning curve for you, this tournament? Yeah, it has been a very difficult tournament for me. I, yeah, after this tournament, I have to analyze my games and I hope that this experience will help me in future tournaments. Zhu, you're among the leaders and you've been playing really well here. Uh, is there, tomorrow is the last round. Do you feel pressure? Do you feel uh, confident? How do you feel? Um, not, not so special. I, I just uh, try to uh, try my best to play. Well, thank you very much both and good luck.
welcome back we are into the final round of the women grand prix exciting games ahead and there is a chance that we would have three players tied for first place at the end of this tournament at the end of this round yes in fact after the penultimate round three players uh, running for the top position with a uh, i mean equally uh, with equal points after penalty round itself is a very uncommon thing that can show how uh, seriously this tournament is being played and one of the main reasons is that it's a tournament which is a qualification for world championships so everybody wants to become um, have a chance of winning the world championship absolutely <laughs> yeah. and so me i had had that uh, feat in the junior group <laughs> it's a great uh, performance so me thank you but it's uh, definitely not the same as winning the senior world championship which is every child's dream when they start to play chess and let's have a look at the tie breaks of this tournament in case all the three players win what happens so we had a look at this at the beginning of the stream but we confirm with the arbiter that uh, let's say uh, for example the first tie break is higher number of games played with black pieces and goryachkina and bibisara have the higher number of games they have played four games with black so far and uh, zujinar has played only three so zujinar will be out in this tie break criteria and the second one is is sonnenborg uh, sonnenborn burger system which will be uh, clear only at the end of the round but at the moment gorechkina leads in this tie break and after the number of wins in the tournament of every player involved in the tie so basically uh, if all the three players win let's say mm -hmm. then zujinar will be out in the first tie break criteria in the second one in case it is tied then the third one will be applied which is the number of wins and in this case bibisara uh, has the higher number of wins at the moment in the tournament and in case today uh, yes there is no chance that this will change because if gorechkina wins today then she is a clear champion if bibisara and zujinar draw and only if all three of them win uh, can they tie or if all three of them basically have the same results can they tie for first place yes race? but also important uh, sb is generally not equal at all <coughs> because sb is the score of uh, you get full points of the opponents you have beaten and you get half of those who are drawn with and you get nothing for those uh, who you are lost with so sb is very rarely equal unless there's an identical score against every opponent so probably we can say that the second tie break will decide we may have a possibility where you know that doesn't go to the tie break as far as the first position is goes somebody only one player wins perhaps or something of that sort is also not unlikely so let's see every game is fought well and everybody has been chosen from the top 16 players in the world so we can never say uh, what happens some players are off the form some players are in great form but again everybody is uh, has proven to be a champion before and uh, how they play this particular game has nothing to do with how they played the previous game so every game is a different game and we have a very interesting situation in the tournament absolutely let's have a look at zujinar's player cam and we will have the live board as well so this is the most exciting game of the round so far with uh, opposite side castle situation and let's see what did zujinar choose after a uh, bishop d3 so zujinar did go for the bishop c6 move which you were looking at pravinji yeah. we were also looking at c5 which was a strong idea here bishop c6 played after a thought of 21 minutes yes yeah, she was taking a lot of time i think this uh, yeah c5 was more aggressive and could have uh, run into some uh, i mean it could have been some risk as well so bishop c6 is safe because she has preventing g4 and f4 both which means that the game will not be sharp but at the same time black may not get the attack which black might have got in this move c5 so again when you play a safe move you give up a chance to play the most aggressive move that's also a uh, fact about chess and about because chess is nothing but a warfare and in the warfare if you are playing safe then your chances of aggression reduce so here bishop c6 i think a safe move there shouldn't be any uh, problem for black but perhaps c5 was more aggressive <coughs> so yeah what what would white do here what how did the game go let's uh, actually see because uh, i think it was very uh, important uh, to see how the game actually moved 
So F4 was played. I think a big committal move because uh, bla and perhaps a move necessary because black is trying to improve. So F4. But somehow I like uh, here black a bit. Though we can see that okay, bishop into c3. Yeah, this pawn sacrifice I considered. It's a very a risky sacrifice for sure and uh, let's see how the game went uh, queen e3 check this is the pawn uh, white should not have i mean bishop into c3 is the only move i shouldn't white shouldn't be taken with queen or pawn because then black gets knight to e4 or bishop to e4 so a very wild pawn sacrifice i must say and uh, now comes queen into pawn check and king b1 yeah here uh, well white has given up a pawn and white wants to uh, play bishop into uh, f6 and take on h7 and uh, yeah I think this pawn sacrifice is interesting because it's open game for the uh, bishops and uh, direct threats against the king side uh, it's impossible to take the f4 pawn I mean uh, isn't it or it's still possible to take on f4 queen into f4 yes actually uh, king b1 and here black uh, can take on f4, yeah, but I can we? So. Yeah, and rook f4, I just go queen h6. And if you take on f6, I'm very happy to, to play queen into f6. So maybe. No, yeah. rook f1, queen h6, you want to go, no, right? Queen h4. And after queen, yeah. bishop f6, you will take. Yeah. And uh, you're not afraid of your king, right? For your king. Uh, not because many, rook f4 not, is not, many not minor possible. Pieces, not many minor pieces. Rook f2 is there, but I play rook d8 or rook e8 and rook d8, rook d6. I mean, uh, it's not easy to. Uh, get checkmated in this. The rook is not coming to h4. If the rook came to h4, yes, it would be dangerous. But yeah, this was possibility of giving a e3 pawn. I think we need to analyze queen into e3 check king b1 position well. Here, uh, somehow I feel that back should be. Uh, when I p suggested bishop c6, I considered that b f4, bishop c3, bishop c3, queen e3 check was better for black. That was my uh, basic idea. Moves like knight e4 also. I mean, there's a move like knight e4. I don't know, knight e4. Rook h e1 and uh, yeah, this is a knight into c3 no? chain, but knight into c3 oh. check. And if you take with the queen, you're not threatening on h7. Mm. If you take with the pawn, I've got a saving check at b6, so I don't lose h7 uh, pawn. And objectively, even if I lose h7 pawn, I'm not going to get mated. So uh, perhaps this is bad for white. So queen e3 check and knight e4. What was the plan that uh, could have? Uh, been made was it a bad move knight e4 another move that uh, yeah knight e4 looks bishop e4 is not possible i think because of bishop into f6 so no uh, for for black also bishop e4 was not possible i think because of bishop into f6 no, so after king b1 we will see how the game progressed yeah, okay, because yeah. knight e4 was a good idea but let's see what happens for queen c5 does it give up the advantage or uh, what happens let's see uh, how white continued rook h1 and rook f8 on the board and here, um, what do you think is White's compensation for the sacrificed pawn? I think first of all, g4 uh, is a possibility. Uh, oh, rook e5 played there. Okay, g4 is a possibility. Secondly, uh, anytime even an endgame after bishop into f6 doesn't really offer much winning chances uh, for... Uh, but here, yeah, this here the one could be losing. But even then, we don't know you lose the h7 pawn, but if you're going to smash on c3, it's again not a... Uh, um, sort of really b not something really bad because if white could if white queen was in front it made a lot of difference but if the bishop is in front and uh, yeah it's better to uh, rook g5 the, the attack oh against g7 yeah queen is oh, queen is trapped. Yeah. but also attack on against g7 is more serious than attack against h7 so even rook g5 would have been a very strong move i didn't see bishop f5 so i was worried about uh, yeah so this is uh, queen is trapped and uh, Rookie uh, five, so yeah, so that means rook into uh, rook has has to be played, and uh, so yeah, it's so unfortunate that the queen is trapped on b six, and so rookie five had to be played, which was, and after f e knight d five, bishop at seven, it's black turn to move. So we see that at least white has equalized, whereas here after queen e3 we felt that black was slightly better. Yes, in fact, uh, yeah, it seems that black is better, although I'm not able to find a move that maintains an advantage, but uh, because taking on f4 is not good, perhaps knight d5 is a possibility also. I mean, I allow you to take bishop into h7 check and I just go king h8 and then I'm attacking c3 and f4. I don't know, knight e4 
probably simplifies it to somewhat equal but 94 break rukej even impossible so 94 is a possibility again no 94 uh, what does white actually do look uh, 94 maybe a good move would be bishop to e5 not allowing knight c3 yeah, and knight f2 would be met yeah, with some, some rook h1 some, yeah. and uh, oh knight d1 oops yeah but uh, the king so okay. maybe so bishop, maybe we first take first, yeah. and after you play king h8 can i play a uh, good move rook, here rook d Maybe rook d e1. Yeah, so you don't take knight so h1. So there is no... And after queen to b6, uh, we simply bring the other rook to f1 and this is winning. Yes, one. the f3 uh, knight is... Um, Trapped. It has no square. Uh, absolutely. So uh, bishop e5 could have been a good move and maybe yeah, she rejected yeah. it for yeah. this reason. Mm -hmm. So queen c5, a logical move by black. Can we take f4? This was another... Yeah, rook f1, I thought it's not impossible to get the place this position. Queen h6 probably better than queen h4. So I think it's not very risky to uh, play this move. But even queen h4, uh, you are not allowing rook f4, rook h4. So I don't think there's a, a major risk. Bishop into f6 is weak. The pawn is on f6 is weak. But uh, queen c3 is a very slow process and take rook into f6. And it's not, and you have some... Uh, problems after rook a d8, the d3 bishop could be pinned and say for example queen c3 rook a d8, why should white be b better? There's a threat of uh, in rook into f6 bishop e4 and uh, yeah, so queen c3 rook a d8, black must be better here. And you take on e4, I have bishop e4 or rook into d3. So you have the pawn down and uh, no realistic compensation. So perhaps this was a possibility also. It's possible that a position is balanced, but you are two pawns down still. So balance again is uh, not a right word unless you find perpetual check. Sometimes some drawn positions because of perpetual check uh, are sometimes stalemate. They are equal, but they are not balanced. In the sense, uh, the onus of finding out the accurate moves will be on white here. Otherwise, black will be um, better. So in the move she played queen c5, she is actually giving up the... It's, oh, she is not giving up the h pawn, okay. No, actually, uh, I'm wondering how much of the last round pressure and the pressure of uh, winning the championship plays a role in these decisions because queen f4 is a nice move to play. But, you know, with the king being so open, do you want to enter this kind of position when you uh, might have to uh, only draw to win the championship? Yes, actually, when you're, when, you're, when you're leading the tournament, uh, that's a... a, a a problem to play such a move but i'm sure that if they draw she is not going to come first because are, she has a worse tie break isn't it so if if she draws and both the other players lose then she comes first and like i'm not expecting loss for both uh, the players both the other players so if she draws then she will not be first in my yes. opinion the tie break is bad so she wants to play for a win but not all out for the win when she doesn't have any chance at all so she wants to keep her chances alive with the extra material at the same time, yeah, but rook e5 wins back the extra material. So now I think it's going to be an equal position. Bishop at Sanji. Uh, no, but I wanted to know, like, let's say, uh, let's say you are playing a last round game for a championship. Then what is the mindset of uh, such a player? Because definitely they are under so much pressure. She's playing black against a formidable opponent. And also Nino has been playing well in the second half of this tournament, especially yesterday and day before. She had very good games. She had very strong attacking games. Yeah, and uh, to <coughs> be on the defensive, uh, would it be a little more pressure for black than white in this uh, game? I think so. Also playing black in a crucial game is an uh, issue generally. And if you look at Zuzaina's score with white, I think she has got a fantastic score with white and she got more white. So that's also one of the reasons why she's so comfortably at the top playing uh, some uh, more whites. But yeah, defending in the last round against one of the strongest players, that's a problem. And also a formidable opponent who has got no direct weaknesses, no clear weaknesses uh, in the playing style. So that's a, a issue. And uh, you are playing against a strong player who is probably well prepared. And uh, that's the reason why she went for uh, Ragozin, which she had never played. So I think her idea was not getting into a, a bad position uh, in the opening. And I think this, she succeeded from that. She at least played something which she had prepared and to play with e5 but again long castle must have been a 
uh, sort of move she probably didn't expect. And that's why we see a very sharp position. It's a very tense battle for uh, both of them, but particularly for Dujainal because it's a championship game. You know, it makes a lot of difference. Sometimes uh, I look at the results. Uh, oh, Bishop D4. So probably a simple draw then, yeah. But a draw is a good result for Zujana nevertheless because we must share that even Katrina Lano has an outside chance of becoming a champion in case all three leaders lose and Lano wins her game because okay. she has the best tie break out of all. Uh, so in case uh, Lano is right now on four and a half points, if we could have the current standings on the screen, then uh, Lano will... Lano is on four and a half points and uh, Bibisara, Gorechkina and Zujainer are on five and a half. So if the three of them lose and Lano wins, then she would be the champion. So it's important that uh, uh, all three of them don't go all out f to risk because yes. there is a possibility that the other two lose and you make a draw and you still become a champion. Yeah, very uh, outside uh, chance though. But yes, it's possible. I think they are going to play solid. They are not going to play as if it was the only option. Also, I think uh, Zujana is completing her Grandmaster title with uh, a draw. Oh, uh, wow. I, I think so. So, in that case, I think why should she take risk? Yes. As too much, too many good things to play for, definitely. Yeah, I think playing safe is also important. And Black is slightly better here. I think it should be a draw, but Knight F4 or such. I think Black, Black has no problems. Knight on E6 is there. On G2. I don't know, knight f4, g3, knight into h3 is possible. But because bishop h1 is controlled yeah. by the c6 bishop. But bishop e3 and you know g5. And it's a position which you are not likely to lose for sure. You are, but you need not even take. Uh, I mean knight f4, knight e6 is a good option also. Yes. Yeah. So we will, uh, I think we can expect at least a draw for Zujiner in this game. We will come back and uh, see how they handle the position. Gorechkina playing white against Humpy. If Gorechkina wins this game, she might become the champion. So let's see how she's doing against Koneru Humpy. Wow. Uh, this is a completely equal position with yes. white having a pair of bishops as the slight uh, reason for which she could play for a win as opposed to black's bishop and knight. However, when it comes to piece placement, the rook on a7 is not doing much. Yes. So that is a concern. She wants to bring it back with rook a8 and c8. Or she waits for rook into c6, pawn into c6, and the rook can come to a good square. Yes. And after rook takes, pawn takes, uh, the black pawn structure is weaker than white's. Hmm. So that is a decision that black needs to take, whether to allow rook c6 or to take and... Uh, uh, white will have to take with the rook, of course, because yeah, rook into C1 uh, sorry, because bishop, bishop, of bishop course, yeah. because rook c1 loses to bishop d2, but rook cannot penetrate on the d5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can go back with rook a8 and rook or b8. b6 perhaps because rook a8 bishop f3 is a bit undesirable. So bishop c1, I think b6. B6 is uh -huh. an even better move with the idea to play rook d7 and exchange. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this is a very very equal game. Let's see what happened. After the point that we left it, bishop d6 was Humpy's choice against mm -hmm. knight b3, not bishop b6. So knight a5, most natural move in the position. Rook a7 we expected. And after knight c4, white played bishop b5. We had a look at these lines. Yeah, this move actually I we had missed and uh, Humpy probably found this move. So uh, I think that's why she we played bishop d6. Oh, we we did see this move. Ah, we did. Okay, we saw this And move. after yeah, bishop yeah. b5, rook D, uh, D1 was not played, but knight D4. Yeah, we looked at bishop into uh, C4. C4 yeah. Bishop takes and rook C8. So the rook has come to an open file in exchange of the bishop, uh, light squared bishop getting exchanged for the knight. Bishop goes back to E2. Knight C6, one more p uh, minor piece exchanged. And rook D1, pawn to A5 by Humpy. Bishop D2, bishop B4 offering these bishops for exchange as well after Bishop takes pawn takes the a2 pawn will be a target. Yes, rook c2 is a deadly threat then because b2, a2, e2, everything seems to be on the same, uh, you know, like rank. Yeah. And after rook a c1, it's 
black's turn to move we can expect black to either take on c1 or take on d2 but taking on d2 will allow po rook takes pawn takes and it remains to be seen if she wants to play with this pawn yeah but with king more active she could play rook d7 and uh, yeah rook c2 is still possible but i don't think that position offers any chances to white as it is because black king will be very strong on uh, b6 from coming from d6 and yeah i think it's not a a great position for white in any case is not going to be a, a resulting game because this is a game where a uh, position where i think one or two inaccuracies will not change the uh, drastically change the outcome uh, or the sort of uh, nature of the position unless there's a blunder which is not possible again reduced material white has not really activated the bishop but white is uh, waiting to uh, get a chance to play bishop f3 and yet the king on g1 is a uh, problem it is doing nothing so black will not have any problem in defending uh, her, all her weaknesses so we can say uh, safe draw uh, there in the i mean likely to be uh, made here rook c1 more natural because white is struggling to develop so i think that's fine so all right mm. so do we have a look at the other leaderboard bibi sara maybe has a winning chance against lano let's have a look how she's doing after okay so uh, what do you think of this current position this is the live position on the board queen a4 has just been played 21 moves played with 32 minutes for white and 42 for black so lano feeling quite comfortable oh uh, yeah i think this uh, not a dangerous position because uh, white pawns are, are also very weak and they are not normally hanging pawns because there are two pawns stopping them so it's not easy and uh, yeah i think it's uh, but how did we reach this let's see uh, how did uh, how was black saddled with a weak pawn on c6 and how white black was able to create a weakness for white on um, c4 as well uh, so rook d1 uh, is where we last saw the position mm. and queen d6 yes. was expected mm. but black went back knight f6 an unusual decision and only two minutes was taken for this move yeah so she has, has analyzed that knight e5 is not really great because of bishop into g2 and perhaps queen c8 queen b7 that could be her plan after bishop exchange oh yes this is a nice idea yeah. and occupying the long diagonal with the queen instead yeah. so rook f e1 H6. Lano not playing yeah, any committal yeah, moves. Yeah, why? Why H6? I didn't. Uh, okay, maybe. And I didn't understand this. Okay, Knight G5. Perhaps sometimes, although it never works. But yeah. Here we <laughs> saw Bibisara play Knight C1, a great move. Ah, that was yeah important. To go Knight D3, Knight E5 in the future, and Black played B5 after thinking for 10 minutes here. A strong move. Let's see how White replied. White replied with B3. After an another ten minutes, can we I take on b5? Yeah, question? but bishop f3 and uh, yeah, it's still. Now I prefer black a bit because knight on d5 is going to be very strong, and the other knight on f5 is going to be strong, and the d4 pawn, uh, queen on f6. So I think this may be the bishop has no direct target, so it's probably fine. b5 a great move, um, easier for black to play. Position must be equal but uh, easier for black to play i think so b5 well i think uh, she is playing quite ambitiously i must say b5 and uh, yeah it's uh, normal and it was replied with b3 you said isn't it yes yes uh, white uh, did not spoil her own pawn structure but played b3 and deciding to take hanging pawns so definitely something uh, achieved for black here because hanging pawns is not what white would have desired yeah, and particularly these hanging pawns are uh, generally weaker because there's a pawn on c7, which means that you are not likely to get d5 a strong pawn. And here another remarkable decision, I think, bishop into f3, isn't it? Yes, bishop f3 by black here, not c5, but bishop f3, bishop takes and c6. So she wants to play against this bishop, c6 covering this diagonal. And uh, yes, she has, she has blocked the pawn from moving to d5 and now she's going to attack the d pawn with uh, three or four pieces. At least knight f5, queen b6, rook d8, until uh, white is required to push c5. Once white requires, uh, when is white requires, c5, then of course the d4... I mean the d5 square also available, so white bishop will be will have no target uh, in that case. So how quickly black organizes attack against d4, that's important. Uh, I played such positions, and if there is a 
क्वीन वर्सेस क्वीन एंड टू नाइट्स फॉर ब्लैक एंड क्वीन बिशप एंड नाइट फॉर वाइट एंड सी आफ्टर सी फाइव ब्रेक से ब्लैक गेट्स अ बिग पोजिशनल एडवांटेज बट हियर वाइट पीस आर वेल प्लेस इन दें वाइट एज गॉट नाइट बी थ्री एंड नाइट डी थ्री इन द सी पॉर कैन बी स्ट्रॉन्ग बट इन जनरल पोजिशन सी फाइव ब्रेक इज पॉसिबल हियर आई थिंक वाइट इज वेल प्लेस बिकॉज इवन इफ द रुक्स फॉर एक्सचेंज and there is although it's not very likely but there's no way uh, white has actually huge advantage unless white tries to win a pawn free bishop into pawn which is going to be supported yeah and now mm, what next now maybe to key 3 and rook b3 knight d3 you still have queen into d4 isn't it knight d3 yes knight d3 queen d4 uh, nothing much for white so definitely uh, that will be rejected queen knight b3 is, is a more rook uh, three rook three rook three yeah because you want to uh, actually queen should will be forced to go to c7, c7. after rook b3 yeah yes. so rook e3 yes knight b3 i don't know if i play knight b3 my idea could be knight a5 perhaps Knight b3 looks uh, awkward because the, what is the queen doing on e4? Uh, well, I'm putting three attacks against c6, <laughs> right? And then I may play c5 sometime when queen exchange loses the c6 pawn. Something of that. But knight b3 type. will definitely be met with rook f d8, so that you yes, I discourage yeah. knight a5. Yeah, and knight c5 doesn't make any sense anyway. E5 break will be coming. Yeah, so rook d3 as rook e3 as you suggested looks like a good choice. Uh, not because uh, to exchange the rook, but to drive away the queen from a post where she's attacking white's d4 pawn. So the purpose of rook e3, rook b3 is to reduce the pressure against the d4 point by driving away the queen. And any time black plays rook into b3, a b3 is strong. So yeah, white has uh, played quite. A, white has a very stiff uh, structure, one must say. And uh, well, it's a. Uh, a uh, a position without major pieces then i think the things will be decided by c5 break if black gets that but overall i think uh, white has a slight pleasant uh, advantage uh, no no risk position with uh, not really uh, much hopes so we don't know how to look at it but uh, also knight b3 uh, we didn't play knight b3 i think no what was the move played Knight B3 is what we Knight played. Knight B3 has been played, has been played on the okay. board. Okay. So this is the position on the board, and we will see. I actually like Lano's um, time consumption uh -huh. in this game. She has maintained more time than Bibisara, even though uh, they reached a very unusual position. Um, black uh, and Black was the one who was struggling for space. Let's say in this position. Black is the one who was struggling for space after Rook B8 and D4, but even then, Blano did not take too much time to make her decisions and choices. Yeah, also I think uh, there you have the advantage of uh, being more experienced because uh, you know you you would have probably seen more strategic plans and games, and it's easier uh, to play strategically for a player who is more experienced than a player who is comparatively younger. Because I think uh, Bibisara is still. In her teens, and I'm sure that she has not known many pawn structures. I mean, she has got innumerable amount of pawn structures, and the theories related to that, and uh, where the pieces should stand in which pawn structures, and all that sort of study, uh, she may not have done because she is comparatively very young. So here, I think Black is uh, f finding it easy, easier to post her pieces at r right squares. Rather than white, because white went knight c1 back, and then now white is back again with knight b3. But again, great effort because because before white could play knight d3, she gave a b5 break, mm -hmm. and then the knight d3 was made uh, impossible all the time. And now knight comes to b3 back, so not a great achievement. Nothing much has happened in last uh, seven eight moves for white. White has not improved anything in seven eight moves. Black has uh, because black uh, sort of created active play in the b line. Uh, black is no longer cramped. The b7 bishop is gone, but uh, it's been deliberately been given to block the white pawns, which are planned to be targeted. Absolutely. But knight b3 is a safe move, where uh, black will never be able to play knight f5 because c6 is hanging. And I also uh, was having a look at the player's body language. Uh, Lano looks very confident. Bibisara looks almost bored. I'm not sure if she's tired or she has decided what to do next because she was 
uh, if we just look at her she looks very uh, uninterested in her position but maybe she's thinking in her mind yeah i think no the, the body language suggests that i don't know it's not looking at the board and uh, uh, means uh, sort of perhaps she's bored of the entire tour i mean she's been doing very well but long tournament sometimes you know towards the end Oh, we are not really <laughs> inclined. Some it's a, it's a big problem, but it happens with some players. <laughs> but okay. No, I th- I think that hardly happens in the last round. I mean, yeah. last round you are very motivated. Usually, what is your attitude in the last round? Are you uh, hoping to be done with the tournament, or are you more motivated in the last round, or are you more tensed? Uh, it depends on what is at stake. If it's a must-win type of situation, I'm not particularly good at, but I have done well on occasions uh, in youth. and uh, it's on the other hand if you make a draw and come first that's the situation where i'm not done well in fact in some in the uh, first national championship i won i was the highest rated player and i needed a draw with white in the last round and i had to struggle because i didn't play well so i think that um, i have issues where um, a comfortable draw uh, you have to play for i don't like to play for a draw and at least i'm not good at that <laughs> so i like a position where opponent has equal on side i hate positions where you want to win and opponent wants a draw <laughs> i i love position where both of us uh, tournament uh, yeah, position yeah tournament position where both of us are ready to uh, go all out for whatever uh, requirements i have also often struggled with the last round and uh, there have been times when i needed to win the last round in order to become champion and i only drew a very uh, big advantageous position and uh, when i have needed to only draw the last round and i have lost a completely equal position oh. so this has happened to me several times and uh, i i really struggle with the last round because of a uh, few factors like fatigue mm-hmm. and then the last round is always earlier than the other rounds yes actually the morning rounds particularly you know, in, in india is generally my last round is in morning and i hate playing morning rounds yes it's usually <laughs> even at, i have played the morning round even at 9 and 9:30 yeah. like you just wake up have breakfast and go for the game i mean uh, and usually you also want to prepare if you have something at stake so then what happens is you don't sleep very well at night you s- or else you wake up at 6 in the morning and prepare and you feel more tired on the board because you have not had your usual rest so these factors do make a difference but obviously the the factors are the same for all the players in the tournament Yes, but it again depends on your body cycle. For example, for some people, it's very comfortable to play in the evening. More, most of them. That's the reason why games are not played before 11 a.m. in any case, and generally they are after uh, noon. So almost everybody is more comfortable in afternoon sessions. But at the same time, uh, yeah, morning sessions. Some player players are very good at morning sessions. I mean, particularly Oriental, the Indians. I have seen that very good. It to be because some of them always get up early in the morning. They some players are used to getting up at six o'clock. Anyway, for for them, it's the best time. You know, your energy level is maximum two to three hours after you are uh, you get up. So, I think uh, it again depends. It's not a matter of luck. It's a matter of uh, I think your daily routine. Probably it's required uh, to uh, sort of. Uh, accustom to get accustom to to try to condition yourself yes. into that sort which uh, we are not looking at at the different angles how to s- suddenly uh, get conditioned to a different time control that yes. i think no study has been made by indian chess players i'm sure about it yes and i think that will be very useful uh, like uh, uh, th- there was a tournament uh, where i was uh, before which i actually tried to like it was abroad mm-hmm. and i actually tried to uh, maintain the same schedule as i would during the tournament when mm-hmm. i was at home before going to the tournament mm-hmm. one week before and it did help me but honestly um, it's not always possible to do that yes also for example we played in time where the visa and everything was done at the last minute so yes. you know while uh, we're preparing for the tournament the vice so eight teams had already arrived at the venue to, for acclimatization for seven days yeah. we were running to get the uh, things uh, the proposals cleared from the government and with the, to the visa so to justify <laughs> our visit and sort of yeah. so it used to be the hec- most hectic time with no uh, practice and uh, no rest yeah. and no good food as well because you know you would be Uh, out of the home already for seven eight days, and then you would also play the tournament. So it is not again uh, the same, but yeah, things are uh, improving now in a way that you are at least uh, a bit free during that. But yes, uh, that's some of the things which are which matter. Lot of things actually uh, professional success 
uh, matters a lot of things yes. and somehow i find the europeans are more uh, uh, consistent when it comes to uh, unknown situations particularly i'm talking about not necessarily europeans but the soviet players for example some of them were able to uh, play their best even in the most adverse situations under which i wouldn't be comfortable playing oh actually i have had the most opposite uh, perspective that i think in indians i feel are very flexible and adjusting i have always had this observation no they are adjusting in their behavior you will not find them grumbling from that point of view yes they are very adjusting but are they able to give their best we are talking of that yes yes over uh, the board yeah. I, I, I mean okay. i have seen gukesh and uh, i mean all of us not just not just seeing others but all of us have spent nights at the airport and then played the next day and uh, arrived to the venue just one hour before the round because the flight got delayed or cancelled even recently in 2019 we were flying to kazakhstan for the world team championship and our flight got cancelled twice oh. not oh. once okay. so two days in continuation the flight was cancelled and then we arrived just in time for the tournament and played so i think nowadays players are just uh, you know they just want to play actually the the opportunity to play is so motivating that they don't really consider other factors so much uh-huh. but the last round definitely affects me yes. o- also much. again the age factor is important because i think the youngsters i mean uh, in your teens you are able to adjust to all sorts of situation more easy than uh, as the things uh, change i don't think the flexibility in the approach or flexibility of the body uh, remains after a particular age <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's not true. Uh let's go to uh Vaishali and Nana's game which we haven't had a look at and they might uh agree to a draw very soon because this is a completely equal r- drawn rook ending or they might keep playing till the kings remain over Actually, the board. Actually o- o- only open file with black so I think black wants to play because black will play rook h2 and if you play rook e2 black may play king f6 and king f5 king f4 black has a strategic plan of g5 g4 break here oh. and white doesn't have a strategic plan so i think there is white's probably white king is uh, more suitable on f2 in order to make a draw but uh, yeah black at least has a plan which wasn't there earlier but now black has a plan so i think black is a bit more comfortable also draw looks like but you know g5 g4 really creates lot of weaknesses in the camp so rook h2 who's turn to play it is actually it is black's turn to play she yeah. can play rook h2 here rook h2 here. rook e2 uh, rook rook i don't know rook g4, g4 is too awkward yes i think f5 but you still have rook g5 and uh, f4 no, oh no but then rook g4 back yeah and if you don't play if you, you play yourself f4 but again that's not great as well black plays rook h4 and you play g3 black plays rook h2 check you know black is improving for sure it's not with rook on g5 pawn on f4 and pawn on g3 <laughs> black plays with uh, rook so rook is trapped yeah, yeah. <laughs> so rook g4 is ruled out even with rook e2 and after rook e2 can black play g5 first so g5 first okay yeah. not you don't want to bring your king uh, i don't want to allow g4 check and lose the rook that's for sure <laughs> so i just but yeah okay you want to play king f6 and king g5 a yeah, good plan yeah and uh, yeah any time white play g3 or g4 you just move the rook to the sixth rank and yes you, but uh, the thing yeah, is king. after king f6 i thought as white i can play king e3 and, and uh, when you play king g5 i play king f2 Mm. and why why is this bad for yeah I mean, for king e3 if i play rook h1 no for king e3 if i play rook h1 and try to transfer the rook to the other side it should be a draw but i just i play rook a1 and a3 rook b1 so maybe king, king f4. f4 i don't know yeah but okay i still play rook a1 and uh, a3 maybe rook b1 yeah so rook b1 even or not a5 but rook b1 yeah i thought rook b1 just and yeah but a5 4 oh, also the uh, see that uh, roles of the two rooks are different uh, whether the objective assessment of the game is draw is different black rook is attacking and white rook is defending that itself is not a very uh, great thing it's i think somehow uh, rook is a attacking piece rook is not a defensive piece and rook is a very bad piece with uh, so white will be able to hold the game but white will not give a, sing- give a single threat in this position whereas black will give some threats right we will uh so we can expect white to uh, defend draw, but draw uh, this game yeah draw this game but uh, black will try to push for some more time so we will come back and see how the players handle this position the life position is this one over the board 
with rook h2 not yet played so black is still thinking and uh, 26 moves have been played with 33 for minutes for white and 31 for black so, so is, is she thinking of something like rook b5 b4 rook g5 i mean that's a way of uh, playing is also possible just to create some either b4 and the rook g5 and if you play rook a2 then a5 perhaps no, and black can keep on playing for initial to put the king on d6 then but after rook g5 isn't g4 trapping the rook yeah okay that stage yes if i don't have yeah, that but i always uh, escape from d5 so i come to the oh, open file again yes, from yes. d5 but I missed yeah d5. but you know i don't know it's uh, may not be worthwhile advancing all those pawns, but white gets c4 and king c3. It may not be dangerous. I mean, it could be good for white also. So we don't know. All this has to be calculated. Somehow I prefer rook h2 to, uh, to rook g5, rook b5, such artificial moves. So, but a uh, draw uh, likely and a uh, draw with correct play. Uh, but again, a position which is not completely uh, sort of, uh, I mean, dry. There is some activity for black even bringing the king to d6 and pawn c5 is also option sometimes so uh, uh, equal position with white having to uh, find uh, exact moves more often than black having to perhaps <laughs> right so let's go to uh, harika versus polina that was a very interesting game with d4 and d5 played what happened after d4 d5 what was white's decision here she took knight into e5 after thinking for nine minutes and black took the knight white took the knight with the pawn and after knight takes e4 bishop takes pawn takes it looks very equal but the e5 pawn will have some problems and so will the e4 and, pawn. The, b and the bd2 and knight b1 now white has to justify the um, or sort of black has completed the development bb7 or bh3 are going to be i mean in good position here uh, white has no reason to i mean white white's position is not justified if you're playing with white i think it's not a great position for white to play so bishop f4 played uh, supporting e5 uh, what else to do can rook e4 I don't know. Be played here or, or is it too bad very very dangerous i think because you are not developing and Yes, um, B, B, B7 or? Uh, Bishop B7 looks good and after Rook D4. Um, yeah, otherwise Queen D5 was awkward. So Rook D4, where does the Queen move now? Because Bishop C5 or C5 could be a 35, my Queen moved to a good square. Queen C8. Yeah, now I'm attacking E5 uh, pawn. E5 is attacked, so Bishop F4 and then Bishop C5 is yeah, what you wanted to play. Or, or do you want Queen to play Queen F5 first. Or Queen F5 also, I don't know, Queen F5. But Queen F5, Queen D3, I thought. Ah, okay. And, uh, yeah, so and first I'll exchange. First C5. So Queen E6 might ah, be better. Okay, yeah. With the idea to play Queen C6 also. Mm. Or Bishop C5 is possible, but then Rook D2 and now Queen F5. Yeah, so keep on getting some tempos, yeah? Bishop G3. Let's let's look at some other options after Bishop Rook E4. Maybe Queen D5 first with the idea that mm -hmm. Rook D4, Queen E5 can mm -hmm. be played. And um, let's say we go back with the Rook to E3 or right. E1. Yeah, you want to go to uh, G3 then Bishop B7. B7. And now this is really awkward. After Queen G4, we even have Rook E6. Queen G4 should be losing, I think. Right? Rook E6. Uh, and if you play F3, well... Not, not, now, not now with queen on d1 now if there is bishop c5 yeah. now if there doesn't make sense but with queen on d1 at least but you're not developed knight on uh, mm. so you know even rook more like rook ad8 after rook ad8 you don't know what to do you can't develop the knight you can't move the bishop so uh, and here rook f rook d4 would be worse because of queen e5 and now we even took back the pawn and yeah. the bishop is still the knight is still on b1 with nowhere yeah. to go and you know, even more, even in game with queen e2 and all this is possible, but mainly the game is very favorable in middle game. Where black is much better here, bishop c5. And so this will not uh, be possible probably. So, so that's why white did not take rook e4 but played bishop f4, mm -hmm. supporting the e5 pawn and uh, offering a queen exchange so that in Actually the end was, game was queen d3 possible? I mean, it's a, it's a very artificial move to play, of course. But queen uh, d because knight d two, yeah, and bb seven you are rook e three, no, and uh, 
Oh yes, and I picked the E4 pawn. Yeah. Yeah, there's no need to go yeah. for this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So, Queen D1 was played by Black. Mm -hmm. Rook takes, and now E4 is still alive, and so is E5. G5 yes. was played. So Bishop C5 and E3 in case of Bishop E3. So. Bishop uh, C E3 then rook into E5. Yeah, so Bishop G3, Bishop C5, and then E3 looks like on cards. Oh, BG7, she just wants to take the pawn. She simply wants to pick up the but pawn. But allow Oh, uh, I thought if she took the pawn, Rook D8 check was coming. I, I might have played Knight to A3. But okay, she wants to play pawn for pawn, okay. And Bishop B7, oh, Bishop F5, I thought Bishop B7 was a way to protect it. And after B4, White is a pawn down after Bishop B5. And she doesn't even pick it up. She plays rook a d8 first, knight b3. b3. Yeah. And now rook takes rook takes bishop e5 was also possible. But after bishop takes, rook takes, she does not like knight c5 yeah. perhaps. Or even rook d8 and rook a8 followed by rook e6, knight c5. Mm -hmm. So white played, uh, black played rook to d3 here. Very strong move. The pawn is attacking c3 and... Knight c5 yeah, was that played. Plan must be given. I think the c3 pawn must be given. You can't uh, play passive moves there. So rook c3, knight takes a6. Now if black plays bishop e5, does white have any uh, compensation? I don't see it immediately. And the bishop is very strong on the other end. No? Bishop is uh, black. I mean, the only compensation is rook c1 if yes. you get the c7 pawn. Yeah. So if bishop e5 is not playable in that case. Also, there were some very awkward moves. Yeah, this seems okay. No? The pawn you're getting you back. Can't save it. Yeah. Yes. So black is very slightly better. So BE5 is not yet the uh, uh, time to play BE5. She has played rook a8, a good move, because she wants to put pressure on the a2 pawn. And after knight c5, which is the only move, black has not yet made her move. But rook c2 could be on the cards. Mm, some break like e3 also you think would be uh, possible or you don't approve of moves like e3? Yeah, e3 so okay. is good. Yeah, yeah, good idea. Uh, because you know black white feels very uncomfortable with that bishop hanging and rook will be on e2. Rook c2 is also, rook c2 I think white just wants to play a3 or a4, no? So, I thought... Oh, but oh a4 I missed. A4, yeah. I was looking at a3 but I thought I'd come back. Yeah, so a4. But a4. Think, yeah. So, that's why I was not very inclined. I thought... Maybe a move like e3 or yeah. So knight c5 looks forced anyway. And uh, you know, if black plays rook uh, a3, rook c3 to a3, then the rook d2 is uh, probably forced. fine. Yeah. Yeah, so that's fine. Also, I was wondering if uh, on the previous move, if rook into g3 was possible. I don't know, it's a bit artificial. Yeah, rook a8. Uh, no, rook a8. No, not here. After rook a8. After rook a8, knight c5. Now, uh, I. Am I am I winning uh, quite a few pawns? I mean, bishop into e5 and rook into a2. Probably not generally sacrifice. Yeah, it actually, not. it's quite good because rook c1, bishop uh, g3. Yeah, but I think I'll win some pawns. Yeah, I, I, have, I have problems here as as white. I don't uh, the e3, bishop f2, rook into a2, uh, rook c2 is met with e3, so rook d2 is met with bf4, and this sacrifice. Uh, I think sometimes it's uh, not the two bishops are very strong. Do you know the uh, Soviet theory that uh, uh, two rooks and knight are not better than uh, a rook and two bishops? Although oh. we, we count it exchange down, but they say it's equal material. Oh, wow. Yeah, in that case, black is a pawn up. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, that's a fanta some of the fantastic things which I learned from uh, great players that some, some of the concepts which are not gone out of USSR. And we're lucky to have. Uh, met players like Taimonov, Verbach and many others and uh, we learned something which of course uh, it's not normally correct in all positions but very often I saw for example here uh, the bishops are really giants and you know the slow plan with, with the rooks on the board but uh, with one rook on the board even the f5, f4 it comes it's I think black is yeah the evaluation bar also likes, likes black no? Uh, is rook into g3 the best move here for knight c5 that I don't know can you just Check. Uh, yes, knight c5. Points. Instead of that, you were uh, yeah, for knight c5. You were suggesting rook yeah, g3. Uh, is it the best move? So uh, no, it's probably not the best. So move. the best move is rook to c4 here. Yeah, and then a3. I was worried about a3 followed by h5. 
Yeah, and I thought, okay, you force me to be and then you play all those things because I have a permanent back rank then. So. And let's see what happens for uh, simple move like bishop h2. Yeah, so I just play h4 probably. And uh, so what uh, the computer says here is black is anyway better yeah. positionally. Yeah. Because white has no plan. And permanent back rank also. And yeah. white, wi black even plays moves like I mean I don't understand the moves, but basically black is the one who will improve. Yes, so let's probably see. put the king on f5. No, if you get a proper square for the bishop, then get the king on. So can we simply pick up the e e5 pawn now? But if you pick up the e5 pawn, always there is some counterplay in the c file. Rook once you move it, rook c1. I think yeah, but do I dare take on c4 again? Bishop into e5 comes into consideration. If I'm winning that pawn, if white is winning the pawn, then white has no problems. Yeah. Take take and rook c1. Then white then then black could have problems. But yeah, this is a draw. Uh, white is slightly better. So yeah, uh, yeah so uh, it's not possible to take the e5 pawn so soon. Then why rook e8? Exactly. You yes. didn't take it in initially. Yeah? You didn't take it initially. Rook was on e8. You didn't take it because there will be counterplay. So now that you have decided to play the end game in a middle game uh, style. I mean, it's not an end game actually. They call it uh, queenless middle game. You yeah. know, it's more or less that type. So. I think handling it that way. So I th that's the reason why Rukun I never make sacrifices <laughs> in end game. But Rukun came to my mind may not be the best move. H5 and Black just keeps the pressure. And uh, I don't know King F1. But then what next? Actually, what move to play is a big problem. For what Black as well as White. Uh, Black probably can play any move I think. But Rook A2 because Rook A2 allows Rukun to be for you know. I mean it's a sort of a uh, Zugzwang uh, that is there. So. So let's say here rook a2, then rook b4 Always, is possible. Yeah, so because the pawn is pinned. And uh, I have a question. Can I play a move like bishop f8 here and pick up the c5 knight? Yeah, bishop f8, I thought before rook a8 then. Uh, first trap the knight. In. Yeah, but uh, if you take bishop into knight, pawn into bishop, rook into pawn, it should be a draw. So, uh, yeah. Draw? Uh, Why would it be a draw? A pawn down. No, 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 not this one. I mean, if you allow to be captured on c5, I am a pawn down, but opposite card bishop. Here, I would prefer to give it on the uh, c5 square. I'm not very convinced that it will be a very big advantage after bishop into c5, pawn into c5, rook into c5. It would normally be a draw, but because the bishop on g3 has no square, so that's the reason why it could be bad. But otherwise, opposite card bishop, one pawn down is a good uh, position if the bishop is somewhere on b2. It could be a draw for But I even think. a3 is weak here. Yeah, that's why I selected bishop on b2. Yeah, it's, it's uh, actually you are going to lose the a3 probably. Yeah, rook. It's three. actually not at all simple yeah. to defend it because we will. Yeah, no, it, it's like a bishop down rather than the. Uh, I mean, the g3 bishop uh, is in a base position, not uh, the pawn. So in that case, oppo if opposite card bishop also if black is winning in an ending, then surely it's a big drawback. I think uh, almost all moves seem to be. Something has gone. Strategically, very wrong for white. Uh, absolutely, a d5 break was a convincing uh, option then probably. Oh, let's see the game. The game uh, in the game she has not played rook c4 but h5. Oh. Rook e1 was played. White black played h4, and after bishop h2, rook c4. Black, now. it's black's turn to move. Yeah, now. but now because the e4 is attacked, you're compelling your opponent to play a strong move actually. Rook c4 is strong and you are playing with a dummy bishop. Yes, this bishop does nothing but to defend the e5 pawn. So yeah. actually this is uh, pretty uh, the le least useful piece on the board. Even the rook on a1 is probably better because after a4 yeah. it will have some scope of coming back into the game. But bishop on h2 completely out of the game. It remains to be seen how Harika will will defend this or if Polina will be able to convert her advantage. Actually, there are some tactical possibilities now. You will never be able to take on e4 because of that rook into a2 also sometimes. But yeah, rook c4 is a very strong move here, I think. Um, big advantage to black in my opinion. Uh, uh, sometimes um, I told some of my students who are d4 players and they played e4 on time. So I said, try to get into proper uh, position which you know because if you get an unknown position, in a e4, e5 position, if you're not a very regular e4 player, then you're not going to understand the position as good as somebody who started with e4, e5. I think the Soviet school believes that everybody should start with e4, e5 first and then go to d4 because e4, e5 is very committing moves and drawish positions. Now, Shereshevsky is the only player 
who says that you start with D4, uh, D5 first, you understand the importance of material safety, and then you go for E4. All right. So let's have a look at uh, how <coughs> Zujanar is doing. It's been a while since we had a look at that game, and uh, uh, we saw that they exchanged the queens after uh, uh, on C5. Like let's say after Rook E8, Rook E5 takes takes Knight D5, and here Bishop H7, King H8 was met with Bishop to D4, Queen takes Bishop takes. I think a drawish position, yeah. And Sorry. now Black continued Knight B4. Bishop okay, yeah, Knight B4 occurred to me because you are playing Bishop B4 check and perhaps even Bishop D5 after that. So That's what happened and uh, here she played Rook yeah, D8. Yes, so spin. So then why uh, Bishop oh, B4 check? Oh, but E6, E6 yeah. was allowed. Yeah, so why Bishop B4 check then? At least uh, D1. No, no but this is not clear because now if you take then Bishop G7, so Black played no, Knight D3. You, you're, you're closing the file, so that's Rook okay. Rook takes. Ah, the rook takes d3 is unexpected. Actually, king d2 f 6 must be her idea or rook into d4 also, no? So, uh, king d2, I think rook into d4 has a problem with e7 perhaps, but... No, yeah, I bishop don't know. c6. And king e3. Rook, rook e4 and... Ah, okay, king c3. King c3 instead. Take, so yeah. this is oh, fine. Oh, king c3 was better on the previous move. Yeah. Am I, but you still but play... But even here, rook e4, no? Okay, and rook d and... Uh, yeah, I don't really gain anything uh, uh, rook d8 check and bishop d c2 check but nothing uh, much is coming out of that yes this will be okay so black, uh, is, just, black is just a pawn up yeah so let's see what happened no this is very interesting now after yeah, rook, rook d8 takes, i think is a very good i think yeah and, pawn and but EF7. yeah so you want to play bishop c5 and remain a piece up yeah so what do i do about it which does it mean that i must play b6 she has played b6 is yeah, the okay. only move uh, yeah and uh I'm not really worried about the h4, h5, h6 plan too slow. I have got king h7. So now will I be able to play bg6, rook f8 and then take your pawn? This is the crux of the position. If white is able to maintain the pawn, she is better. And if black Be wins the better, pawn? Better, I don't know really. Exchange down. I think it's bishop e5 unpleasant yeah. to play. Bishop e5, but yeah, you have to see if I actually win. The, because bishop c7 is... Okay, bishop c7. It's not possible, actually. It's still possible. Rook c8, no. I just move the king. Then bishop f7. But then f bishop into f7, and it's a tragic ending. <laughs> uh, yeah. The tragic end to a very end and wonderful yes. life. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, let's see what has she played here. Let's see, let's see, let's see. They're playing really fast. They and they play very sharp uh, positions. Rook d3 was met with bishop d3, pawn takes b6, white played bishop to e3, bishop g6. And bishop g5. Yeah, so idea is to play b7 and win a piece. Uh, rook f8 and now bishop e7 and played. And rook f7. Uh, oh, so this will be a draw very, yeah, very soon. Yeah, it's, a because it's obvi an obvious draw now. Opposite color bishop endgame. Yeah. Was there any option for white, uh, for black, instead of allowing this uh, idea? No, I think bishop e3, you're not, uh, 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 yeah, after bishop e3, you're not saving the exchange, so bg5 b7 cannot be stopped so actually you are losing a rook so better give up exchange with bg6 this is forced because rook e bishop e7 cannot be stopped anymore after bishop g5 and now um because black moved the rook to f8 you are black is not losing a full rook and losing only an exchange so a standard drawn position so rook d8 was a committal move perhaps a simplifying move I don't, we don't know till what stage they saw if she anticipated if she saw the sacrifice there are different moves like bishop d5 possible, even without bishop e4 check. So I don't know why. Perhaps she is afraid of a bishop versus knight ending sometime. I had rook and bishop versus rook and knight ending. But I think there's nothing to fear from that. And here, of course, there's nothing to fear for. So the, uh, certainly a game drawn. But what happens is actually she finishes third in case of a, I mean, uh, you know, like if other players also fail to win. Uh, in due to tie break, she finishes third, which means first is 160 points and third is 110 points. Uh, it's a lot of difference. So a bad tie break uh, can mean something uh, not so good. And if all the games end in draw, she finishes third. No, that's. But uh, uh, we must also have a look at the standings of the overall Grand Prix mm -hmm. uh, because she is placed second. 
she's placed second in that list uh, with uh, 110 points in the first Grand Prix and 65 in the second. So even here, if she finishes in the top three, then she has a great chance of qualifying for the candidates. Oh, I think no, because 110, 110, 65 is not a great score. No, now she will get 110 again, right? If 100, she, yeah, when so if 100, she 110, 110 and 65. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a very great score because, you know, like uh, there are players who have got 131. They, for example, Humphrey has to play uh, third leg yet. Yes, and but yeah. that's uh, yeah. really, I mean, it can be anybody's. Uh, yeah, but also see Goryachka now only one leg played with uh, 130. Humphrey only one leg played with. Uh, Kostenuk very strongly placed 90 plus 160, which is already 250. So perhaps 110 is not enough to co get into top two. We will see. We will find out. Yeah, we'll only know only in after June. the Poland. Only after Poland. Uh, it's yeah. actually yeah. in uh, not in Poland. It's in uh, uh, another country. Okay. Uh, so they have be, changed the venue. in Poland and May, isn't it? Yeah, but yeah, they have oh, changed okay. the venue now, and uh, we will uh, soon get an announcement about the exact dates of the fourth leg, King C2, and this is a draw position. Let's have the last trap, Bishop into <laughs> A2 B3. <laughs> yes. So Let's uh, have uh, Bibisaras versus Lano on the board, on the screen with uh, the player camps and their board. So Bibisara playing f uh, against Na Lano, 24 moves have been played. Knight B3 mm -hmm. was met with Rook F D8 and Black uh, White played Bishop G2, Queen C7 and B Rook D2 on the board. I think she's going to double in the D line and then man over the Knight probably. Uh, is it, it where? Oh uh, well, uh, knight a5, c5, knight c4, and knight d6, and uh, you allow knight d5, and you get knight on d6. But once Anand remarked that rook into d6 is always compensation. <laughs> so, oh, black played rook b6, and we uh, see that Lano is short on time now. She b6, has okay, so over protection probably, yeah, nothing more than that. She has 18 minutes on the clock after 24 moves. That's not a great time situation. Yeah, it's and uh, maybe her idea is queen c8 and rook a6. Yeah, but also I think uh, Bibisara has very strange style. So she played rook d2 in order to put rook c1 so that she can threaten d5. So both rooks are supported, so she could threaten. I don't know, we don't know. It becomes, it takes me a lot of time to understand her plans. <laughs> it's got a very, yeah, rook e5, rook a5 also, yes. It's a standard plan. Uh, you know, sometimes this pawn structure comes in Karakai and defense in black plays b5. And uh, this is also basically the same structure, you know, so rook a5. Usually, uh, white, I mean, I've seen the games here, white is generally good. And when white pushes c5, it becomes either white wins or black wins. So either the d4 goes or the c6 goes. So or something of that sort. So uh, people normally avoid that. A strategic break by c5 by black never comes. It's good for black, but black will never get c5 so easily. So we can see, I think, uh, more chance for white here, but because you know the similar position, I've seen some games played by Botanic where you are able to crush uh, opponents attacking uh, c6 point uh, something. But yes, c5 break is mm, c5 advance eventually has to be made somewhere at this c6 point is well guarded, but thrice attacked. What do you do? You you have already guarded thrice. So do you think that after knight a5 is c5, no, knight a5 fails to rook a6? Okay, the idea is to prevent knight a5, because knight a5 fails to rook a6, so okay. She is at the moment playing preventive moves, but rook not in back rank, d5 always scares me. Yes, no, I think uh, rook b6 is a very nice move, because you are threatening queen c8, rook a6 also, and your queen is very awkward on c Yeah, but then b4. I go to b4 attacking your knights, so I'm not worried about that. If you go see queen c8, rook a6 is not comfortable, I go queen b4, you have to move that. The e7 knight is an important piece in guarding c6. So again... But uh, I will uh, want to move my knight to f5 at yeah. some point anyway. Yeah, true. So, uh, keeping the knight on e7 is a liability for black so yeah. she wants to move it to f5 so after rook b6 i have guarded the c6 point yeah but, well. but if i play rook c1 am i actually threatening d5 uh, perhaps because the queen is actually no no e d c d knight d5 is possible no it's uh, b, b d5 okay yeah so right so rook b6 a good move by uh, black and we will see what is white going to do she has made a move Okay. And it is king to 
No, King G2 was played a movie before and then... King G2 was played over here mm. already. Rook yeah. D8. King G2 was played. And Queen C7. Rook D2. Rook D2, Rook B6. I see that White has made a move. So, Rook E5 probably. But... Uh, oh, Rook E5. Is there a tactical Rook into D4 coming? Are we missing the Rook E5, Rook no, into D4? No, she has doubled on the D5. Yeah. So, are, are we missing Rook E5, Rook into D4? I mean, was this possible tactically? Oh. Right, right, right. Is it possible? I don't know where to calculate because you get a C passer, then up into D4 is bad. So oh, it seems it's a bad move. No, A7 is going, no? A7 is going. No, queen E5 yeah. and Rook D8 check, intermezzo, and after King H7, Queen A7 and yes. B6 and E7 are both hanging. Yeah. Um, why not directly? Or, um, why do oh, yes. I, th I thought that ah, okay. D4 Rook was hanging, ah, okay. but you can play it directly. Yeah, also. Also, yes. Yeah. And after... Uh, Rook E5 was interesting, but White play continued with her plan to double on the D file. She wants to go for D5 break. Yeah, but it is only simplifying. I it mean is not possible itself because yeah. Knight on E7 and F6. Yes. So, so uh, unless you have a second minor piece guarding you, it lets me Knight on E3. No, I don't know what is her plan. That's why I always I'm always confused with what she's aiming at because I think she wants to free her Knight. Yeah, that's what I found. Rook D2. That was the first thing. She but where to put the Knight to? E5 is desirable. Uh, you will not get it to E5. Because the root is only d3, which uh -huh. will leave your d4 pawn weak. So, what next? Knight a5 she cannot play because of rook a6. I think knight wants to go to c5 and control more of black squares. Yeah, but knight c5, yeah, that's true. Knight I C5. mean, not dark squares, but the squares in black's camp. Yeah, so, yeah, but knight c5 actually sometimes uh, in some of the comments, uh, Alekhin has used a very uh, strange term, the move that prevents nothing and threatens nothing. So, you know, it, uh, uh, knight c5 can run into moves like e5 also, one has to see. But yeah, but rook on b6, uh, if you are leaving a7 pawn any, any time free, then I think rook on b6 may not be a well-placed piece. If you intend to give queen into a7 any time, then rook on b8 is better placed. But white is still more comfortable, I must say, that's all. Oh, and Nino and Zyujinar have agreed to make a draw, so we have yeah. a result on one of the leader boards, Zyujinar with a draw, and we see that Goryachkina and Hampi have also drawn their game just now. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, so just a second ago, they have agreed to a draw as well in this position, and uh, with a three-fold reputation on the board. So both the leaders have drawn their game, and if Bibisara wins this game against Lano, she's a clear-cut champion of the woman. Yes, problem. and then yeah, then no. Uh, Bazujina has assured uh, herself of third position because now Lano cannot catch up with her. But probably that is where she's going to end. We will probably. find out. We will find out. Because I, I don't see Bibisara losing uh, as a big possibility here. That's why I said because if also a bad tiebreak is a bad tiebreak. And the opponents are aware of that. <laughs> uh, I'm no, not opponent, the rivals. <laughs> <laughs> we will see how the Goryachkina game ended. Let's just do a quick roundup. Uh, White played d4, uh, Goryachkina uh, against Humpy, and Black replied with the Queen's Gambit accepted defense with d takes c c4 on the second move. And Goryachkina went for the end game after d c5 for a6. Here white also has options to stay in the middle game after bishop b3 and bishop d3. Knight but she I think queen e2 is also more. No? Queen e2 and b5 just bishop b3 and bishop d3 are options. Yes, C but bishop C4 b3 the good. most popular option yeah. in this position and white played d takes c5 which is the second most popular move and after bishop takes they enter this end game which is symmetrical but White and black both have some ideas to trick their opponents. Yeah. And uh, a better king for black, but uh, a bit weakened queen side for black as well. So after bishop knight to b3, here bishop d6 was black's decision. And after knight a5, we have rook a7 on the board with knight c4 coming in. Forcing an exchange of the light squared bishop. Bishop b5, a nice move by Humphrey. Yes, I think that's the only move in that. Otherwise, she could really be suffering to uh, defend this position. Yeah, so, uh, even though the knight got remanured to c4, it's going to be get exchange, exchanged. Exchange, yeah. And after knight d4, knight bishop takes bishop takes what black has in return for the pair of bishops is a good piece activity and a centralized king. Bishop e2, knight c6, another pair of minor mm. pieces exchanged and after a5 even more yeah, a5 is a nice move because bishop b4 is uh, now the plan 
and uh, so, rook c1 was played and here uh, humpy decided to take on d2 rook takes pawn takes rook takes and knight d5 centralizing her knight mm. and after king f1 g5 another good move placing her pawns on the square opposite of white's yeah that's like a good structure uh, you know generally pawn structure e6 with e6 f7 uh, g5 is a logical structure because you defend f5 you defend g5 and you know you are making it difficult for white to advance the pawns yes uh, white will not get this pawn structure now anymore and after king e1 f5 bishop d1 rook b7 this is a very very equal position white played bishop b3 uh, black does not want to exchange the knight so she plays knight b6 a3 knight to d7 even okay bishop so a4 rook b6 okay so black is trying to trying to uh, yeah. create something yeah. King, king d6 perhaps yeah yes king d6 knight c5 is a threat now uh, oh no still there is rook d2 check but so yeah. white played rook d2 check king e7 and decided to repeat the position mm. because well uh, king e7 was a possible king c7 was a possibility but uh, uh, nothing really uh, uh, promising about that move i think both the players uh, are happy with the draw in this position and uh, yeah also that because it doesn't offer much i mean there's nothing much uh, creative that can be done you have uh, exchanged most of your pieces and the pawn weakness is uh, too slight uh, in presence of the black king uh, nearby it's too slight if black king was on g7 then one, one perhaps white could say that rook c2 and you have to go knight b8 and i go sometimes uh, rook c5 eventually but with the uh, active king for black as she Uh, lost the right to castle, but uh, king on e7 was preferable to king on g1. That's the reason why my white has played king f1 and king e1. So proving that king on e7 was more useful. Yeah, but it's a simple game. Uh, and they have not taken many risks. I think uh, the opening choice was simple. Yes, so absolutely. Good, a good result. Good result for Gurechkina, who has a great chance to win the tournament. Yes, and also 100%. I mean, um, assured of second, and perhaps a good chance of. for so 130 points in their pocket and 30 points are still deciding where to fall <laughs> <laughs> absolutely so two games have ended in a draw already zujiner and gorechkina both have drawn their games against nino batsiashvili and hampi respectively let's go to bibisara versus lano which is the main attraction of this round now because if white wins then bibisara is champion and the youngest player coming first yeah it's also <laughs> i mean something fantastic but uh, i think the position is quite solid at the moment i don't see uh, much happening but yeah very today we have five games and not four so we have three more games and let's see it will be very interesting and the advantage of this point system of the grand prix is that you know, everybody is motivated very given the player finishing 10th and 9th there is a difference of 10 points so, you know if you are finishing 9th or 10th in some tournament the prizes are same but here the prizes are also not the same so you know one uh, is able to give her best or is required to give her best even in the last turn <laughs> so absolutely <laughs> oh they have also agreed to a draw here bibisara also agreed to a draw yeah i think wow. the, uh, the rugdi one who suggests that she was playing for a draw i yes, mean rugdi to rugdi one means okay you are you are i'm not going to allow you to do anything The Let's last two moves indicate that I'm not going to allow you to do anything. Let's okay. look at how they drew because this is very very important from the tournament standing perspective. Yeah. After rook e d1, rook d b8 was played, and white played knight to c5, rook d8, and here white went back knight b3, rook okay. b8. So I think both the players were comfortable with taking yeah, a draw so in this position. Because it's not a forced draw at all. I mean, white can play on here. White can definitely play on, but White decides to repeat. See, I think they are playing very logically. White plays knight c5 uh, with the idea of uh, knight a6, and also White wants to play knight d3 and knight e5 if given a chance. So Black plays rook d8, and now you are not able to play knight d3. How do you improve your position? Knight a6 makes no sense. So I think after getting her pieces into optimal position, she didn't know what to do. So uh, logical. Uh, what is the time position? Wow. Did, did so they have a lot of time? This is uh, very important that all three winners, ha all three potential winners of this tournament, have now had a result. They have finished their final round, and uh, and no one can catch them now. 
nobody can catch them so we will check with the chief arbiter as to who wins the tournament because goryachkina and bibisara definitely have the higher tie break compared to zujinar yeah but because the all till all the games are over because the second rider is uh, sb yes. you can't decide now well you can say that third position is uh, has been fixed and but first a uh, tie break will be resolved only after the sb uh, are counted and anyway, to count the sb score you have to have all the games Oh, uh, to be over. So, so let's have the tie break on the screen because uh, that's the most important. Uh, yes, in last round it's the always the tie, tie break the criteria. Screen. Yes, uh, we must. Uh, we want to uh, tell the uh, viewers that tie breaks are not fixed as such, and uh, organizers do have some liberty of keeping it here. Of course, a FIDE event, so tie breaks are decided by FIDE. But again, number of uh, pieces with black is, I think, uh, not very common. because it's very often equal so so yes we have the tie breaks on the screen and uh, the first tie break is higher number of games played with black i and think that is because of this walk over and withdrawal otherwise no it is the yeah. standard tie uh, break for yeah. all okay, fide all grand prix all fide tournaments okay no not all fide tournaments for the fide grand prix okay, event okay, okay. so all the events have the same tie break system higher number of games played with the black pieces mm. and here uh, um bibisara and gorachkina have an upper hand compared to zujinar because they both played four games out of nine they played four games with black whereas zujinar got six whites and hence three blacks in the tournament so she is now third according to this criteria the second one because bibisara and uh, gorachkina will still be tied so the second one will apply which is sonen bon burger system and if that is also tied then the number of wins in the tournament of every player involved will be counted which in which bibisara wins the tie yeah. but at the moment gorachkina is leading in the second tie break yeah and also sb normally never uh, uh, it is no never a tie in sb unless the result is very identical which is not the case here wow so it's uh, interesting actually because gorachkina might be the champion and bibisara yes. second and mm. uh, zujin are third but we will wait for the, all the games to finish to find out what happens in the sonen bon burger tie yeah, break yeah so i think uh, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we wish to tell the viewers that as, as soon as the games are over probably uh, quickly once the games are uh, results are entered uh, arbiters will be able to display the uh, results that's what uh, the arbiters have confirmed so i think uh, not a great wait for us two more uh, games are to be played and let's go to the two games which are being played i think uh, harika's game and vaishali's game so, so let's go to harika's game because we haven't had a look at that for a long time uh, we fin we uh, saw the position after h4 king h2 rook c4 yes i and think and a3 was played mm. king h7 knight to b3 rook d8 and knight c5 by white uh, so it basically white doesn't have an active plan yeah white doesn't have move and black will keep on improving so yes black is simply improving her position after rook d2 rook d2 rook is also on the second rank was it necessary to allow it because anyway rook d3 rook will yes. come to d3 otherwise and uh, it's equally irritating anyway and you can't be defending with rook b1 surely and you lose everything in the third rank perhaps so no this is not a good position it's a quite a bad position and uh, black probably well we must see how black breaks through that's important because at the moment his white is surviving only because she is guarding all her pawns and uh, once the black pieces are actively placed some weaknesses will be lost so rook d2 was met with g4 by white because white is tired of defending and here she can't even play king h1 because rook f2 is hanging yes so it's become very difficult for white now and is there a threat of doubling in the uh, yeah and then uh, e3 yeah, e3 and but in case of rook f1 yeah but in f2 e3 oh sorry oh, bishop, bishop g6 bishop, will no, play no bishop into h3 also no then subsequently i mean rook c2 rook f1 e3 pawn into pawn is bishop into H3 possible also. No, the, the, oh sorry. No, rook G2 e, is the check. G2, yeah, it's, you know, E3 ends the game, so knight can't guard it. So rook C2 has to be stopped. And how do you do that? So she uh, played G4 here. Actually, not capturing is a serious option again, no? Because why allow your opponent to guard G3? Say a passive move like BG6, passive looking move like BG6. Do I really have? Does White really have a plan to defend against uh, rook C2 and rook into 
uh, f2 is e6 a move we just take yes uh, or we take on a1 because e7, e7 will be met with f6, f6. Yeah. so uh, you can't win a1 as well as so e6 is probably not a move so you have to challenge the rooks then otherwise uh, somewhere you have, you have to prevent the rooks from coming to seven ranks so you have to challenge some of the rooks so let's go rook a2 and you go back rook a1 is it yeah probably rook a1 or rook c whatever i don't want to challenge rook c1 because you know, i don't dare take so yeah rook, rook c no i think maybe now e6 I think no. I think rook c2 is also rook c2 is counterproductive because there is no plan. So black will not play that. But rook a2 and rook 8c2. Yeah, white has to try to play e6. But even e6 doesn't achieve much. But yeah, sometimes a threat. G4 position on the board and black thinking about h into g3 and taking the h3 pawn. No. Yes. That's the option which she has to take and. Oh, pawn. she has taken it. G3. Yeah. So she, okay. So bishop she g3 on so the board. So okay. Yeah. Let your bishop be active. It isn't really active because already on. Yeah, but I'm not uh, finding it easy to take in on h3 because then we have the weak uh, yes, e4 pawn. So, uh, does she attack with? Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, wow. It's not winning a pawn immediately, but looks very uh, difficult. Bishop h3 is not a threat because of knight. Uh, so, what does black want to do then? Mm. Bishop f8 and bishop c5 after putting king g6. Yeah, it's possible that black just plays king g6 and bishop f8 and uh, not very uh, easy to um, play this position for white. I think white is probably losing this position. So I think it's uh, so it's not a um, very great position, I think. Um, mostly, I think this game, Vaishali's game we'll see because it's more or less a dryish position. This position is still complex. And uh, black has improved the position, but black is not winning completely. See here, Vaishali's game again. Um, black played the c5 break. Yeah, c5 break is a important possibility. And although it's a draw, uh, black uh, has uh, some chances. I've seen some endings by Tarash and some endings by Rubinson with equal pawns. They were able to win because the opponent was not in a position to counter attack very quickly. Uh, black will emerge a pawn up in some sort of ending where white will, will have to be play correctly and make a draw. So a well played rook ending. I think some of uh, such fantastic rook endings I've seen um, Averbach uh, play uh, in some tournaments. One of the famous endings I must say, uh, Taiwan Averbach was a very long 80-90 moves game but a fantastic rook ending was played in that. Sometimes. Oh uh, yeah, this is not a position which is a draw. It's a position that can be equal. You know, black could also undermine with a5, a4, and just trying to keep more and more hanging pieces for your opponent. Uh, a difficult position for white to play. Actually, white runs in such position. What is the normal? Uh, what normally happens is white is tired of. Uh, white doesn't know what moves to make, and eventually white makes some uh, moves which uh, create pawn weaknesses. And the active rook and a passive rook, that's a, a very great difference in active rook and passive rook. Somehow, um, well, I think black has uh, every chance of uh, doing something. Black wants to play probably e5 and take take an e4 check, something of that sort. Or, But generally, white and black also has to worry about, in case of e5, black also has to worry about c4 check coming and a pawn ending that comes, which is probably, uh, we'll see if it happens. But Certainly, uh, white is uh, short of moves, and uh, perhaps rook d2 is a move that's good. Uh, that could even be a trap if uh, we play, say, a move like rook d2, and if black plays a blunder rook f1, then we have a king e2 discard check, and we win the rook. So something of that sort. Uh, rook d2 looks like a sound uh, move here for white, uh, but no plan as such. Rook d2, okay. And then what what do you do if your opponent plays e5? That's a uh, question. So e5, you have pawn into pawn check and king e3. Uh, it's pawn into pawn, uh, king e3 check and pawn into pawn. Yeah, I think it's a tough draw because king e3 would weaken the c3 point. Such endings, uh, well, great players have drawn such endings. It's not that they haven't. Some of the 
uh, best uh, rook endings uh, you can see in the uh, classics rather than today's uh, games. You know, the uh, pre Second World War uh, uh, games, some of them had a fantastic uh, type of uh, rook endings. Alekin Kapablanka in their World Championship match also. Very good uh, uh, rook endings were played, and Rubinstein, of course, has played some Kapablanka. No, not necessarily tactical endings, but technical endings where somehow uh, one side is able to. Uh, get a slight advantage and uh, games have c converted into winning pawn ending suddenly for a better side with accurate play. I remember he, uh, once even in a knight ending, Dr. Lasker was able to beat Dr. Ratty, Ratty in uh, knight and two pawns versus knight and two pawns just because he had outside pass pawn and uh, that had to be stopped by a knight which, uh, you know, it's a lot, lot of things. Activity of pieces, a king d2 driving away, okay. So driving away the piece, I think rook a1. Uh, is a likely possibility and white will come back either king e3 or king d3 so rook a1 rook g1 here rook f1 is also possible but rook f1 again king e3 back so uh, yeah the idea is that uh, you can't play uh, put king on e3 all the time because c3 is under uh, check so you drive away the c1 rook first and then try to put the king on d3 or e3 so a draw with correct play but black is not going to give up so soon. Black also has different uh, plans here, a5, a4, creating some weakness on the queen side. And uh, because this a2 point is well guarded with the e2 rook, so when you play a5, a4, and a into b3, then you have rook b1. And if white plays b4 in that structure, say like uh, in the po uh, we'll deal with only with pawn structure, so if black gets this and here, then the b1 can be attacked with white king on say in the e file so then so this is a problem so this rook is guarding a2 so shifting the target is also a possibility also not nothing is forced and the play is going to be uh, complex white cannot just put the king on uh, c2 it may not be a great idea to put the king on c2 because black stars attacking the f4 point and uh, uh, you don't have a satisfactory move. So when f4 is attacked, black, white has understood the strategy that when black goes rook to f1, she would play king to e3 and when black puts rook to c1, she would play king on d2. So she's going to defend uh, uh, c3 and f4 pawns with the king. And uh, because the uh, fact that black king is not able to come to f5, black has already played f6, so black is not able to come to f5. So that's one of the considerations. In the actual game, f6 had to be played. There are always ifs and buts. If the pawn was on f7, then white would have rook e5 check. So again, uh, different uh, options uh, of uh, different choices for all the players. So a drawn ending which needs accuracy from white and uh, no need for such a accuracy for um, uh, black. So we are going to have a break now and... Uh, Sure, definitely. Yeah, so we'll see you in a minute's time. We are going to ha interview the players because the top three, I think, are uh, uh, already the top three places have been decided. So let's have a word with uh, those players, please. And Soumya, please, uh, if you are going to uh, interview or they speak, let's uh, please uh, join us. Or they if they've already been interviewed, let's see how the things are. But we'll first go for a break. You watch the uh, games, and after you have watched the games for some while, in a, for a while, we're going to bring you all the three silver, gold, and uh, bronze medalists who are waiting to share their experience with you. So we'll meet in uh, say about ten minutes. And oh, okay, just we are going to have just a one minute break. They already arrived outside. Great. I thought it would need some time for them to come and have coffee. They already arrived. We'll see you after just one minute. So don't go away.
Hello and welcome back after that quick break. Guess who's here? Bibisara Subaiva from Kazakhstan. Probably Hello. the champion of this tournament, at least second. You're tied for first place now. Yeah, how how do you feel? I feel tired. <laughs> Uh, we are so excited to have you here with us and to have been watching your games. Many of the people who are watching our stream have been watching from the first day and admiring your play. Yeah. Um, so many congratulations, Asubaya. Thank you very much. Bibi Sara. Yes. On your uh, wonderful feat. And you are the youngest player of this tournament. Yeah. And uh, is this your first, uh, is if you win this tournament, uh, will it be your best performance ever? In classical chess, I think yes, because uh, I played in the first Grand Prix not so good. I have bad results, three loses and one win. But here I played better. Wow, you played really well and uh, some of your games were beautiful. Um, especially with Haruka, we were all in yeah. awe of how you won that game. So let's have a look at today's game. Okay. If we can have the board. Yes, we have it. You were playing against Lano and uh, you played it with uh, C4. C4, yes. E6. Um, this opening I have with Harika and yes. Canero. Yeah. Um, I prepared maybe to King's Indian or Tarash system, but okay. She played E6, G3, D5, Bishop G2, D4, Knight F3, Knight C6, Castle. With uh, Hampi I played e3 and she played e5, e takes d4, knight takes d4. Sorry, let me just show it. e3, e5. Yes, e takes d4, knight d4, knight e5. I have some advantage, but the game ended in draw. Uh, here she played... Sorry. Uh, here I played d3 to do something new. Uh, bishop c5, knight bd2. So Castle. you did not expect her to play this system? Yes, but I know the systems because I prepared two other opponents. Absolutely. Knight b3, bishop b7, e3, d takes, bishop takes. Here uh, it was surprising to us that she took on e3 because black can of course also play e5. So what? Yes, but after e5 I can take on d4, e takes, e takes and maybe bishop f4 or rook e1 and I have very pleasant position. If black have pawn on c5, it's maybe will be good for them. But d takes e3, I, I think it's better move. Okay, it was expected. Yes. Okay. Mm, bishop takes knight g4, bishop c5. And knight and g4 was also something you expected, yes? Yes, uh, I know uh, bishop c5, and here I don't remember move rook b8, and I think she prepared this at home. Because she played this move very fast. Oh. Mm, I think during the game that she can take on c5 and played maybe b5. But okay, I have pleasant position. My knight on c5 was good. So, okay. And you uh, you knew the position till here and after this you yes. were on your own. Yeah. Okay, please show us. Uh, here she played rook b8. I played d4, b6. And now black cannot play queen e7 because I have knight d2 and I win the piece. Uh, she played knight e7. Let's just show it. Uh, so queen e7, knight d2. Nice move here and opens yes. up the bishop and both the knights are hanging. So, so she played knight e7, queen c2, bishop b7. I have little advantage but okay. Black position is very solid and um, she played knight f6, rook f1, h6, knight c1. Yeah, Here I have a plan maybe knight e2, knight c3 because I don't have knight d3, bishop take f3 and queen takes d4. Oh, knight e2, knight c3, that was your idea? Yes, or maybe knight f4 and then somehow play d5. Oh. That's the reason you went back to C1. Yes. Okay. And what were the other line? Other any other ideas you considered, or was this the first one? I think that I played n can play the knight B D two, but okay for me mm, better is knight C one for some reason I don't know. 
so you wanted to first improve your night yes. because later you anyway played this idea yes but now i can play this because uh, my uh, e4 square uh, e4 square was weak and now i need to improve my night oh wow that's very good understanding indeed and knight c1 uh, yes and here she played b5 i don't expect this move what did you think for her like what did you I think actually did? i don't know she can play for example c6 queen c7 rook d8 but it's passive position for black and that is i understand why she don't want to play this move right um. But b5 also, I'm not sure about move, because uh, I have d5. Over I here? Yes, I don't know what is the move, because after e d5, I take on b5, and computer shows that it's big advantage, but during the game I was not sure. Oh, wow. Wow, d5 and b5. So this is something you considered during the uh, game? Yes, but... Uh, also, I uh, calculated if I take uh, on b5 immediately, but she have bishop f3, bishop f3, and rook b5, and I think black is good. Yes. This is alright for black. Yeah. So, d5, you saw it just now, or uh, you thought about it after the game? Uh, I thought about after the game, because during the game I not see this move. Okay. So b5 and uh, I played b3. Okay, I have a little bit more pleasant position because I have some space. And okay, she take on c4. I take here. She have c5. D take c5. Queen c7. Queen d3. Okay, I have a pawn up, but okay, but after knight d7, knight c5, maybe black take it back. I have c pawn. And it may be weak or or not. <laughs> <laughs> Position is equal. But she played c6. Maybe it's a little bit passive. Ah, no. She played takes, takes and c6. It's maybe a little bit passive. Move. Uh, I played queen a4. Queen b6. Knight b3. Rook d1. And... Yeah, I thought you had a good position here. What did you feel about your position? Yes, I feel... I, I know that I have little advantage, but um, Black's position is very, very solid, and I don't ha she don't have a weakness. Oh, Maybe nice. C6, but okay, it's very hard to... Attack it. Yeah, attacking, yes. Uh, I played King G2. King G2 is a... Uh, I just want, for example, if she played knight f5, queen c6 in some variation of turn knight d4, that knight f3 was without check. Oh, so it's a blitz move. Yes, and it's good move. Uh, I have. It's always useful. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, and she, she can play queen b4, but I can play queen take a7, rook a8, queen c5. Queen c5, maybe d takes c5, rook d1, rook d1, rook a2, rook d d8, queen h7, maybe rook b8, and then I want to play rook b7. I have a uh, comfortable position, but I think it's a draw, mm, to be honest. And but she played queen c7, uh, yes. Yes, queen c7 also unexpected, was it? Yes, but it's not good move, because here I have knight... Um, e5. I don't see this move. Uh, yeah. And after rook d4, queen d... No, 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 knight e5. Rook e5. Oh, rook e5. Yes, okay. uh, rook e5. And here she don't have rook d4, knight d4, queen e5, queen a7. And uh, knight wow. on e7 is very bad. And then next move maybe knight c6 and they have winning position. So rook e8, knight c6. Or maybe four computer show. Okay, but it's also winning position. And rook e5 also you saw after the game, not during? Yes, I saw after the game. I don't see during the game for some reason. I don't know. And uh, black don't have rook d4. She need uh, to play it maybe knight d7. I have rook e5 and uh, I have a very... 
I have advantage. Wow, this is a very beautiful rook lift indeed. Yes. Uh, instead, you doubled on the d file, which also seemed all right. Yes, uh, because you want to play d5. Yes. No, no d5. Maybe knight c5, and they need to have my pawn on d4 is safe. Okay, so rook d2, and she played rook, rook b6. b6. Yes, and I also have rook e5. Here also. Yes, but okay, I don't see this move, <laughs> and I don't know why. Wow. Okay, so again, uh, but uh, rook b6, but rook b6 was a surprise, yes? Or did you uh, expect? No, I did, I expect because she wants to maybe rook b8 and then rook b4. Wow, okay. So that's what happened? Yes. And rook d1? Yes, rook b8. And here we just knight c5, rook d8, knight b3. Yes, why did you decide to repeat and not play on? Um, because I feel not good today and okay. I'm very tired, so I just repeat and end the game. Okay, did you have a look at the other boards as well? or? I uh, saw that uh, Batsashvili with Jujiner have a draw and Garechkin also have a draw. I won I know that I will take first or second place because Jujiner have just three play uh, three black games. Uh, I have four and it's first um uh, tie break, yes. Uh so okay, it's okay and I have GM norm so I'm happy. Oh wow, congratulations on Thank your GM you. norm. Is it your final GM norm or No, it's my second GM norm. Wow, wonderful. So Thank you. we hope you'll become a grandmaster soon. Thank you. And next time you play in India, we hope to see you as Grandmaster Vibhisara Asubaiva. Thank you very much. And uh, it was a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Please let us know how was your experience of playing the tournament and then we can let you rest. The tournament was very tough. Um, also, I take fasting. It's also hard to me. But I played, I think, um, too much good games. Uh, sometimes I played not very good, uh, for example with Gorechkin I have bad game and they lost. Um, and sh with Shuvalo I have bad position but it's it was tricky position and I somehow won the game. Uh, but also I missed some chances, for example with um, Hampi I have winning position uh, and with Nana Zagnitz I have very big advantage. I don't know where I can uh, win, but um, she have unpleasant position. Right. And what was your best game of this tournament, according to you? I think with Harika, it's very beautiful game. It's very interesting, and um, and the king walk was very yes. My king go to f1, g1, and come back to a2, and then come back to f1. It was very fun. Yeah, it was an imaginative game. Yes. Definitely. And uh, we hope you more success. Thank Bibi, you. And wish you a happy Ramadan as well. Thank you. And thank you so much. Best wishes for your next thank tournament. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We will now go on a short break. And you can send your wishes to Bibi Sara in the chat. And uh, it was so, so nice of you to join us. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Also by joining us. Uh, all games finished for you, just through your game against Lagno. Uh, before we talk about the game, um, it all depends now whether you are going to be first or not. You were leading throughout this tournament, but now after Bokuryachkina drew and Zhu drew their games, now the three of you share first place. So how are you feeling at this moment while we still don't know who's going to be first? I feel very tired. Uh, after the tournament, I'm here alone and it's a little bit difficult for me. Um, I played good tournament, uh, sometimes I missed my chance with Kamero and uh, Dragnit Zanana I have a big advantage. But okay, I won Palina Shovalo in, in completely losing position, so I think it's okay. I don't know. I know that I will take second or first place because Jujina have just three black games in this tournament. That is it. How yesterday you had a rest day, and obviously a lot of uh, it was in, in stake in stake for you uh, for this game. Had you won, you would have been more. Most of you would have been first now, given the outcome of the other two games. 
How did you spend yesterday? How did you, what did you have extra preparation? Were you extra motivated to go hard or what did you do? I just have some rest and preparing to the today games, but I'm not prepared to this variation. I played this similar variation with uh, Harika, with Conero. Here I have some advantage in the game, but okay, I don't see rook e5, and in the end, I think I have a little bit more pleasant position, but it's equal. It's hard to win the game. And overall, how was New Delhi for you? How were these past 14 days in New Delhi for you? It's not my first time in New Delhi. I played here four years ago in the World Junior Championship and there I played bad, I think. In this time I played better. Oh, I'm happy. And finally, what after this tournament? What's next for you? Uh, next, I will be playing in the tournament Satyashul this in Astana with the 12 top players. There we will play Kramni, Karanyan, Gelfand and two much more strong players. After I have a rapid, oh no, rapid blitz tournament in Berlin Women's Week, Women's Chess Week and in third, fourth leg Grand Prix in Kiev. Oh, so no rest, just games and preparation. Yes, I will rest in June, maybe. <laughs> maybe. All right. Well, thank you very much, and good luck, thank and we'll you. see what happens today. Katerina okay. uh, Lagman joining us. You just finished your uh, round eleven game against Bibisara, so by luck. It was a game where a lot depended for Bibisara. It was a race for first place, and obviously you're one of the top contenders. But this tournament has been a bit more challenging for you. How do you summarize the game? How do you summarize the tournament? Well, first of all, I'm very happy it's over because I felt very, very tired for my several days. So, just right now, I'm just happy that I, today, yes, today I decided to have a very solid position, not to have some, not to take any risk, and just to see how it goes. And yes, at some point I made a mistake. I I mistook a five idea, so and uh, I saw that Sarah can be much better. But well, she she didn't see this move, and after after all, it's I think just uh, nothing for that. Overall, this tournament uh, has been quite dynamic, both on and off the board. How will you remember New Delhi? Well. As I told you, right now I just want to, to relax and go home. My tournament, uh, it could be better because I missed my chances in several games. I uh, lost uh, uh, a game against uh, Ludonier. I just missed a uh, trick in my move in an absolutely normal position. And uh, I was absolutely winning against Goretzkina. So, well, it, uh, of course, it would be better to at least to have half point more, but it is how it is, and just uh, I will try to, to be better next time. Okay. Well, thank you very much. It's been great having you here, great interviewing you, and good luck with whatever comes. Thank you. You know, final game, the tournament is over. Uh, what are your thoughts about this final game with Drew or you, Drew? It was a very interesting game, I think. I played with it in H3 line. And uh, my line was d5, just but she played first, bishop d7, queen d2. And I decided to go on castle. I am not sure this is a very correct move, but it's a normal move. But um, after rook e1, I was thinking I am better because I had this g45 idea and queen on c5 is hanging in some lines and, uh, but uh, after we went this end games and she played very well she played just a very forced line to make a draw because if she waits and plays some random moves I have two bishops and I can play for some advantage I think Alright, so the tournament was uh, full of ups and downs for you here uh, what's your assessment of this tournament for you in, in New Delhi? How was it for you personally? Uh, for me, it was a very 
Before starting, I was in not a good position because I have six black colors and only three white colors, and and I did not take last place, and it's okay, I think, after this, and also I have these two terrible games. And irrespective of the games, how was your time in New Delhi? Oh, it was okay, I think. We, I did not see too much, but what I saw where I was, it was okay. That's a good game. Right. Thank you very much and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. So I just humping on the final round finished for you. The final game, a draw with Alexander Gudechkina. Uh, the draw happened just immediately after the draw between Drew uh, Jenner and Nino Vatsyashvili. Uh, has that in any way affected the decision between the two of you to, to go for a quick draw or? I don't think so because uh, the position is so that uh, it's kind of equal position uh, where I had a control over the B file and my, my knight is active in the center. I think uh, it's overall a very standard game. Uh, I believe my A5 is uh, strong more because I'm neutralizing the double bishop advantage. Um, so I think after that uh, uh, I, I didn't see any advantage provide. So it's a very balanced game. Overall, how is this tournament for you? Uh, it's uh, it's a bit bad tournament for me, I would say, because uh, uh, I will be losing a couple of rating points here. And yesterday also I missed a winning position. So yeah, I was a bit shaky, and I think many things affected my play. It's not it's not just about chess, but uh, off the board things. Uh, but yeah, uh, but definitely I'll try to improve uh, for the next tournament. And when is the next tournament for you? I'll be playing in Berlin. Uh, it will be a Armageddon tournament, uh, like Bleach and Armageddon. Uh, so it's an uh, invitation event. How does one, just on that topic, how does one prepare for a Blitz and Armageddon tournament? Do you play a lot of Blitz games? Yeah, like... yeah of course. Uh, I'll, I'll try and by playing more Bleach games. And I think their opens doesn't matter. So it's more of being a practical layer very fast. And do you play against a sparring partner or do you just go uh, secretly under a, a pseudonym yeah, online and play? Yeah, just online. I don't have any playing partner. I stay in a remote place where we don't have many chess players so, to work with. So, yeah, it will be mostly online. Good. And finally, just this has been a, a huge event for India. The first time that India has hosted such an event. When you all s sum it up, uh, what is your kind of, how would you just sum up this event? Uh, in, in respect what it means for India? I think this is the uh, one of the biggest event India has hosted. Um, well, we do have a lot of hurdles in the start, as you know, but uh, it's good that everything was overcome and uh, we were able to successfully finish the event. Yeah. Well, thank you very much and uh, good luck with the rest of your tournaments. Thank you.
वेलकम बैक आई होप यू ऑल एंजॉयड द इंटरव्यू विद बिबी सारा इट वॉज अ ट्रीट टू हैव हर ज्वाइन अस इन द कॉमेंट्री येस इन डी दंगेस्ट पार्टिसिपेंट एंड यथ सच अटिक परफॉर्मेंस इज रेनिंग वर्ल्ड ब्लेट्स चैम्पियन एंड ऑलरेडी अ फॉर्मर वर्ल्ड रैपिड चैम्पियन बट इवन इन क्लासिकल आई थिंक शी सोन ग्रेट sort of strength and planning ability and the maturity i was surprised at the maturity which she uh, shows in the speech and of course very clear cut plans in the game i mean she is generally very clear excellent player i must say definitely uh, pravin ji there is a uh, conversation about how the first tie break is uh, now uh, clear that bibisara and goryachkina are tied uh because they have played more number of blacks compared to zujiner but the second tie break is the sonneborn burger system can you please explain it to our viewers how it works yes i think a very interesting system is be because in all play all tournament it's uh, quite uh, natural that uh, some players end up with equal points like we have three players actually so how to resolve the tie the initial uh that was a concern before fide say 70 years back or so what to do about that it was felt that if you defeated stronger players then uh, you should uh, get a better tie break so basically sb is where uh, you get full points of the uh, opponents what opponents have scored whom you have beaten oh. so if a has beaten b and b has scored eight points then b, uh, a gets all the eight points for that and if you are drawn with the opponent you get exactly half of that and if you are lost to someone you get none so if you have beaten the strongest player you are going to get full point from them and sometimes in sb it's better if you have uh, defeated the strongest player and lost to the weaker because you know it uh, adds up to that score which is good and a very effective system that uh, you played stronger against strongest players so you are rewarded for that so it's the uh, it's a rewarding uh, system i would say to have beaten the stronger players in the tournament very fair yes it's a very prominent system in case all the uh, other conditions are same but when other conditions are not same like unequal number of whites and blacks then it's a first it's to bring the equality so first relief is that somebody has played lesser number of uh, uh whites uh, that person is rewarded first but if all things are equal we have a tournament with 11 players in 10 rounds then sb becomes the first uh, criteria because it's the most justified uh, criteria i think and of course the number of blacks it comes into consideration because those who played more blacks have actually had a handicap definitely uh we have harika and uh, shuvalova still playing their game and vaishali and nana zagnitz as well so only after these players complete their games will we know the final standings because the scores of these players will matter in the calculation of the sonneborn burger system yes very much break. very much so very much so because uh, you know even um, already there could be somebody is doing well but i think this uh, players tying with each other have actually drawn with each other so probably their de- results will depend on these two games and uh, those who are uh, defeated the uh, lower uh, uh, rankers so p- p- people with uh, lesser points are actually at a disadvantage because your rival has scored against a uh, uh, higher rated uh, players comparatively so very interesting system and uh, we'll see we'll have to wait till the last move and uh, uh, results are entered nobody knows that till the actual the enters are uh, results are entered fed in the computer and computer would give us the results so we are going to give you the results as well as soon as the games are over in within 5 to 10 minutes we'll be able to come to you with results so watch this interesting games where uh, in both the games i think black is pressing uh, uh, hard isn't it Yeah definitely let's have a closer look at Harika and Shuvalova's camera so it is clear that uh, black is completely better here she is a pawn up and add to that she has a bishop protecting the pawn and the h3 point is also a weakness so black's pawn structure is also better as compared to white's on the king side on the queen side they have equal pawns but uh, at the moment the c6 pawn is not attacked here uh, rook d2 followed by rook f4 is an idea that strikes our mind immediately yeah i think so rook d2 you must play rook e1 and for rook f4 you must play rook e2 and exchange one pair of rooks that's uh, one option um, black uh, has other options also the only compensation white has got is the bad position of black bishop 
although it's very actively placed if black gets f5 and f4 it's going to be a very easy win had the bishop for example been on d5 i think the game would have ended very quickly f5 and f4 but because it's not possible for the bishop to move that's the reason why uh, harika has to keep the knight on c5 all the time the moment she moves the knight black will be able to get bishop e6 bishop d5 and then f5 and f4 so uh, although it's a bit uh, uh, difficult uh, uh, to plan it immediately uh, something is going to happen if the rooks are exchanged then black could probably bring in the king uh, to e5 even that plan even now it comes to my mind but yeah and uh, i mean should be a good plan but nothing concrete till as you said exchange one pair of rooks uh, my slight concern is that when i exchange a pair of rooks uh, i must keep the rook on h4 again otherwise you lose your rook so I, and when you go rook e3 then probably i bring back the king but with two uh, one rook like for example uh, when i breaking e7 you play f3 uh, oh you always take it oh, so i think that's a simple plan as you suggested rook d2 rook f4 exchange one player so rook go back rook h4 bring the king to f7 e7 or uh, d6 e5 or uh, d4 and then probably um you are ready to move your bishop and play f5 king on e5 and uh, Yes, once f5, or you may even go bishop c8 for that, and then f5 and f4 check. All white can do is a tactical defense with knight d3 check at times. But yeah, with two rooks, it's not very easy to go bishop c8 and bring the king. So because the rooks could be checking, but even that is a possibility. So I think a zugzwang type of position where black is winning. Only thing is white is not uh, losing anything directly. Yes, how how do you like the idea of playing even g4 and bishop into pawn and bf3 check will will uh, but there's a tactical possibility in this so i don't know if that's a great idea uh, yeah so that could be that may not be a great idea to play g4 because it would give away most of your advantage but even that exists so i think simple as long as black keeps the pawns on black squares it's very good rook d2 the same uh, plan suggested by you has been chosen and uh, tough tournament for harika actually harika very solid usually she doesn't lose at all and in this tournament she has lost two games with black both of them and here she's white and she's in a very very difficult position so uh, it could be her third loss of the event or she might be able to produce a miracle like uh, you know if you don't believe in miracles they will never occur but if you do then they sometimes may occur in your life so it's always better to believe in miracles yeah i think but i think harika has not been in good form i must say here because you know she has not played any impressive games as i mean somewhat the uh, there's somewhere the punch is uh, lacking in most of her games so that's a bit uh, probably i don't know uh, she has a changed uh, life now she has a young baby and uh, Yes, you know the things do change. What is uh, there? We don't know how well prepared she was mentally, or uh, did she have time to prepare? We don't know these factors because I think there are some of the things which never uh, discuss. The players normally don't discuss because they are professional players and they want to be fit all the time. But it's not always uh, possible. Sometimes the players are not perfectly uh, fit because of. Uh, different reasons like uh, uh, re responsibilities at family level and different i mean she has got changed responsibility changed priorities also now i think absolutely I th she had a baby girl in september last year shortly after the olympiad she was 9 months yes uh, carrying during the olympiad and uh, uh, yes she after that she has played already one grand prix in february and this is her second one uh, so she also played the world rapid blitz in december so she has not like taken a break post the birth of her first child but has been constantly working on chess and i know that i know for a fact uh, i know her a little bit personally so i know for a fact that after about a month of the birth of her uh, child she actually started to prepare once again as seriously as she was doing earlier and she used to have her she even made a nice post on instagram mm -hmm. about how she had her training room with a chess board and computer and a baby cot for the child to be kept there and so that she could have a okay great so a very motivated player as well yes. and yeah in the first uh, and the earlier uh, grand program she has actually finished fifth which is a good result she could be uh, seeded fifth or sixth because this is a tournament tough tournament and uh, i mean so here i think she is finishing uh, below 
her seeding probably below expectations and she, uh, sort of she is getting into zugzwang positions where she has uh, no no chance of peace movement you know it's something which normally doesn't happen to her she is uh, quite a, a solid player and uh, that's uh, one of the matters of concern mm, yeah i think black has black also has an interesting plan here rook f4 and then again go back to rook d4 i mean rook f4 rook e2 and rook d4 and could it be of any advantage putting the king on h4 and uh, i don't know big black has another chance of improving so but i still don't know how to do what to do with my bishop and the main main problem is unable inability to get uh, f5 if black does that then the game will be over so rook e2 is forced a uh, some of the rook i think one of the rooks to e2 is uh, forced so better try the uh, e even rook and uh, yeah i think rook exchange or going back rook d4 sometimes it's not easy to make a decision when you have lot of options even then it's not easy so let's have a look at how vaishali is doing against nana if we can have the player camps of vaishali and nana yes there we have it and what do you think can black try because her king is well placed rook is well placed but white on the other hand has a very solid uh, defensive setup with a2 b3 and c4 and rook defending the a2 pawn i'm not sure if b4 push was correct because now she can never go for a pawn ending so i think uh well if c4 was permitted tactically pawn into pawn is the most principled move in such positions and after rook c2 yes if white is able to capture with rook it should be a draw but somehow uh black oh black was trying to play a5 a4 putting the rook on c1 and then playing a5 a4 was the plan i had suggested uh, uh so here yeah, there you would be saddled with a weak pawn so i think uh, rook yeah okay so white played c4 here tactically there's no chance to play a4 yeah now i think it should be a draw because yeah but black still has a plan of a4 a3 and rook b1 and rook b2 so for which you must always keep the rook on yeah so she has now going for activity she is giving the a pawn is she she has actually played rook d8 so so no she has played rook d8 rook e1 king f3 rook a1 rook 2 d2 yeah why rook, rook e1 c1. i didn't understand because king on worse on e3 in case you are giving up the pawn yeah but why rook c1 i think uh, black had to try a4 here and uh, although you are not getting a passed pawn but pawn into pawn king into c4 and king c3 and uh, yeah probably a4 was a possibility i thought not sure a4 with the idea that uh, let's say i play a4. i don't do anything here pawn into a4 yeah pawn G4. into a4 is necessary i think no because a3 and then uh, for example is it possible to take uh, no here uh, i don't know take a b3 it should, it should only be a draw i think and because rook b2 rook b2 and then king, king c4 and you have i think uh, activity no g5 or uh, no g5 there is no so f5 f also no even this is dangerous but my idea was to play a3 rook b1 and rook b2 but even the sacrifice uh when you are going to win a rook very soon and uh, what does white do rook e2 maybe give rook check e2, on the side rook e2 first and check and uh, yeah and another check and then take on e6 is it Possible. So no, e6 never. would be mistake. No, b2. Yeah. B2. No, only when you come to d2. Uh, yeah. Even if you, when you come to d1, you lose the pawns. So this is losing. Yeah, because the white king is not in the position to capture the pawns. So. Uh, so that's why we cannot allow the king yeah. uh, pawn to come to b2. We have to give keep giving checks. Yes. And when and the king go, yeah, when the king goes to a3, uh, yeah, but rook b rook oh. e1 check is not correct here. You have to bring the king now. Yeah. Here, this would be a king a king a two and the b two is coming, so you can't be doing that. But now, you, now can you, king b one? Can you play king uh, e three and b two, king d three, and then I oh, but you have king a one, then rook e one check, yeah, and king c four, and but I take king that. King a two, I thought. King a two doesn't threaten b one, so I'm happy with that. Oh, so and you play I, king c four. King c four, and you play b three. I'm happy. I just play g five. Now I could be winning that ending, yeah. Let's see, king e three, b two. King D3 and Rook to uh, King to A1, King C2. You wanted to play. No, here I have to play check and King C4, but I'm losing. Yeah, uh, check, check, King C4, King C2. It's too fast. Oh, it's this is fast. losing yeah, so, for Black, uh, yeah, White. So, yeah, but there, there should be some way for White to hold. But also, it's also a tough possibility. A4 is what I thought Black should be playing. And here the king b1. Yeah, rook e4 yeah. is a good move. Yeah, we four, pick yeah. up the b4 pawn yeah, and so after b2 yeah, take. 
and now g5 now king e4 first king e4 and white is winning because after b1 take taken g5 wow this is very instructive let's take let's take on g5 take king c2 king e5 king d3 and here king e6 king e4 king f6 and black is not on time because white wins uh, if black's king was on g8 maybe uh, even that's lo losing yeah in fact i was not looking for a rook sacrifice actually but yeah rook sacrifice is also interesting it's a draw but a3 and rook b uh, one rook b2 is also a possibility uh, before so uh, another option this yes. is one option that black has even now she can bring this position another option is a3 and uh, king e3 let's say i keep my rook, rook on e2 with the idea to uh, but yeah, then so you play king d4 yeah you have to be careful uh, so i may I allow the c pawn to advance sometime so king e3 then i just play rook b1 of course you can keep the rook supported so uh, for rook b2 you just king supported but then i e4 e5 e4 uh, sometimes it's not a easy position to play uh, Yeah, at least that is what black should play. It must be a draw with correct play, but it's not a dull position, and only one who can try is black. So that was also white. Although white got a protected pass on c4, I think the tactical c4 if it could have been avoided, then I think black had good chance. But uh, I think uh, very timely played and g4 also very important. F4 rather is a good pawn structure. If for black had got g5 and white pawn on f3, it would have been bad. Here is getting tough, but because. Uh, but like I'm just imagining this position. This would also probably be a draw. Yeah, rook into d2 is not correct because then there is white is a protected pass pawn. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So here king uh, uh, e4. Just e4 and it's a yeah. draw. So that's why. Yeah, but really, are you in a, in a position to take king into f4 next? I mean, yeah. Okay, so king e4. What does white do? G5. But king into the yeah king e4. So you have to give c. Yeah, you have to give c5. I don't know number of moves c5 king d5. Yeah, c c5 king d5 king e king d3, threatening c6 king into one king e4, and I'm going to win the b pawn now. And f5 check. Uh, e f e f king e5. Wow, this is another end game that could arise. Let's see what the players played instead, because maybe we anyway reached this position after a few moves. Rook yeah. c1, a g4 was played. Nice move. White played a4. Oh. Uh, black played a4, and now white has a choice to take on a4. But yeah. then this looks uh, menacing for black because but if, but king if I enters. Keep, but if I keep the rook in the second rank, and you can never take on a2 in general, because when you play rook a1, I play a5 or something. Ah, uh, you can never attack the b2 twice. So my idea is to just to put rook e2. Yeah, so b into a4 looks like a logical move, and say put rook on e2 or something. Yeah, but you play king d5, then then I attack your b pawn. So my idea, but king d5 and rook c3. Uh, if rook b2, rook c3 check. Yeah, it's still very uh, tough to play with white. Uh, white have white must be having a draw here, but all accurate moves is something. That's probably required, or is it rookie four check itself? Uh, rookie six itself enough? Rookie six, yeah, rookie six itself seems enough, no? Rook uh, f one check and yeah, I can't attack the pawn. So here, yeah, pawn is attacked. Yeah, king d five. Uh, uh, yeah, should be a uh, king d five. You want to play rook d two check, yeah? King d five, rook d two check, and again attack the pawn. Right. This looks uh, all right for uh, white. So, can we see uh, any other moves if uh, they are working for white? White hasn't yet made a move. She has mm. 15 minutes on the clock, 45 moves over. Though, so this is the second time control. Oh, uh, probably we had a mistake. Uh, there is 21 minutes on the clock after okay. a four. Uh, I think it's very tough to. Uh, Or play a move like rook e two or rook d eight has been made. No, no, no. no. Uh, there was an error in okay. transmission, okay. and she did take uh, fifteen uh, uh, six minutes. Sorry, she did take six minutes to play rook d eight. So now she's down to fifteen minutes, and now it's black to move after rook d eight with twenty five minutes on the clock. Okay, so she wants to put the king on e four, and uh, I mean she was giving the b three pawn. So now, uh, now I think uh, a three is probably slow. Because I attack the b pawn very fast, 
so rook a uh, a3 is not good because of rook b8 and rook c2 i have rook b5 rook b5 check and rook b4 and put rook on a4 which means that ab ab rook c3 check looks like a plan ab ab rook c3 check and win the b3 pawn but then she is going to attack some pawns uh and the king will already be on e4 so rook c8 check king d6 and rook b8 a pawn down looks like a draw with white king on e4 and i'm ready to play rook b5 then you don't have any plan so but yes black did succeed probably in winning the pawn if white played rook d8 so uh that ending uh, you know when you have a rook ending with only one file open the one who controls and the, that ma matters and the uh, active rook and passive rook are not of the same position and finally a uh, uh, first time the white rook has been activated isn't it rook d8 otherwise it was always doing a duty of guarding the pawns in second rank something which rook is not meant uh, to do and can uh, we still play a3 here but a3 a3, a3, a3 i thought rook b8 a3 i thought rook b8 or rook c8 first uh, why but then mean, king d4 yeah. and king c3 uh, i th i thought it was enough to play rook b8 and even let's uh, yeah. show this line that mm -hmm. if we first give a check mm -hmm. then the king is free to come to d4 mm -hmm. and after rook to b8 white goes king c3 yes. supporting b4 and now we simply pick up the a2 pawn with our yes. rook and make a queen e2 so and b3 as well <laughs> yes and hence this is a mistake so after rook d8 uh, a3 hasn't think, been played yeah. yet but it's a a3 possibility I, i think even king e3 is okay here king e3 and if you play rook c8 i play rook b uh, uh, 8 or something or uh, rook d2 we saw this yeah but also rook b8 is here i mean if i'm really serious of trying to win then i could even play rook b8 rook into a2 rook b5 check and rook b4 I mean uh, no danger because minute, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. we can just show one line uh, one by one yeah. so mm -hmm. rook d2 and uh, we had seen this variation after takes takes king d4 king e2 king e4 and c5 this was yes. the main point yeah. that oh, king, so king king d5 yeah. king f4 no. would run into c6 mm -hmm. so white black has to go back king d5 king d3 and now king takes and king e4 and this is the draw but after but it's difficult to find and after the suggestion by you uh, instead of rook c2 you are suggesting rook b8 uh, no i think direct rook b8 also i'm going to get rook b5 check anyway no so okay first yeah. rook b8 with so, the idea so, that so, so i don't know if it this is bad but yeah allowing a pass pawn is dangerous but rook into b4 and i thought rook b2 is the move i was worried about because otherwise after rook a4 i'm fine so but can't we uh, rook a oh sorry my king is not reaching g2 sorry My yes king is, king not, is reaching not reaching g2 so if king co comes to the second rank uh, the idea is or d2 king d2 trying to win a pawn is met with rook h1 or whatever it is and uh, otherwise rook e1 check yes just let's just show what happens if white keeps the king on e3 now if b4 then black will play rook check and make a queen on the next move so white should not allow the check on e1 and play king f2 or king d2 king f2 the most logical move trying to go to g2 but now rook f1 is a blunder white simply takes back but rook h1 a wonderful trick found hundreds of years ago with the idea that a1 next move and rook a2 will be met with rook h2 and we pick up the rook and this would not be possible if the king was on g2 so king was on f3 in the starting position but there i was afraid of playing rook b5 check because of king d4 coming yes so, so the king has to be on yeah. e3 in order to guard against yeah king d4 and then we see the problem with keeping the yes. king on e3 is that it doesn't come yes, back on time yes instead of king e3 if i go directly rook b8 uh one move back is yeah with king on f3 uh yeah this is Sorry, a yeah, here, here here i can try rook b8 which may not be uh that damaging but still the rook c2 and i win the pawn but uh sorry rook c2 rook b5 king d4 makes yeah, sense yeah now that's yeah rook into pawn and rook into a2 rook a4 but now it's uh now rook a1 and a2 doesn't make much sense but my rook is still tied down so now also our king comes very fast to the pawn's defense yeah and i'm not creating any pass pawn the problem is um uh, yeah the existence of white pawns is a problem if the pawns were not there rook a6 was a draw <laughs> yes. i know but still king e4 and king e3 is a zigzag anyway yeah. and e5 break is also 
So, for example, no, this is a loss position. So, white has white has to depend on the rook d2 pawn ending. And now you see the importance of the protected pass pawn, which you got a great tactical move c4. Why shall it took the opportunity of doing it? Had the pawn on c4 not been protected, then uh, she would not have been in a position to play the pawn ending, which you sh which we showed you earlier with rook d2. So, king e3 and uh, rook d2. So, c4 was in nick of a time, and perhaps she is in a position to make a draw in a very difficult game black has option of capturing b3 pawn instead instead of a3 so black is uh, thinking because the multiple options a b a b rook c3 check and uh, black takes the pawn white starts probably attacking the pawns and white will eventually give a rook so a b a b rook c3 check is also a possibility that is Yes, absolutely. But here, the black's kingside pawns are also weak, and because yeah. uh, it's fa it's interesting that lesser pawns on the board give bla white better chance to defend because black will have lesser shelter. Yes, and king is uh, now when the king is down at d6 or so, and also the b pawn is in square of the center, so you know, like the square of the yeah. So I just go rook g8. I don't have to worry about the b pawn queen or rook g8. You oh. play rook g3, yeah, rook, uh, yes, rook g3. g3. And rook into g6 fails to uh, b3. b3 and rook g8, king c7 perhaps, yeah? Rook g7 check, king c6, rook g8, king c6, rook g8, and uh, well, I think here in king c5. Or king rook g4. Rook g4, four, no, rook g4 here, rook g4. f5. f5 check, okay. I think it's just a combination. Uh, I was concentrating on queening the pawn. <laughs> so black has not uh, solved, uh, white has not solved the problems completely, but white should be able to make it. Now that we have found a force draw in a3, black will probably go for ab3, ab3, rook c3 check, yeah, because she played rook d8. So I think well, it Well, uh, we have some bo uh, moves on the board. So let's mm. see, rook d8 mm. and white, what has black played? ab3? Mm. No. Uh, no, we, we are not sure. So, I think black, black is still thinking. Black is yeah, still okay. thinking. No, I think it's a major uh, decision to be taken. No? Either AB3 or A3. It's possible that only one of the moves is winning. It's possible that both are drawing. And uh, it's other possible both are winning. But even then, you have to choose one. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The the decision making aspect of chess is always the yeah. trickiest and most difficult part of chess. Let's go back to Haruka's game and we'll come back to Vaishali's game once that game is uh, checked after. Oh, so the rooks have been exchanged. Wow. So black just gets the king to d5. And, uh, what happened here? Oh, white is two pawns down now. and Yeah, the, the other pawn, the e3 was, oh god, she got the... She broke a4, but yeah, I mean, you are even making the uh, uh, bishop c8 is the simplest now, I think, and f5, or wherever you put the bishop, I mean, f5 and f4, f5, okay, f5, you play king d3. I can st bring the king to e5 first, also. This position is not, uh, I mean, put the bishop on d5, perhaps bishop b6 and bd5, and uh, f5 and f4, and unless I, I allow you knight c3 and knight into d5. So <laughs> that's the only thing. So bishop d5 perhaps no, but a very bad position. How did the second pawn go? Let's see. I think she was in a bad position. The h3 pawn was, uh, but still it might be a, uh, okay, she just, yeah, now here white didn't take on uh, e4, yeah? She played rook h7, yeah, rook d2, rook e1, okay, she supported back with, yeah, rook f4, rook e2, she went back. Oh, she took rook and d4. And yeah, we and saw this. Yeah, and the king would come. Okay, uh, uh, did we? I mean, she's giving the e4 pawn. Yeah, knight into e4 was the best chance here. It's losing, but uh, that pawn down is it so bad? Knight into e4. Mm. Yeah, it was possible to play. I think white would take on a3 yeah, directly, not yeah, exchange. Yeah, for forcing a uh, poor move like knight g3. Yeah. <laughs> And then you just attack the b pawn. Yeah, yeah. Rook e three would lose. Of knight and uh, yeah, and so uh, uh, rook b three. Yeah, rook b three is a threat. But now you are going to lose the b pawn. Yeah, uh, you are going to lose the b pawn now. Perhaps the bishop uh, d three. Bishop d three allows rook, rook e six. Rook e six. But then yeah. bishop c four. Bishop c four also. Because no, bishop d5 you have this. In now, so I go rook d. I, I will never get knight e4. That king on g2 is so awkward. 
So she gave a second pawn instead of this, yeah. Yes. That was probably even worse. She played rook to e3, rook. Uh, bishop h3 check first. Bishop rook e3 was met with bishop h3 check, king h2, and rook takes, pawn takes. Black is a pawn up in a bishop uh, versus two, uh, two pawns up. Bishop versus knight end game after bishop f5, a4, pawn takes, knight takes. King f7 is the simplest. And knight c3. And king so king e6 and king e5. Or even even yeah, so king e6 is I think logical move. King e6 and king e5, and uh, even if you play b5, still f5 four. I think there's not a realistic chance of a blockade blockade at all. Yeah, but perhaps uh, she was in a losing position anyway. So what to do? I think uh, a very uh, a well played game by Black from the opening the d5 break, and uh, sort of. Uh, E4, E5. I think Black has uh, uh, understood the strategy of E4, E5 very well because she got the D5 break, and that's the reason why she played H6 and Bishop F8 quickly. Uh, if you have to play D5 very often, you have to play H6 because otherwise Bishop F8 is met with Bishop G5 in the so opening. I think Black has played this position uh, more maturely than White with regards to this pawn structure. Now Bishop D7 is desirable but not possible because of Knight into E4. So black is going to get white is going to get a b5 break, but king e6 and I don't know if b5 will lose a second pawn as well. King e6 looks logical here, and uh, yeah, and if b5 is c5, uh, yeah, but I think white will succeed in exchanging a pawn. So king e6, b5, take take, uh, and black moves the bishop uh, and gets f5, and king g3 and f4 check. So not much. Uh, Activity except a few checks. Black will, uh, white will try to give checks to the king on e5 so that f4 doesn't come. And white puts the king on g3 and uh, gives a check whenever black gets king e5. So you are not in a position to play f4. And when the king attacks the knight, the knight runs away. But this, I think, uh, cat and mouse play will not eventually work. It's only a temporary measure. So because king on g3 is in a zugzwang, knight will sometimes come in a zugzwang. It will be very easy for black to win this position. Because knight can't lose the move, and king can, but king on g3 will be stuck. So when you are not allowing, it. so black just plays bishop on h5. After the pawns are exchanged, bishop h5 and pawn on f5, and king e5. So, yeah, okay. So uh, this oh, happened. B5 has yes, been forced. Played, so I think forced option. Yes. And take take and king e5 perhaps. Yes, black has taken knight. Uh, no, black has not yet taken. Black is thinking, but black will take. Knight takes. King e5 will be played. Knight d4 will be played. Bishop will go to g6 or d7. Oh, is she thinking of c5? Because that's also a possibility. c5 and uh, b6, king d6. and uh, Pretty unnecessary. Yes, because you, lo you lose some pawn anyway. And if this is winning, then why go for something? This is the simplest uh, possibility. Also, you know, king d5 and king c4 comes in picture. Because white king is a bit far, so even king d5 and uh, getting the king to d3. But I think we have knight d4 tempo and bishop moves and we are able to get the king to f2. So, but an f5 f4 comes anyway and we try to create a blockade though. Then black brings the king to d3 then and you have to capture on f4. Yeah, so not a very um, appetizing position. Yes. Surely. We will come back to Harika's game shortly. Let's have a look at what happened in Vaishali versus Nana. Uh, so many moves played after oh Rook wow. D8. Yeah. Uh, can we have a closer look at the player camp so that we know if we are at the right position? Because uh, Rook D8, no. Actually, no moves played. She has not yet decided. Mm -hmm. Nana down to 11 minutes. And this is... Uh, She's been thinking for a really long time because uh, for g4, she had 27 minutes here after g4. Mm -hmm. She played a4 in a minute. Mm -hmm. So 26 minutes for black and after rook d8 already down to 11 minutes. So 15 minutes she has already taken. Actually, it's not very wise, I must say, because uh, the pos the resulting position, when it's simplified, when both sides have passed pawns, etc., then you need some time. And um, if you're down to three, four minutes, then you actually get into a winning position and not find the best move. It sometimes happens. So I think she has to make a decision now and rather uh, not trying to calculate till the end. A3, yeah, if she finds A3, King E3, uh, Rook C2, Rook D2, and the pawn ending 
as a draw or at least white is out of danger uh, in that ending so if she finds a3 rook d2 is a uh, also easy possibility so if even king e3 i think and rook c2 rook d2 so when she senses that then probably uh, she will uh, make her choice of a b3 probably uh, yeah difficult to make a choice but uh, because the b pawn is very close to the king comparatively white king can stop it sometimes the a pawn is advanced and it's really deadly on a3 if you get to win the a2 pawn if you don't get to win the a2 pawn it's nothing right just yeah she takes on b3 after a thought yeah long thought and uh, white immediately took on b3 yeah, of, course. of course yeah and rook c3 of course yeah and uh, king e4 is f5 check possible because king e4 i was wondering if f5 check is possible uh, black reduces the chances of uh, gf ef and i take on b3 and if i don't lose uh, the i mean i, I reduce the chance yeah now here rook c8 check is very awkward to meet but if i'm saving all the pawns uh yeah so here probably c5 checking b7 and uh, so g8 rook, rook g3 and uh, this is dangerous but king is in s yeah so maybe okay. king d6 here king d6 and lot of checks yeah b3 c6 c6 check. and this might uh, black has to be careful actually no king a7 and c7, c7. i have uh rook d3 we always have king back to e5 no means you, you uh, yeah so i play rook c3 now and rook yeah. b8 yeah so you can't play c8 because of b2 coming yeah it's a white is slightly better in this ending yeah no but, even but here uh, this c8, c8 is possible yeah because, because but, of uh, the no, no take take and b2 oh i did not realize king you can b8. go king b8 <laughs> that's the trick <laughs> that's the trick nice yeah but i think it's going to be a sharp game you know there's the uh, uh, endings with uh, a past pawn where a rook will be won uh, for the pawn are very tough because uh, the counter play because you have to bring both king and rook into play to make a queen which means the opponent's king is free to go and capture the pawns only the queen ending the queen is the only piece which is able to protect the pawn and uh, also uh, control the square in front of the pawn so queen and pawn versus queen automatically advance on their own no other piece can do that so here in rook ending although black is a pawn appear the king is very far it's obvious uh, draw and black has taken on b3 directly not f5. directly yes because f5 is a possibility subsequently even rook g3 is a possibility so this is a tough position for white but uh, should be a draw rook g3 is an uh, could be the next plan and trying to eat as many pawns as possible yes absolutely um rook c8 check looks like a wise move but king d6 and now again no uh this time has to be justified by mathematical calculations it's interesting that in the last round we are seeing two very nice end games especially this rook end game but so far in the tournament most of the games were over in the middle game itself yes i think uh, in games uh, one must say that most of the uh, soviet players particularly uh, are uh, very uh, good at end games which are equal and they try to press and somehow um i've seen not only in this generation but even in the 80s and the players born in the 60s and 70s uh they would say that it's obvious draw then they wouldn't study the end game i have myself won many drawn endings just because the players felt it was too easy to make a draw and there's no plan so in end game there has to be two ideas there's a fortress when the opponent has no plan and if there is no fortress then always play is possible this rook ending for example is a great example i'm um, uh, even if the game ends in a draw uh, white learns a lot from this ending i think something uh, vaishali has played very well getting a protected pass pawn on c4 but now the protection has been eliminated so now it's no longer a protected pass pawn all pain pawn endings are losing she's a pawn down and now all she can do is i mean uh, she can try to get counter play moves like rook f8 and rook g8 come into consideration and trying to uh, eliminate all the pawns so eventually you give up a rook for the b pawn and then uh, yeah then you will be able to uh, win the game so i think direct attack against the pawn do you think so may it's immediate a requirement yeah definitely i think rook c8 is rook. almost forced here or rook c8 followed by rook g8 i thought direct rook g8 also because you know you take c4 i don't mind but you, unless it's losing by force after f5 uh, rook g3 oh that rook, rook into g4 g3, yeah. oh the tactic okay always the tactic rook into g4 okay then forget it that's not possible 
Yeah, yeah th- just this, for the viewers yeah. who missed it, yes. it's possible to take rook g4, but here rook f6. Yeah, 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 is also yeah it's not so bad. Okay, so I play f5 first, then yeah, so maybe f5, f5 here, and the pawn any because I'm queening on uh, yeah also f5. f5. It's not clear, yeah, because yeah, you're queening with check, but yeah. then but two pass pawns, no? If I get I take yeah, and take, take yeah, and this is winning. Yes, yeah, so very easily because you are not even getting uh, yeah, and f5 you are not getting the pawn is to seventh rank itself, so. Even the seventh rank position is lost here because of the presence of c pawn. It's not a stalemate. So yeah. Actually, we, rook c8, king d6 on the board. So this game might see a result. We have to see if Vaishali finds a good defense here. Yeah, rook b8 is what she intends to perhaps uh, play. But I'm a uh, bit worried about black rook coming to b1. And uh, you know, once uh, you keep rook behind the pawn, you are only the rook is only doing the job of guarding the pawn. It's not counter. Once you play rook b8 and rook b1, that means you are not going to uh, attack the pawns, opponent's pawns. Although maybe rook b6 check and take at some time. Yeah, it's getting. A, uh, I'm sure there's a force draw in this position, but finding a draw is not always easy. As Ganmaster Tartakor said, uh, combinations, blunders, mistakes are all there waiting to be made. And what you make is, I think, decides. So, so a position which uh, White wouldn't like to play even with uh, an hour on the clock or two hours. But uh, yes, Black finding uh, the accurate moves even when a position, this position, as the evaluation bar shows, it's very slightly uh, better for Black and I'm expecting a draw. But uh, to make a draw from a drawn position is not all that easy because your opponent has uh, played a fantastic uh, a uh, plan in the way that even if the game ends in a draw, blacks black has made great effort, and the rook b1 and b3. Probably I think the b4 pawn is better guarded with the king. So I think when rook b1 is played, white should actually go king d3 and try to stop the pawn. So and if you go rook g3, then probably put the rook on b8, something of that sort. So rook g3 and rook b1 plans. Rook b1, I think king d3 will have to be played. So. Right. So uh, let's also now have a look at how Harka is doing because we have looked at this position for a long time yes. and it's up to yeah. Vaishali to find a draw, uh, find yeah. a yeah, to justi best ju yeah, justify that she has enough counterplay or whatever it is. So let's go to Harka's game and Harka after B5, yes, you were right. She played C5 here, which is surprising. No, she's afraid that it will be a draw, but that means that was, uh, now either, yeah, is it possible that she will win the pawn free? It could be because after b6, king d6, and yeah. how do you support the b7, uh, b6 pawn? No, I thought after uh, say b7, after say b7, king and g3 you play king has been played. Okay, so what's the trap? Okay, king b6. I don't see a trap. Uh, knight so the, uh, basically king b6, knight d5. That's the trap. I don't know knight d5. Yes. But the c pawn is, uh, I mean, okay. But we can always play. Let's say king c6. What is white play going to no, play? Must here? play knight d5. Yeah, there's no other option. Knight d5. And now king d5 is blunder because of b7 and we don't have a dark squared yeah. bishop. But that's so what she's playing for, I think. So knight d5. So king c6, knight d5 will be played. Bishop, even probably bishop g6 uh, is possible also. But, but bishop g6 we take on f6. Yeah, king and then king into b6. And king g4. Yeah, this is uh, it's losing as it's well. Yeah, uh, but it's not so easy as it uh, was after C B five. Yeah, I don't know why this so. Uh, yeah, here king into pawn is possible, and uh, C three there is knight D five check and C three. So king C six, king C six is a strange move. If you take king into G six, is C three winning? Now basically king c6 controls d7 and, and d5, d5 and doesn't allow a check so I mean any other move wow. would allow a check so you know it's I mean to play uh, this ending from that is unnecessarily uh, it will be she calculated yeah. everything really? we, we have okay. to check uh, but there's nothing like everything because white plays a different too all the time <laughs> so <laughs> yeah so let's see what uh, black played because uh, she has made her move and uh, Let's yeah, I mean see she what has she chosen. Uh, can we have uh, Shuvalova's camera on the screen? With uh, Harika. No, she's still thinking. She has not yet played. Yeah, so I think the best way to win a simplest. Oh, uh, she played C4 here. C4 on the board. Okay, so she wants counterplay, but. 
uh, yeah also i mean knight d5 uh, now the same position is a pawn advanced no so she but there is a threat you must play king c6 anyway but now knight f6 will be met with directly c3 directly c3 i don't know uh, oh or knight d5 and knight b4 check and uh, who is better <laughs> oops yes and this is a draw so that's why black cannot blunder black still has a chance to blunder that itself is surprising to me yes uh, unless i mean king, king into pawn is but obvious win no yes uh how much time do the players have because Sh uh, shivalo is short on time now she has only 6 minutes to harika's 18 yeah to calculate to complicate in a sharp position is something uh, a strange choice but yeah maybe she feels comfortable when she has a passed pawn and she feels that okay on the night will this is something that's really worth appreciating about harika that whenever she's in a bad position at least she plays fast you know yeah, she doesn't okay, keep yeah. thinking and yeah. trying to uh, you know find a very very difficult study like defense mm -hmm. or uh, you know uh, doesn't keep uh, thinking about oh my god what was my mistake 10 moves earlier yeah she in fact here i think she had a very clear choice that if black king came to e5 and bd7 that pawn also will survive c6 pawn so b5 so b5 was a normal choice and after cb5 she would have lost but here also c5 and c4 yeah i think yeah, still uh, i think two pawns up is rarely a draw I mean, unless you win many pawns but knight d5 threatens to win at least that's a uh, thing how oh, she's giving the bishop right? that mean knight d5 Uh, king c6 knight e7 check we are not analyzing that she has probably analyzed that king into pawn and uh, sorry knight uh, d5 king e king c6 knight, knight e7 check king but king c uh, king b6 yeah knight f5 and do you need to play uh, that so here i don't know oh. she has calculated this ending but i think it was a king c5 and just win the king c5 king c4 but and king d3 so you can never attack the pawn you can never take king into f5 no so king f5 king d3 and uh, what do you do And now it's a zugzwang. Not it a zugzwang. I got king into e3. <laughs> not a zugzwang. <laughs> yeah, no, sorry. It's a zugzwang for white, <laughs> but not for black. Let's just put it that way, because uh, yeah, like okay, this is a real problem. Because yeah, she is losing a piece. She played c4, so she is giving a piece, of course. I let's mean. say if white had king e4 here. If it was white to move, then it's fine for white. Yes, because you e4 don't get king, king d3. E4 is probably a draw. No, I don't know. G4, yeah, it's a draw then. You don't get king d3. Yeah. But this was important. Yeah, so, so she when she played c4, she has decided to give a piece, of course. I mean, she knows that knight d5 threatens to queen, so king c6 is forced. I mean, she's not going to play knight d5. Or can she play? No, but bishop c8 is too awkward. Like knight f6 and and b b7 is still very strong. I mean, even if you go king g4 and king g5, but yeah, I don't know how the knight is coming to stop the pawn. Maybe this could be her idea. Okay, so not. Uh, Yeah, but uh, is knight coming via e8 and c7 to guard? No, king f2. Okay. Yeah, but you can't have leave the g pawn alive. Yes, but I think this is what is going to happen. Not the piece sacrifice. Let's see. Okay. Uh, king g3, and uh, yes, she hasn't yet made a move after c4. We oh. will. Uh, oh, I thought her idea was to give up the piece knight d5 king c6. We analyze that because knight e7 check, and I thought the c3 pawn would be. adequate because white king is completely uh, trapped in a box where it cannot actually come this side it cannot it dare not take the f6 pawn because g pawn will rule and the e3 is weak by itself yeah but uh, if there's a way to win without sacrificing a piece then it's even more a matter of concern for harika isn't it because the player can be reluctant to give a piece but uh, yeah if knight d5 bishop c8 of all the moves is such a move can win uh because knight into f6 is force and then knight into f6 even king e5 yeah yes i think this is winning in many ways and yeah. uh, uh hmm. i think we will see a win for black but unless harika finds a miraculous defense also it's the last day of the event and it's been 11 days a wonderful event indeed so uh, the games might get over any time soon i think it's a good time to thank our sponsors tech mahindra and the ministry of youth affairs and sports government of india so uh, tech mahindra a tech company a conglomerate uh, the mahindra group is a conglomerate from india and tech mahindra one of its companies which is uh, invested in tech and uh, they have been supporting chess very much they have also supported us 
in the Olympiad and they will also be coming up with the chess league in uh, coordination with FIDE very soon it's already been announced and of course their support to us in this tournament is extremely valuable yes and of course government Indi of India because in all our uh, events the major sponsor is Sports Authority of India or government of India sports department or in uh, Olympiad it was a Tamil Nadu government because uh, uh, we are in a state where uh, in a, in a uh, so condition where the uh, state governments are uh, na, say union ministry they are uh, in a position to sponsor an event uh, better they have huge funds and they have we have good sports budget for last uh, 40 years and the budget has been utilized we have conducted great events uh, Asian games uh, uh, and the many other things. So it's not only chess, but chess world championships, knockout championships, one-to-one -one championships. So you know, a lot of things have happened with government support as well and Tech Mahindra coming in. So we look forward new sponsorships coming in also because Tech Mahindra has done a great job and we look forward to others also. It's an appeal to others also that if you love chess, this Indian game which is now being played in 102 kind of 105 kind, 205 countries. So try to be one of the contributors to that. And did you know how many people in the world know how to play chess, Pravinji? No, I didn't know, but it must be a few, uh, I don't know, it's really, it's not it's uh, something known to me. It's 650 million people. Oh, That's really? And football is played by 250 million people in the world. Okay. Just to give a perspective. Okay. And chess is played by 650 people in the world. Of million, course, yeah. we are uh, 650 million people. And of course, we are also considering amateurs and, uh, you know, people who play chess as a hobby, teach their younger siblings, grandfathers, yeah. grandparents. So great number. <laughs> uh, because I think it's uh, one of the most inexpensive game and you could play at home. Uh, <laughs> that for football, you need a, a field, obviously, a ground and uh, some... Uh, equipments which are not required for chess except the chess board. So yeah, let's uh, look how this uh, game is progressing. Goes so yes. So King G3 and uh, C4 by Black and White is still not made her move. So let's go to Vaishali's game. But if not Knight D5, what? Oh, what is it? Okay, it's uh, same position, I think, no. No, Vaishali's game. A king has moved to E4 already, okay, and uh. Black has taken on B3. And there are a few moves that have been made. Let's check. Rook C8 check has been given. King, King D6. Yeah. And now white has not yet played C5. But she has played G5 instead. Mm. G5 when you uh, don't have uh, uh, e access to E5 square is a dangerous move. No? Because you are also creating a new chance of F5 check. I don't know how good it is. But... Uh, F5 check, she wants to play king d4 and uh, rook f3. Mm, C and then rook f3. Uh, I, I don't like g5. Oh, one must because it gives the additional option of f5 check, frankly. Or also after pawn into g5, if she is not able to win the g6 pawn, then there will be no counterplay. So, uh, what happens to f5 check and rook f3? f5 check, king d4 uh, and rook f3, probably c5 check. Uh, I don't know. It's uh, how about rook d8 here? Yeah, so I go king uh, e7, and I'm going to win the f4 pawn. Uh, and can I play rook b uh, rook to b8? Yes, but uh, b3 or rook f4. Rook f4 I must play because you're threatening king e5. I don't know. B3 is possible. In, uh, no, I give check. Yeah. So okay, I play rook f4 check first. So instead of that, so okay, I don't play b3. Rook f4 check. And King c5, of course. Yeah. King e5 would be the most <laughs> yes. beautiful checkmate of the tournament yes. after rook e4. Yeah. So, uh, king yes, and I think white has some chances only because uh, after king c5, rook g4, there's rook b7 check. Had it not been there, uh, rook b7 check, then black would have won. But that means black will have to play e5. But and I and yet, a, yet, a check, yet a check. Yes. No, I want oh, to. Oh, you have king d8 yes, and yeah. king c7. Yes. And uh, if you take b4, I have many pawns after rook g4. So this is not... Uh, but you still have rook, uh, rook b6 doesn't threaten anything. So I don't know. It's still it, not easy. Yeah, it's not easy because you are attacking pawns and all that. You play king d6 and see if I king c8 say... king Yeah, rook, rook e7 perhaps. And you are threatening... Or king b6. Directly. Okay, rook b1. You rook play b7. rook e7 or something. Yeah. Rook b7, king c8. No, 
it's not easy. I mean, I don't know all the answers. Yeah, I'm so no, no. I was thinking of yeah. So it's it's still black is making uh, some headway. Yes. I think. Yeah. So I, is that uh, yeah? So uh, I don't like G five. Not that it's probably losing, but uh, it creates more uh, chances for black. I must say. But perhaps you didn't find anything else. We don't know. I've seen many times the Indians also change their opinion suddenly because uh, they don't grasp. And B3 is not correct. Okay. Yeah, so ODI check. But I think you know, this F5 check is a matter of concern. Only legal move, uh, King D4 and then Rook F3. And uh, because uh, Rook into F4 is going in a check and uh, C5 check allows King D7 with a tempo. So F4 goes and yeah. How uh, about trying to attack with king e5 then? Uh, it looks very artificial, but uh, f5 check, king d4, rook f3, c5 check, and king d7, rook b8, rook into pawn check, king e5. And then you go king f6 and win clicking into g6. And, but black pawns will be too strong then, yeah? Mm, a tough uh, ending to play, I think. Probably, uh, now it may not be drawable, but yeah, it's... Uh, if we will uh, we will wait and watch yes, how the so. players treat this position let's see the most obvious move in this position captures need to be calculated first okay. what happens if white black takes on g5 and you just want to play rook b1 is take? it what do you want to play rook h3 or which move because i don't know what is the purpose of this capture in a way rook b3 or yeah rook b rook c3 looks like a possibility also what if I play rook g3? Okay, king this f4, move? king f4, and then rook c3. Okay, that's your idea. But maybe this move can be ruled out because you will play rook b8, mm. and then if I take on g5, you'll take on b4. It's and obvious now. It's oh, yeah. more easier to draw because yeah, it's obvious draw now. I think. But and if you play king c5, there is rook c8 check, and again. Uh, for rook b8, if you play king c5, rook c8 check. So you're not able to save the pawn. Let's explain why this is an obvious draw. Because white is still a pawn down. Mm, yes, it's so, true, true. Yeah. Uh, white's, uh, basically, black's passers are not advanced. White's king is very well placed to block them. And white also has a passer of her own. So she can also create threats. And mainly, these two pawns are not connected. So all of these factors are a part of the reason why this position will be more towards a draw than a win for black. Yes, white will be able to uh, win one of the pawns at the cost of c4 pawn. And then rook and pawn versus rook with king in front is an easy draw uh, for the readers, uh, for the viewers. It's not a difficult draw then. So generally, a king was yeah, generally yeah, uh, yeah. Let's say the king was here, then this would have been very tough for white. Because uh, if the king is here, it's not participating in the defense. Ah, yes. In that case, yes, the uh, pawns would have been very strong. That's true. White king is really well placed and prevents black king from coming. So, rook b6 check becomes a threat. And it's, I think, a, a draw. But, yeah, pawn into pawn, your suggestion and rook g3. Uh, and the natural king f4 fails to rook c3. Now it's really bad. But, uh, yeah, but uh, if black plays rook c3 directly yeah now it's uh, e5 also no sometimes no, here i think it's instead of last move e5 was it possible to play e5 here just to make sure that uh, yes there are so many possibilities and it's uh, nana has to take a decision soon she has not yet picked up the pawn on g5 yeah f5 is, i thought was more uh, consistent in that but this also looks very dangerous for stops king d4 and so your rook will be defending uh, that pawn, which means you will have to say bye bye to the uh, c4 uh, pawn, no? If b3, rook b3 comes. So, and you are not in a position to win the rook g8. Rook g8 doesn't work, no? B3, rook g6. It's a tough position to play, surely. Pawn but she needs to play fast. I mean, uh, over here after g5, black has only got 4 minutes 43 okay, seconds. That, okay, that's and Vaishali has 1 minute 38 seconds. Both the players oh. under severe time pressure in a very difficult position. So I think g5 has probably been played out of judgment and not very calculation. I think if black, has also, black is also short of time, black will not play f5 and play probably pawn into pawn. g5 was played after a thinking for 11 minutes. I think this is one of the areas where Vaishali might uh, you know, it might help Vaishali to have a little more experience because in a difficult position to also come so short on time might not be the best 
Wait. Yeah, I think in Olympiad also, I think she made a mistake in a uh, rook ending because you know if she was also short of time and uh, she had not uh, come across uh, similar uh, ending, so that's also a problem. They are so strong in middle game, Vaishali, and some of the um, Indian youngsters. They are so strong in middle game that they crush their opponents in middle game and they never reach ending, which becomes a sort of drawback also. And Black has taken F G. Okay. Uh, F takes F takes. Also mentioning the Olympiad and Vaishali. Vaishali did win a fantastic yeah. mid uh, end game in the Olympiad yes. with uh, three versus two. And uh, that was also a very nice uh, uh, end game. Actually, it's uh, I will let out a secret that we saw that end game in the camp with Mr. Boris Gelfand uh, okay. for the Olympiad, and the same end game occurred in Vaishali's game in one of her games. So it was such a pleasure that the work that we did in the camp was actually useful for her. Yes, very often we learn it so that we use sometimes in uh, future, but the future is so soon that it's very good. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> So uh, F G F G and Rook C three. Yeah, I played. think the most accurate move, I think, because Rook G three was a trap. King F four would be worse, but now I think not much chance. Uh, direct Rook B eight uh, is not possible because Rook C four check, and uh, if you don't play Rook B eight, Black is going to so Rook G eight, Rook C four check. So what does White actually do here? White has D four will be if if I check and then B three. Yes, and B three. And uh, what does white do here is a very good question to ask ourselves. Yeah, not a very wise. I mean, G5 was a very dubious uh, looking move. Right. The players are under time pressure. Let's go and have a quick look at how Harika and Shuvalova are doing. What is this position that they have reached after C4? White played king to F2 and not knight D5. Okay, so she's not. Yeah. Black played king C6. Knight d5 now, met with king b7. So she's allowing. Okay, so now knight into f6 has been prepared. So bg4, king e1 is correct. Now you plan to play knight into f6, I think. But um, and g4. g4. Okay. And uh, so knight into f6 is one of the pawn queens. Yeah, you can't click knight into f6 now. Yeah. Yes, and I don't know why we don't have the time situation here because that would have been really useful mm -hmm. after king f2 uh, let's just share that here in this position white had 10 minutes to shuvalova 7 whereas here we don't have yes we after uh, king b7 white still has 10 minutes shuvalova has 2 minutes 33 seconds uh, and she has played king e1 we can see the clock on the screen uh, yeah, but King even G four. G four played by Shuvalova, and we see Harika down to five minutes. Oh, it's clear that White will not be able to capture Knight into F six because of the pa pass pawns on both sides. The pawn will queen, so the F six pawn exists. Uh, the only thing you can hope for is win the C pawn and block it with Knight F four. There's a possibility of a, a fortress, uh, although two pawns down, but. Uh, Knight f4 and king f2 after capturing the c4. The main concern is how do you capture the c4 pawn and still come back to f2. Uh, the knight on f4, knight should guard the pawn at g1 itself. So uh, what's force looks like knight f4, g3 and knight e2 and g2, knight g1. But then you don't win the c pawn. So. Oh, I see that uh, the time is now 7 minutes 59. So I misread the time on the screen. If we can have a closer look at the player cameras, it will help us see the time. 7 minutes 42 seconds for Harika versus 2 minutes 56 seconds for Shuvalova. So yeah, but I think there will be 30 seconds uh, adding up to so G4. Now G3 looks logical. And if you play King F2, I think she's going to just move the bishop. For, ah, but King F2 looks necessary here and she just moves the bishop and uh, attacks the knight perhaps yeah if king f2 bishop e6 no and then take on b6 ah yeah okay so yeah i don't see much point now in this position it's bad yeah so king e1 and uh, g4 so harika so still thinking uh, what do you what do you think can White have any defensive chances at all? King D two will G3, be met with G three, knight F four. Now Bishop H three is a mistake because yes. knight takes G two and the knight yeah. on H three already covers the G one square. Yeah. 
So, but, but the tragedy in King D two G three Knight F four is if I can take King into B six and you are basically the I'm C four pawn is uh, saved. And after King C three, King C five, or even tactical Bishop B six was possible also in that position. So no, this is not. A, so if King has to come back to F two, then surely Black just moves Bishop B six, and uh, King F two Bishop B six Knight C three F five, and then I take King into B six next. Knight has to go come back to c3 because after bishop king f2 bishop e6 knight f6 c3 and uh, king one of e2, the pawn queens so yeah king, king e2, e2 will be met with g3 yeah and after knight e4 we have g2 and it's is it possible to defend no, nc5 jack nc5 jack yes. yeah we play king f2 and c2 will be met with nc5 jack king into pawn nd3 uh, yeah that is that's the only trap that needs to be avoided yes so Yeah, so well, King F2 is the best chance anyway, and if Bishop E6, Knight into F6 is possible, and C3. Uh, Sorry, I think the moves that we showed were not seen on the camera. So yeah, let's yeah. have the board on the screen, uh, and we can show the moves again yeah. after King F2. Yeah, there is one trap that Black should not fall in. Yeah, Bishop E6 and Knight into pawn. C3 and Knight. E4 is not possible because C2, yeah. Knight uh, E4 is still possible. C2. Yeah, C2 and C5 check. King into pawn. Knight D3. D3. And here G3 is a mistake, but Bishop. Uh, uh, yeah, here Bishop F5 forcing Knight C1. It's still. Why why not Bishop F5 guarding the pawn? So Bishop F5 and Knight C1 and King C5 or King B5 and King G3 King C. C4, King F4, King C3, King into Bishop is not possible because of uh, G3. And this would win. So yeah. this is winning as well. Yes, even the trap is. Uh, I mean, there's no. But at least you uh, tried to stop the pawn. So there's uh, probably uh, you need to make a lot of mistakes to make a uh, make it a draw. Yeah. Also. Yeah, also the knight was hanging on the previous move king of working it to his yes. <laughs> no just to illustrate yes, that yeah. the two pawns cannot be stopped by the knight yeah. and uh, this is losing for white so yeah. let's see what uh, harika will play but if king position. if king f2 is not played i think it's anyway yeah this was already the position no the knight if i king this one king even g4 was played i think mm. so she is looking for some traps king e2 has she played king e2 Yes, she has played king e2, and we see Harika very nervous there, and uh, with five minutes on the clock, and Shuvalova down to one minute. So Will she find but, uh, g3? But is it only move? I mean, no, is there g3? are many moves. Bishop e6 was also the same. G3, king f1. She is hoping to win that pawn at least. But the c pawn will queen the problem. Knight f six might be an issue for bishop e six. So she doesn't want to allow knight f six, knight e four. G three very obvious. Yeah, g three king f one, but g three king f one is the now okay. No, king f one is not necessary. Knight into pawn is possible. Yeah. Yeah. But Shuvalova's time situation does not look good, but the position looks absolutely winning. So we will see if she manages to handle. The position with such less time or not, G3 played. Okay, and now King F1. King F1 or, instantly yeah. replied by Harika. So Bishop H3 check is a sort of killer also because you go to G1, then you are really worried about Bishop E6. Yes, Bishop H3 followed by Bishop, Bishop E6. E6. You must come back Knight C3. Yeah. You are going to win some pawns. Knight F4 is yeah. So Knight. Uh -huh. Oh no no right no you should have we shouldn't <laughs> allow the check on nah, e5 yes. when coming back to c1 yeah no no i think it is necessary not to uh, yeah that's it uh, bishop e6 is not a good sacrifice no but just bishop f7 would also yeah be. king g2 and that's what she wants to play uh, yeah probably c3 knight e2 c2 king into pawn but king into b6 and uh, yeah so, yeah but at least this position uh Has some king c5 probably and bishop h5 and uh, king king into pawn king c4 and king f5 bishop h5 or something so bishop and king c3 and king b2 and you win the f6 pawn but there is hardly anything that can be done about it so a difficult uh, position will uh, wait for the uh, 
games to end because now something very crucial is uh, taking place. Yes, now let's have a uh, look at the, the way players have been played. Oh, so Anana has won the game. We missed the winning um, winning moment. Let's go back to oh that yeah, yeah. game. Uh, while we were having a look at Harika's game, Nana's game is already over. Rook C3 yes, by Nana. We found that it was winning. Yeah, as it is. King so D4 won. was played by Vaishali. Black played E5. King E4. B3 was played by Nana. Yeah, C4 and now pawn will go now. It's very difficult to stop the B pawn from queening and saving the C pawn as well. So Rook D8 by Vaishali allowed King C5 now. And mm -hmm. the king is also helping the pawn. Okay, so Rook C4 check and Rook B4 is a new option. Yeah. Yes, King E5 was played and White played. Uh, Black simply took the Rook C4. Uh, pawn and now rook b4 will be played next. So rook so c8 check and rook g8. Oh, was uh, I mean rook, rook c8 six. check and rook g8 was the only option, but it's you have rook c5 check and rook b and this is losing, of course. And King f6 was played and b2, and hmm. now it's impossible to save the queen because rook b8 will be met with rook b4 and rook d1 will be met with rook c1. Yeah, and rook c8 check is met with uh, yeah, King uh, rook c8 check is probably uh, necessary. That is what was played. Mm. Rook C8 check, King D4, Rook B8, and White uh, Black played Rook, Rook C6, C6 check, check, followed by King C3. Defending the G6 pawn first, not allowing King takes G6 and King G7, King E, King E, King G7, and White resigned basically. Yeah, but I C6. yeah, well, uh, we must tell the viewers that why Rook C6 check was necessary because in case of King C3 directly, uh, White wins. Uh, Rook into B2, White will no King into pawn. There is a danger with uh, yeah, and now this po yeah, this position is a draw because Black King is too far away and White uh, is able to uh, advance the King and march the pawn. I think all moves are drawing. King H7 was also, but King F7 is the correct move, and uh, a Rook check, and uh, King G6 itself is the easiest draw, but King F8 also draws. And uh, no, King G8 King also F8 draws. Is King F6 yeah, knight and check and difficult yeah, draw. King G8 is an easier draw. King G8, King, King G6, but also King G8. Yeah, no, King G8 also. And King F6, King H8. Let us show the viewers uh, this draw as well. <laughs> yeah, and uh, of course, King G6 is the most logical draw. So, uh, well, viewers, when you don't have, uh, uh, when you have options, then don't try to play like Rook versus uh, Knight. It's a draw, but it's a tougher game. But yeah, of course, uh, I think everything has been so anticipated. Yeah. So, well, Vaishali didn't have a good tournament here, but a fantastic player. I saw uh, she got a medal in the Olympiad uh, and uh, she played fantastic. The Indian team was uh, leading throughout and uh, the team eventually uh, did creditably uh, finishing second and she won the uh, bronze medal on her board. And also her brother won bronze medals. So it's, it's a, I think one of the unique Olympiads. And she has won almost all uh, national champions of age group, isn't it? She actually did not play many age group okay. tournaments. And she played more of, uh, she has won uh, age group world championship. Uh, but she has played more of open tournaments. I remember seeing her in an open tournament even when she was 11 years old. She in fact played in the Delhi Open in 2013 when she was 11 and uh, yes uh, uh, like she concentrates more on open tournament she already has two grandmaster norms okay. and uh, she uh, has a wonderful career in front of her of course but difficult tournament for her finishing on two points but also she was the lowest uh, seed and in open if you play open tournaments and you at least play a few opponents who lower rated than you, you have one or two easy games. Here, since everybody was higher rated than her, she didn't have a single easy game. So that's also psychological pressure also because every time you, you are, um, well, people don't expect you to win just because of rating. I think people judge only by the rating. So they okay, she is, uh, that could play a very important role. I mean, it's a sort of, uh, you know, it's a discouraging fact that, okay, you are the lowest uh, or it played in the tournament. In fact, Nigel Short had once said, Nigel Short 
got a chance to play in a close tournament where all others were very strong. And Nigel Shot was very young, I think 12 or 13, and not a strong player. He didn't do well, but subsequently said that, that losing those games actually may have made a bad effect on my mind. And it wasn't a great decision to allow me to play in a tournament where everybody was a different age and much stronger players. So, you know, that's also could be a fact. But here, yes, important thing is she was probably had that uh, problem that she was a uh, it's probably the first time she's playing in a tournament where she's the lowest seed, yeah? So sometimes it's a it's a thing which I wouldn't love to do. I mean, everybody else higher rated than me. It's a matter of concern. You're not going to have any easy games. She didn't have any easy games, you must have seen. Yeah, definitely, I think. And also being a last-minute entry into the <laughs> tournament after, uh, you know, her entry was confirmed only on the 18th of March or so, in the second week of March. So, as a result, she did not get much time to prepare. But now let's focus on the game that's going on. We have Harika versus Shuvalova, which is still going on. Yes, I think one of the greatest players of uh, all times, Harika. And, of course, she also doesn't seem to have a great tournament. But yes. I think Shuvalova is playing very simple chess. She is going to give up the G3 pawn. She is going to take the B6 pawn and win the knight for the uh, C pawn. C -pawn. The no fortress. She knows that... Even if your opponent gets uh, something like knight c3 on king d2, it's still not a draw. But it's not going to get as well. I mean, king g2, king into pawn, uh, king g3, king c5, king f2, king b4. You're not even getting king d2, yeah? Uh, they have reached this position now. And both the players are on two minutes. Uh, Harika with two minutes for white uh, and 1.50 for black. Black's turn to play. White's turn to play. At least there is some chance with king e2 and king b4, king d2. Uh, although it fails to king b3 followed by f4 sacrifice eventually and e3 check. But now it's even worse because uh, I believe it's black's turn to play. Yeah? So king b4, uh, for king b4, the, the, okay, so. Knight e2 and c3 can be expected. Yeah, c3, she wants to play king e1 and uh, for bishop b3, maybe she will be more deep. Yeah, but it's possible to stop the pawn from queening. What's important is the pawn is not queening, but c3, king e1, bishop. Uh, C4 is a move which will force you to probably play knight C1, bishop C4, yeah, bishop C4 and you need to play uh, knight, knight D4, I don't know, king A3 queens the pawn, no? king A3 and king D1, king C, C B2, so bishop C4 forces knight C1 and then, well, there is nothing to be, because it's a zugzwang, it will uh, come, so here also we see uh, a resulting game. It has been a difficult tournament for the Indian players because yeah, Harika a bit surprising, a bit surprising because you know home ground. When people claim to have an advantage over the home ground, I don't see any such advantage actually myself. I mean, I have not played uh, my best tournaments in India, uh, so I don't know. But for some players, it could be at least believed home pitch and other things in other games but yes yeah. of course in cricket and uh, football i think the pitch itself matters the weather condition so in physical sport it's completely different i think in indoor game it doesn't matter so much other than the fact that you have, can have a lot of support at home and the food conditions could be yeah but from uh, food conditions again if you are in uh, your own city yeah so 92 or uh, king b3 90 okay so so, knight e2, king b3 already and... Yeah, the, she's uh, giving the bishop. Okay, knight d4, check king b2, knight into bishops, uh, c3, knight d4, c2. Knight comes back and c2 and the knight will have to be given up for the pawn. And the ending is lost even without the f5 pawn. Yeah, king g3, king d2 and king f4, king d3. So right. So we'll see how Harka, uh, whether she decides to play on or not. It's very difficult to... Uh, but King B3, I think, I know, it's, uh, somehow I feel C3 is a more natural move and Bishop C4. Somewhere I think your dominant opponent's pieces could be uh, strong. But okay, so again a choice, giving up the piece, which objectively cannot be taken because of lost pawn ending. And what else does she have? Knight C1 is not anyway possible. So she just wants to put... Yeah, but... Anyway, King E1, what does she play? King E1, she has to play B2 anyway. Knight D4 is played. Okay, she's going to take the bishop and try her uh, best. Yes, tough tournament for Harika. And uh, she has one more Grand Prix to go though. Because yeah. she has played only two. And the last one will be held later this year. So she has uh, some chances in the Grand Prix. And also 
um, many uh, more tournaments to play. As yeah, well. of course. Uh, she has been um, um, playing very well. I think she has got. She has. He came fifth in the earlier Grand Prix, so she has a score, a reasonably fourth. good score. Yeah, fourth. Okay, so she has got a score of. Uh, yeah, it's a good uh, score to start with. But uh, yes, if she doesn't get any points here, ten hundred, the qualifying on basis of this becomes difficult, unless she gets hundred and sixty. Because I don't know, it's uh, in if you win, you get hundred and sixty. But if you're not uh, here, if you get very uh, say twenty or thirty points, then you know it uh, reasonably it's a bit disappointing. Okay, the bishop has been uh, given and. and uh, um big result for shuvalova because she's a organizers nominee in this tournament and mm -hmm. she has only played one more grand prix and it's not clear if she will be able to play the next one it depends on which players are available and which are not yeah. so and also also to two, two uh, basically grand prix don't actually give her any chance to qualify to the uh, event because but still yeah so to play against such a uh, play such a tournament is a great the uh, pleasure is great challenge is something of the she game has, has resigned game has ended and uh, probably they are discussing so we can uh, is it the, is it the last position no yes this is the final position and they are discussing but they are discussing analyzing i think in chess yes, it's so wonderful to yeah. um, uh, analyze with your opponent and sort of learn how they are thinking as well and it's also a way to sort of uh, get rid of your negative emotions yes also yeah, also yeah sometimes it's it helps uh, to analyze because sometimes we feel that we played very badly and then we realize opponent really played well and then we have that consolation that okay my opponent played fantastic or sometimes you know it's a, it's a tough uh, sometimes but yes your opponent i think some of one some, some of the worst moments are when you don't win and your opponent tells you you could have won this way so it's also analysis can be disappointing as well i mean some of the worst moments that come in players life is the opponent immediately says that you could have won when you fail to win you know that's the time when we really feel bad because opponent had seen and so that's, that's analysis is of course healthy but it can uh, affect your uh, uh, positions but uh, i think experienced players for example i always enjoyed analysis even in the lost positions and i've seen An anand also analyzing the lost games till they made sense of course if it's completely lost then you don't but when you have something to learn you see and even um, from my game against boris paski where uh, the game ended in one and a half hours but uh, it was analyzed by him with me for two and a half hours when i learned so many things so analysis has um, i mean it just really improves uh, your uh faculties your uh, knowledge everything because you are exchanging ideas so well that all the games on that over i think the arbiters feed the result and we immediately in uh, about 10 minutes time we'll probably have the uh, standing of uh, the tournament and who gets what points but yes so uh not a great tournament from indian point of view i think uh, none of the indian players really did well and uh, vaishali uh, was uh, she did last but she didn't win a single game which probably happened for the first time but it's go going to be a good learning experience for her because she plays against strong opponents and uh, well she has to find out why she played badly perhaps uh, the food mattered or the preparation or i don't know how regularly her trainer travels with her but uh, at this moment her trainer is not here in Uh, olympiad i think we saw trainers were also i mean her personal trainers was also there and also their team trainers so perhaps that makes the difference also we don't really know and it's not po no point in speculating what went wrong uh, with a player i think it's just uh, sometimes you are not in the best of your either spirits or your health no one never knows if you are not well i mean you can't find out if you are uh, digestion problems yes if you are uh, Also don't sleep no, well. actually, uh, Vaishali. One thing I really liked was that yesterday uh, uh, she gave an interview despite losing, which is uh, super uh, sporting of her. And secondly, in the interview, she was asked about her experience of the tournament, and she did not crab or uh, say anything, uh, uh, you know, uh, very uh, miserable. But instead, said that okay, it's not a good tournament for me, but I'll go home and analyze my games. And I think that's a wonderful perspective. That uh, you know, only if you go. and 
try to improve on what you have done wrong can you actually come back and win uh, michael jordan said that i have uh, missed more shots than uh, uh, i have won when i have been trusted with the winning shots and that's why i win every yeah. time because he learned from his failures yes also you know uh, uh, those games of course the videos and other things help here uh, we don't have that sort of help but we have a uh, regular trainer we have sometimes computer playing engines which tell you what went wrong but the problem with engines is they never tell you the plan so that's a problem but yes there's always a way uh, to f learn and yes you learn much more from your lost games than your won games i think from your won games you probably learn nothing so from lost games you really do because you lost the game because you did not uh, understand the position somewhere and uh, your opponent has played well so you realize that okay in future i'm i should not be doing so um well uh, humpy also didn't have a great tournament isn't it humpy also tough tournament actually and uh, uh, she lost a game against zujiner which was fantastically played by zujiner and speaking of zujiner we have a player interview with her so let's go and have a look at that and come back to the stream zujiner 11 rounds have passed the tournament is over for you some games are still going on you drew your game against uh, Nina Vasishvili. What's your assessment of the final game here in New Delhi? I, I, I love her position. Uh, she just uh, in the only she suffered by Tom for for the attack. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Maybe my position not not so well. Uh, with this draw, you're in high contention for first place. We'll see what happens in other games. Uh, but also, I understand that with this draw, you've sec secured the title of Grandmaster, correct? Sorry? With this draw, you have secured the title of Grandmaster, is that correct? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm I think I spoke to the arbiter and I think that that might be the case. So, so we'll see. Overall, how is the tournament for you? I, in general, I think it's so fine. I, I know I, I didn't mean that get any lost position. I mean that. Yes, it was until this point, it's just you and Goryashkina who have, uh, well, you were the first one to confirm this without any loss in this tournament. We'll see what Goryashkina does. And she's still playing, but yeah, you played very solidly throughout the tournament. Yeah. Uh, so, what now? Are you going to rest or are you going to wait here and follow the tension and see what happens? Uh, or are you going to go upstairs and follow the games online? What are you going to do? The rest, all right. I, I'm sure everyone here envies your your uh, calmness, even now when it's it's, it's so dynamic. Uh, in, you know, you you're in contention for first place, and you're just going to grant the rest. Well, thank you very much, and enjoy the rest. And we hope to see you after the closing ceremony. Yes, thank you. Welcome back, and now we have the final standings with us, and the interview you saw of Zu Jinner wonderfully played there. She tied for first place, but Alexandra Goryachkina comes home with the full point. This is the cross table before the 11th round, uh, but after the final ranking, we actually uh, have Goryachkina, uh, Goryachkina as the winner of the tournament with 7 points out of 11 rounds. Actually, they played 9 rounds and 2 rest days. Wonderful score there. Yes, and she gets 160 points because of this. Winner gets 660 points. And, uh, well, she has uh, the earlier event, she came second. So, 160 and 130. Uh, uh, so, I think she could be leading the uh, Grand Prix now with two uh, tournaments, 290 score, I think. Fantastic. Actually, uh, uh, let us clarify the 7 out of uh, 10 because they were counting the score against Elizabeth Pates, who's uh, not in the tournament anymore, but the score was still counted. So, Goryachkina Alexandra with 7 points out of 10. Bibisara Subaiva on 2nd place, 
also on seven points out of ten. Yes, and she gets hundred and thirty points, and uh, I think uh, she has. Pro is it okay? She has had only thirty, so probably she doesn't have a realistic chance of qualifying uh, to this. But she was the youngest participant, and a fantastic result. I must say, trying for the first place, and surely uh, she has got a very bright future. I think. Yeah, absolutely. And Zhu Jinar also on seven. All three leaders of the tournaments drew their games today. And uh, Zhu Jinar, because she had played less number of blacks, comes third on the prize list with seven out of ten. So she gets 110 points here. She already has played two Grand Prix before, and 175 was the score. So she ends up with 285 points. Perhaps not good enough to qualify to candidate, but a fantastic result. She gets good prize as well. Wow! Yes, absolutely. Katrina Lano finished on fourth place with a draw today. So six points for K uh, Katrina and Polina Shuvalova also tied with her, but Polina with the lesser tie break. So Polina on fifth place. So Lano gets hundred points and uh, Polina gets ninety points. So Lano already won the first event. With 160 point, now she has 100 to 260 after two events. That's a great result, and uh, uh, the next uh, probably she could be a qualifier if she does well in the uh, fourth leg of the Grand Prix. And we have Koneru Hampi, India's pride, at sixth place. Sorry, there. Uh, Lano, Katrina and Shuvalova Polina tied for the 4th and 5th place and Hampi on 6th place with 5 and half with a draw against Goryaj Kina today. So getting 80 points, that means 210. Uh, but Hampi and, uh, is already seeded by virtue of the rating. So perhaps she may not even play 4th Grand Prix, we don't know. But I think she is not depending on this because uh, she has got a very strong rating. This is the second rated player in the world. Nino Batsyashvili with actually three and half out of nine um, and Harika Dronavali with three and half as well and Nana as well with three and half with a win in the last round, her first win in the tournament. But Nino higher on the tie break. So Nino finishes eighth, Harika, uh, Nino finishes seventh, seventh. Harika eighth and Nana on ninth place. So they get 70, 60 and 50 points which are not very uh, great in the race but yes, you have something at the... Uh, Yes, I think uh, every point counts and Vaishali in 10th place with 2 points out of 9. And she gets 40 points and this Vaishali is only, uh, uh, so she, uh, yeah, she had played earlier and she had scored 60, so 60 plus 40, 100 and uh, well, uh, great uh, event I think and this was not the last uh, leg but a uh, world championship uh, qualifying event and we saw some best of uh, chess here and uh, uh, I hope you enjoyed and uh, well share your experiences as well subsequently. But we look forward to meeting some on some other stream some other day very soon. Yes, absolutely. It was a pleasure to commentate on this tournament. Congratulations to the winners, to the players who are proud of their performance, especially to Alexandra Gorechkina for winning the tournament. And the ones who did not will have a lot of lessons to take. You either win or you learn. So I'm sure they will be able to go back home, analyze their claims and come back stronger. For, as for me, it was a pleasure to commentate with you, sir. And I've really enjoyed watching these games along with you and to listen to your opinions. Uh, thank you, Samya. She was a world champion, world junior champion. And we have worked together also many years back. And uh, uh, of course, it was a pleasure to be with her uh, this day and to view the uh, to comment here because some of the best games and my curious to the uh, fighting spirit of the players. All the players showed great fighting spirit in a fantastic tournament to watch live being here and to comment upon. Absolutely. We would also like to take a moment to thank our sponsors who made this tournament possible. Tech Mahindra, Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports, Government of India and of course FIDE for putting this all together. The organizers, AICF who worked day and night. The chief organizer was AK Verma from Delhi and everyone in the AICF team, uh, the arbiters, Mr. Gopakumar uh, was the chief arbiter from India and uh, the technical team who managed to bring you the live games and of course our broadcast team Nordwin and uh, our graphic designer Abudaya for helping us with the stream. Uh, I would also like to thank Nishant from Nordwin team for always taking care of the broadcast and making it look so spectacular for all of you and 
of course in the end how can we forget all of you for watching yes, so thank you so much for watching the games with us and for making this so special so thank you thank you all thank you all take care and we hope you will come back to watch the fide world championship match here on this channel which starts in 2 days take care good night namaste namaste